The guy was staring intently at the screen of his phone. The glint of the screen reflected on his black t-shirt. He took a steady puff of bitter cigarette smoke and began to talk about how webtoons are very boring right now. He rolled up his sleeves and showing his tattoos went on to say that all the problems are because the authors are so old. The guy on the left started saying it's always about school violence. The guy on the right side was also smoking a cigarette. He smiled and started saying that always some loser is bound to get stronger. The main guy with the tattoos went on to say that bullies were only in the youth of the older generation and that they for some reason think that bullying is still present nowadays. The guy sitting next to him started to agree with him on everything. He looked at his friend and started to ask if he was keeping order. The three guys looked at the guy who was trying to sneak away. They started asking him what he had to say about it. The skinny guy with glasses smiled through his teeth and started talking about how that's what their classes were called. The guy with tattoos on his arms ran up to the skinny guy who couldn't stand up for himself and grabbed his neck in a headlock. He started laughing and talking about ending school violence. The guy with the glasses asked him to stop and leave him alone, but it wasn't working. Having had a good laugh, the three guys left the poor guy lying on the ground and went about their business. The chief among them began to say that they should go now, but that it was not the end of the story. This poor guy, whose name is Kim, is our protagonist. He lay on the ground thinking that he could scream all he wanted, but no one would show up to do anything about his abusers. He realized that everything had gone wrong at some point, and he didn't want to live like that anymore. He figured that in their days of webtoons and web novels, it was always about completing quests, getting rewards and pumping yourself up, just like in video games. An idea popped into his head. What if you put one point into combat skills? The protagonist lay on the cold ground and thought about if he could do the same. His eyes widened as if he had thought of something brilliant. He quietly said the quest window. He began to think about what he was going through every day, and with all his might, he desperately began to scream. The scream echoed throughout the whole neighborhood. He repeated the quest window over and over again. The guy crawled to the wall and leaned back. He put his head on his hands and started talking about how, of course, in real life, this would never happen. He realized that he wasn't living in a web novel and nothing in life could come out of nowhere. He dreamed of putting an end to the bullying once and for all, but unfortunately the guy was very weak. Suddenly the blue color on his glasses shone off with a mirror-like shine. The boy looked up and saw a large translucent sensor, and from that moment his life began to change. The system highlighted a message on the sensor. It asked if he wanted to start the quest and two possibilities, yes or no. The boy looked at everything that was happening and couldn't believe his eyes. At school, the situation kept repeating itself. At a time when the children were cheerfully talking about different topics, our hero sat by himself at the desk away from the crowd. There are two types of people in the world, popular kids and loners. If someone is outgoing and active, they quickly become popular. If someone is shy and a loner introvert. Unfortunately, the introverted loner eventually becomes either a bully or a loser. Kim was sitting at his desk thinking that it's better to be a loner than a loser. He remembered that yesterday something unusual had happened in the school field. And that moment he saw the same blue color and a translucent sensor appeared in front of his eyes. The system again asked if he wanted to start the quest. The guy was scared and wasn't even sure if it was a dream or not, but still continued to call and close the window. And during the course of the lesson, he did it about 300 times. It was so incredible that he couldn't help but believe it was real. He wondered what would happen if he started the quest. The guy once again opened the system and decided to press the yes button. He didn't even see the girl walking by, and his index finger, instead of pressing yes, pressed on the girl's stomach. He didn't even realize what happened and looked at her with a surprised look. The girl's name was Beck Cherin. She stopped and started to ask what was that just now and why he was sexually assaulting her. The guy tried to make something up, but nothing came to his mind. He had one big disadvantage. He couldn't lie. He started talking about how it was just a quest window. Beck Cherin didn't like that answer, so she slapped him in the face and called him a creepy nerd. She asked Kim Soo Hyun to go to the cafeteria to get some snacks. The guy held his face and thought after slapping her palm, she's asking me to go to the snack bar. He started asking why you can't go by yourself. The girl sat down at the next desk and started saying she really wanted to eat a sandwich. She pointed her finger at her legs and started telling him, 
You know how beautiful my legs are, and thanks to them, I have 200,000 followers on Instagram. The girl looked at Kim and kept saying, Would you take responsibility if I tripped and fell on my way to the cafeteria? He realized there was no point in arguing with the girl. Kim stood up and agreed with her. He promised to be back quickly and started asking about money. The girl called him a good boy and told him not to ask such stupid questions about money anymore. She called him greedy and lazy and started talking about how she didn't like to wait long. Kim agreed to everything, but still gave him a disgruntled look. Then the girl ordered to bring food and offered herself as a treat in return. The boy walked towards the cafeteria with an unsure gait, and at that moment he even considered himself pathetic. Kim was very disappointed in himself. He thought he was a man who couldn't speak his mind in such situations. He heard a voice end school violence and looked back. The guy with the tattoos swung his arm toward him. His fist flew at his face, but his shoulder hit Kim's neck. Kim collapsed to the ground and couldn't breathe for a while. The guy with the tattoos made a surprised look as if he wasn't the one who hit him and started asking if everything was okay. Kim tried to get up after a little breathing and started saying that he was going to end the school violence. The guy with the tattoos put his hand on his head and pressed down and continued to say, you should have said that before you hit him, and you know I'm just messing with you for no reason. The guy then stroked Kim's head and called him a good boy. Kim, lying on the floor, clenched his teeth and fists. He thought that after this guy and all his abusers become successful, then he would ruin their careers by telling everyone that they were bullies. The guy looked down with a serious look and started to say, Why are you silent? Maybe you think you can do something to me. Kim looked at his bully and started apologizing. The guys walking by started telling him not to waste his time on that weakling. They took the guy away and continued talking about how they still had things to do. Kim kneeled down in the middle of the hallway in humiliation. His mood was really ruined. Kim got up and went home. He decided that it would be better to skip the last two classes than to stay till the end and endure the bullying again. As soon as he got into the apartment, he immediately started yelling that he had decided to drop out of school. His mom was the only person he could talk to. Kim started talking about how school wasn't teaching him anything, and he decided to quit school and become a new tuber. His mother was standing in the kitchen chopping vegetables. She calmly began to tell him not to laugh and to do what he was required to do. Kim insisted that his mother let him drop out of school. He started saying that school was a waste of time and nothing would happen if he went to college and just got some mediocre white-collar job. His mother told him to shut up before she did something she would regret. She went on to say that the matter was closed and that he shouldn't say anything else stupid like that while she had a knife in her hand. The girl was lying on the couch. She took the remote and turned up the volume. Kim said he could be a successful new tuber. The mother asked him to shut up and leave her alone. The girl started laughing, thinking what a jackass he was. She started to say how stupid you are, Kim. You think new tubing is so easy. Kim ran to his room and yelled, you don't understand anything, mom. The mom asked him not to slam the doors in her house. The guy hiding behind the door started making excuses that it was a draft. He lay down on the bed and covered his face with his hands and started crying. Kim tried to understand why he was so weak. He realized that everyone he knew was bullying him, and his fear didn't allow him to stand up for himself at school. He looked through his fingers at the closed door of his room and quietly said the quest window. A blue translucent sensor appeared in front of his eyes. The system kept asking if you wanted to start the quest. Kim decided to press the button, thinking about the fact that he was alone now and could check it out as much as he liked. On the sensor appeared information about the initialization of the quest system, and by completing the quest, you will get a map. The guy adjusted his glasses and wondered what kind of quest it was. He wondered if he could complete it. He wanted to complete the quest and get the map. He clicked yes, and the system started to create a tutorial quest. The system sent a quest that told Kim to apologize to his mom. The reward for completing the quest was a gold card. The kid didn't want to apologize. He thought they'd give me a gold card for it. And if it's really gold, maybe I can sell it. He wanted to get the gold card as fast as possible, so he started pressing different buttons. He tried to trick the sensor, and his hand just went right through. The system sent out information that he could get the following cards as a reward. In ascending order, bronze, silver, and gold. 
Kim left the room and headed for the kitchen. He thought it was worth a try after all. His mother was still standing by the stove cooking food. He began to apologize to his mother for yelling at her, and that he had overestimated his abilities as usual and didn't mean it. Kim started to say that he was just a little nervous talking to her. His mother silently continued to do her work. He thought about how much more he could apologize, but continued to ask her to forgive him for everything. The girl put a pillow under her arm and made herself comfortable on the couch. She thought maybe that was enough, and it looked like Kim was crazy after all and he should get checked out. Kim saw that the system had sent a message. He got excited and started to read, the tutorial quest has been completed and you are receiving a gold card as a special. This is a reward for completing the tutorial quest. The guy thought that the card could be sold for at least 10,000. He went back to the room and wondered what he would need to do to actually get it. He looked at the system and started to say, where is my map? Then he pressed on the sensor to get the card. The system sent a message saying he had gotten a gold card. The guy kneeled on the bed in surprise and watched the yellow and blue color flood the whole room. In front of him, a large gold card hung in the air. Kim began to read, you have received a one-time three-centimeter height increase card. After use, you will be three centimeters taller, and this card will disappear after use. The guy looked at the sensor in surprise, not knowing what to do now. The system asked him if he wanted to use this card. He quietly said, I want to use the card, and pressed yes. The system said he used the growth card. A mother was taking a pot off the gas and heard her son run out and yell that he was three centimeters taller. Kim ran up to the girl who was lying comfortably on the couch and started hugging her. The guy was talking excitedly about how much taller he was. He checked yesterday's entry in his notebook. His height was 168 centimeters and wrote down that today, his height is 171 centimeters. He then went back to his room and turned on the translucent sensor. It began to read, you have used a card and the number of cards available is zero. He got up from his chair, smiled, and started to say, I'm so glad I apologized, Mom. The mother walked to his room and without opening the door, started to say, and I'm sorry. She invited her son to the table and proceeded to say that she had everything ready and it was time for dinner. The boy replied that as soon as he collected his notebooks, he'd be right over. He thought he had to apologize all the time at school. He went to the kitchen and joined his mom and sister. Kim ate dinner in silence and thought about the fact that it was the first time he apologized to his mom. The next day, the boy went to school in a very good mood. Kim walked confidently through the corridors of the school and thought only about one thing, that now he was three centimeters taller. Two girls walked by and looked at the guy. One started to say why Su Hyun had such a strange expression on his face. The other one started to reply that he seemed to be in a good mood. Kim was happy that he was finally taller than 170 centimeters and that it was easier to breathe from that height. The girl looked at his short pants and started telling her friend to look at his legs. The girlfriend started to reply that she thought Kim was a little taller because of the platform on his shoes. The girl looked at her friend and continued to say, he is wearing slippers and the bones on his feet are visible. Look at him, he's taller. Kim walked confidently with his head held high and thought that it was all thanks to the quest he had completed yesterday. He looked at the girl in the miniskirt walking in front of him and thought why the quest window doesn't appear today and how I need to do another quest to get the map. Kim's glasses reflected blue like a mirror and he began to read that the system was creating a tutorial quest. The system sent a message that said the reward for completing this quest is one gold card and one silver card. The guy thought one more gold card and a silver card on top of that. This is too generous since the quests are simple. The guy walked forward and looked at the sensor. He didn't even notice the girl walking in front of him and caught her shoulder. The girl turned around and started saying, look where you're going or you're sick of living. At that time, the system sent a message saying that he had to kiss Beck Charon and the reward for it was one gold card and one silver card. From reading the second quest, Kim's eyes widened, and he thought that he would never be able to realize the second quest. Beck Sharon looked at him angrily and began to ask why I don't hear you apologize. Maybe you want to die. The girl got the urge to hit the guy and swung her hand. Kim covered his head with his hand and thought that there was no way he could kiss Beck Sharon. It hurt him just to think that it would never happen. He opened one eye and wondered why she didn't hit him. Beck Sharon looked at her hand and started to say, Rumor has it guys like it when I hit them. 
The girl in the short mini skirt turned around and finally started to say that a slap would be like a compliment to you. That's why I won't give you that pleasure. Kim looked at the girl's shapely legs and thought that he had two problems. The first was that she seemed to be in over her head and the second was much more serious. This was an impossible quest. He looked at the quest system and started to resent it. How can they give me such a bad quest? It would be better to give up now and take another quest. Kim clicked cancel and saw the system writing a warning in big letters. He started to read, once the quest is canceled, all rewards will be canceled and quest windows will never appear again. He stood in the middle of the corridor and waving his hand started saying, I didn't know about this and it's not fair to do this. A guy walking by said, what's wrong with you? The system popped up a question, you still want to give up the quest? A girl tried to walk next to him and started saying, don't stand in my way. Kim thought that if he refused the quest, he would become 168 centimeters again and there would be no other quests. Two girls were standing not far away and started discussing him. One of them started saying, look, he looks like he's pushing something and it looks disgusting. The other started to reply, this guy is gross and I'm just wondering what he's doing. The guy started reading a new message. Kiss Beck Charon. The reward for completing the task is one gold card and one silver card. Deadline is before the end of class. Kim clenched his teeth and thought, I can't give up that easily and I'll never 168 again. The boy clenched his fists and vigorously headed towards the classroom. He thought about giving it a try after all. As he entered the classroom, he saw Beck Sharan sitting with her feet up on a nearby chair looking at her phone. He just didn't have the courage to approach her. Kim sat down at his desk with his hands on his head and thought about the situation. And why had he only promised himself to try to do something impossible? He held the hairs on his head and thought, how can I kiss her since we're not even dating? And I doubt I'll ever be able to date Beck Sharan, and I'll be lucky if I'm alive after this. Kim couldn't make up his mind to kiss the girl and started thinking about forcing himself on her. He started repeating in his voice, I can kiss. And he heard a voice say, you want to kiss me? He turned his head to the left and said, do you really want to kiss me? The guy who was sitting at the desk on the left repeated, if you don't mind, you can kiss me. Kim started to say, maybe I shouldn't and you scared me. He started asking what's wrong with your face and why you're so unhappy. The guy started to answer that he got a lot of problems and also got beaten up by bullies. Kim started to say, why are you talking about it so seriously? He touched the bruise on his friend's face and started to say, well, you look like a damn good fighter, but you take a beating like me. The guy leaned back a little further and began to reply, I thought I'd be stronger too. Kim smiled and started to say, really stop sitting there with that serious look on your face. The guy started to ask, why do you keep mumbling about kissing? Kim looked at the girl sitting in the front and started to say, what would you do if someone gave you a task that you had to do? And that task would be to kiss a girl. What would you do in that situation, Kuja? Kim started to explain that he has to kiss Beck Charon and the deadline is very short only until the end of the class. Kuja started to say, if you ask very politely, maybe she will let you kiss her. Kim started talking about how the girl hates him and he's sure she won't even let him get close. Kuja went on to say that he has seen social experiments with free hugs, so why not do the same with kissing? Kim took hold of his head and started saying, she thinks I'm a wuss. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way for people like us. Kuja fixed his glasses and offered to pay the girl for the kiss. Kim got very excited and started talking about how it's a brilliant idea because a kiss is just two people touching lips. Everyone loves money and all he has to do is pay this girl. Kim asked to borrow some money so he could pay the girl for the kiss. Kuja stood up a little and pulled out a wallet from his back pocket. He placed the wallet on the desk and started to say, okay, I'll help you out. Kim got up from his chair, walked over to his friend, and his hand reached for the wallet with the money. Then he sat back down at his desk and started saying, I can't believe we actually thought this was a good idea. Kuja apologized. He too thought it was a bad idea and felt ashamed. Kim started to comfort her friend and talk about how they were both at fault. Kuja took the wallet and hid it back in the back pocket of his pants. He started talking about how to kiss a girl you have to be alone with her and guys like us rarely get that opportunity. Kim looked again at the girl who was sitting at the front of the desk and thought that Kuja was right. He had no chance to be alone with Beck Charon. 
He looked at his hands and thought that everything is possible in this life. During P.E., the guys were playing soccer and two girls were sitting and watching the game. Kim watched the sleeping girl's arm dangle from the desk. He thought how sweet she was sleeping. Beck Sharon always pretends to be sick during this class. She systematically skips gym class. The girl started to wake up and raised her head. She looked around and saw that she wasn't in class by herself. She started to ask why you're not in gym class. Kim sat and stared silently ahead. He didn't know what to say to him. He thought that he was finally alone with her and that he had to act quickly. He replied that he wasn't feeling well. The girl started talking about how she felt like he was lying. She started asking if he was watching her sleep. The guy started making excuses and saying that he wasn't watching and didn't even go near her. The girl went on to say that it wasn't nice to lie and that she would now tell everyone about his little perversions. He got up out of his chair and without even turning his head started yelling, I told you no, and what else do you want? The girl smiled and started to say, I'm kidding now, asshole. You're not afraid of anything because you're already at full zero. Beck Charon started asking if he was busy. She ordered him to bring her a carton of strawberry milk. Kim replied briefly that he had already bought some. He started repeating that he had bought the strawberry milk and started asking what else he could do for her. The girl saw her favorite drink on her desk. She started to ask when he had time. She was pleased that this time she didn't have to repeat herself. The girl called Kim a good dog. Kim sank into his thoughts and thought about whether a date with Beck Chereen would be the first step. He thought about the fact that most of the time kissing is what people who are dating do. The girl got excited and slipped the tube into the milk carton. Kim thought, what are the odds that Sharon has secret feelings for me? And it's obvious she doesn't. But he couldn't delay and realized that if he did nothing, he would fail the quest. Kim, with the words all or nothing, quickly walked over to the girl and took the milk from her hand. He began to drink the milk through a tube. The girl looked indignant and started asking what was that just now and how can you drink my milk? He thought about how he couldn't just give up without even trying to complete the quest. He put the milk carton on the desk where the girl was sitting and started asking, have you ever been kissed? The girl gave him a surprised look and started to say, you're asking me if I've ever been kissed. She furrowed her eyebrows and continued to say, if you don't stop talking nonsense, the only thing you'll be kissing is the floor of a jail cell. Kim thought that his plan hadn't worked, and now he would surely fail the mission. He took a step back and put his hands in the air and started to say, I was just kidding and I was curious, that's all. Kim saw that the front door was slightly ajar and someone was filming them on their phone. The bullies opened the door and started asking if you wanted us to kiss you. Kim looked at the guy with the tattoos whose name was Choi Chang Dong who was holding the phone. Kim didn't even know what to say to him. The three bullies approached our hero and started bullying him as usual. Chang started asking, do you like Beck Charon so much that you've completely lost your fear? The second one started laughing and talking about how such a beautiful girl wouldn't even look in the direction of such a loser. The third bully started talking about how they could easily forbid him from even looking at Beck Charon. The girl looked at the guys and started talking about how he must like being embarrassed. Kim started to say that wasn't true. He looked at the bully and started asking, why did you record that, and asked him to delete the video. After that, he walked up to Chung and tried to take the phone from his hand. But Chang caught Kim by the head and started saying that now he will show this video to everyone. Kim started yelling that it wasn't funny anymore, and once again asked to delete the video. Chang didn't like that he was yelling, and the bully with the words, you little puppy, hit Kim hard in the face with his fist. Chang looked at Kim lying on the floor and started laughing and said that it's just a joke, and what you said, Charon, is also a joke. Maybe you want to forbid us from joking, and why don't you want us to joke with you? Kim sat on the floor and held his face with his hand. The glasses were broken. The bully sat down next to Kim and hit him in the face with his palm, this time, the glasses broke and flew off his face. Chang started to say, we want to be your friends too. Two guys came over and started laughing and saying, we've been friends for a long time. Kim was on his knees looking at the floor. He was afraid to look at his abuser. His face hurt so much he began to curse his worthless life. Chang swung his hand and started to say, what are you mumbling about? Maybe you didn't like my jokes. Beck Charon caught the guy by the arm and started saying, what are you doing, Chang? You have no regret at all. You have to stop bullying. I'm sure Kim understood. Chang looked at the girl and started to say, I don't need to tell you twice. 
The girl looked at the bully apprehensively and asked him to delete the video. Chung leveled himself, his round belly was encased in a slightly tight sweater. He put his hand up to his head like in the army and began to say, There is Sir Word Charon Law, and can we go for a smoke then? The girl started to say, I don't care, you can smoke all you want. Chang waved his hand, signaling to his friends that it was time for them to leave, and walking out of the classroom, he started to say, We didn't write anything down, and we would never do that to you. He looked at Kim and continued saying, This is just the beginning, and you and I will have a proper chat later. Beck Charon looked at Kim and thought that his face was very swollen, and he must be in a lot of pain. She suggested that he go home early and explained that if he stayed at school, the bullies would continue what they had started. After hearing this, Kim got up and took his broken glasses and put them in his pocket. He went straight home. When he got home, he didn't even talk to anyone. He walked as quietly as possible to his room and locked the door behind him. He sat on his bed and thought that this was the end, and he had lost as always. And two rivulets of tears flowed down his cheeks. He opened the quest window and started reading the quest, You must kiss Beck Charan. Reward one gold card and one silver card deadline until the end of class. He felt hurt and started crying even louder. He started wiping his tears with his hand and thought, I just got beat up and ended up going home and why did I even try to kiss her? If I had just given up, the glasses would still be intact. Kim put the broken glasses in front of him and thought about the fact that Chang Dong was really mean today and now school life was over. He didn't know how to explain to his mom about the glasses. Once again, the excuse of falling down the stairs wouldn't work. He hated himself for failing the quest, and now he'd be back to being a half and half. On the other hand, he was glad he had taken the opportunity to enjoy his new growth. He opened the quest again and couldn't believe his eyes. It said the quest was complete. After class, the girl looked at the bag of strawberry milk and thought, I'm so thirsty and I completely forgot about it. She took the milk in her hand and started talking. Why was that loser talking about kissing? No, I've never been kissed, and so what? Her lips touched the tube, and she started to realize that it was the same tube Su Hyun drank from, and it was the same as kissing him. At that time, Kim was already standing on the bed and watching the bright blue color fill his room. He opened the window of crosses and read, You have received an award. He thought it was impossible and completed the quest as best he could. He started to read further. You got a gold card, and also you got a silver card. Kim thought that now how the quest was done didn't matter. He thought that it had cost him a lot of nerves and health and that the wish had finally come true. And that the first gold card with the three centimeters increase in height had actually come true and made him taller. The guy looked at the blue colored semi-transparent sensor and pressed the get card button. Two cards appeared in front of him and he thought it was impossible. Kim wondered what these cards did and he clicked on the gold one. The gold card enlarged and text appeared on it. The guy started to read, Disposable card, I have seen the light. Will restore vision 20 out of 20 and the card will disappear after use. The system started asking if you want to use this card. Kim's mouth dropped open in surprise and he thought, This time the vision will be restored. He pressed the button to use the card. The system showed the text you used the card, I saw the color. Kim thought it looked like a lie, and most of all, that he would be tricked and used again. He looked at his hands. Unfortunately, there was no change, he was still seeing blurry. After a few minutes, he looked at his hands again, and he was able to see even the prints on his fingers. Kim couldn't believe that his vision was really restored. He looked at his broken glasses, and to his surprise, he could see even the small scratches. Joy overwhelmed the boy from the inside out. He felt 100% and clenched his fists and started shouting that these quests are the best. He looked at the system and started to read, You have one card left and thought for sure with that joy I forgot about the second card. He was very curious about the silver card. He doubted it was as good as the gold one. He pressed the button to get the card. Kim narrowed his eyes a little. The silver white color was very bright. A much smaller silver card appeared in front of him. The boy thought, This silver card is not so good. He ran out of his room and heading to the kitchen started screaming loudly, Mom, my eyes recovered. Sister Diane was sitting in the kitchen. She asked me to shut my mouth and sit down to eat dinner. Kim started to ask where Mom was and thanked his sister for the food. Diana started to answer that Mom was working late tonight, and she was the one who prepared the food before work yet. Diane started to say, 
Stop talking, your breath stinks. Kim started to reply that it's probably your breath. Her sister looked at her brother and started asking, what is that on your face? Kim picked up a spoon and started eating the soup. He reluctantly started to answer that he was just fooling around with his friends. His sister started to say, why don't you just tell the truth that you were beaten up and your face looks like a punching bag? Kim smiled and started making excuses. Have you ever seen an older brother get beaten up? The sister started to reply, don't call yourself older. You're only a year older. Diane took a crunchy snack and ate it. Afterward, she looked at Kim and started asking, where are your glasses? The guy started to say he took them off because his eyesight had improved. The sister started to say, I know you're lying and you don't understand a lot of things. She asked him at school not to come up and talk to her. Kim's food fell off the spoon and he started asking what happened and why you don't want me to talk. Diane frowned her eyebrows and started to say, maybe I shouldn't have to explain this to you. You know the answer yourself. Kim sat staring at his plate. He didn't even want to eat. He started thinking about Chang beating him. He realized it was better not to argue with his mom and had to go to school. On the second day, Chang and his friends were waiting for Kim near the school. He heard the words, you're nothing, and a strong punch in the stomach made him fly into the air. Kim was twisted and couldn't unbend from the pain. Chang started to say, I'm glad you came to school today because we still have some unfinished business. He started to remember how much fun he had messing with Kim yesterday and started to say, I'm just surprised you had the guts to come to school today. One of the guys started saying, maybe he came to school because he thinks you're a wimp Chang Dong. The other one started saying that's 100% true and he's just not afraid of you. Kim started to get to his feet and staggered a little trying to keep his balance. Chang started to yell, but since that's the case, then I should give him a little extra. He ran up to the poor guy, caught him by the head and hit him with his knee and fist at the same time. This was all happening near the classroom window. The classmates were sitting and listening, but no one dared to help. One bully started to say that the bell will ring now. You'd better wrap up quickly and go to class. Sean slapped Kim's ribs one more time and started talking. After lunch, I'll be waiting for you behind the school. Kim silently walked to his desk and sat down on a chair. Kuja began to speak. You better be ready for anything. Don't eat anything for lunch or you'll throw up. They could hear from behind the window Chang beating up the next loser. Kuja made a sad face and started apologizing. Kim started to reply. If you had interfered, you would have gotten beaten up too. He covered his face with his hands and continued to say, Don't forget our rules. Don't interfere when another person is being beaten. Kuja started to say that everything is right, but today he went too far. Kim put his head on his hands and thus hid his face. He started to say that now there is no difference anymore. And why did I ask Beck Charon if she has ever been kissed? Kuja started asking if you want to be kissed. Kim started to reply, just not with you and I'd rather sleep. He closed his eyes and thought, how pathetic I am. Huge tears rolled from his eyes. He thought, why should I live like this? I've done nothing wrong. When lunchtime came, he didn't feel like eating at all. Kim was afraid the bullies would pick on him again. Chang took Kim outside the school, smoked a cigarette, and began to say, Let's continue our old topic. Remember that time in high school when Beck Charin was in high school? Maybe you want to yell at me like you did yesterday. Kim was on his knees and started to say that he was sorry and he didn't know what came over him yesterday. He apologized and started saying he shouldn't have done that. Chang started to say, that's a weird thing to say and I hit you the other day. He slapped his palm on Kim's face and continued to say, I just can't understand why you're apologizing to me. Maybe it's because you're a little puppy that nobody wants. Kim put his hand on his cheek and started to say, It hurts. Please don't do that again. Chang threw down his cigarette and started to say, I have an assignment for you. The cigarette flew very close to Kim and fell on the pavement. He covered the hair on his head with his hands and started to ask what other assignment he had in mind. Chang started to say, I don't think my cigarette is finished yet. He made a serious look on his face and continued to say, you know what you have to do. He pushed Kim and started to say, don't make me say it twice. Kim started crawling on the pavement towards the cigarette. And after crawling a few meters on the dirty asphalt, his hand reached for the cigarette. At that time, a girl with two bags in her hands was passing by, and she started to ask, what are you doing? Kim looked up and saw his sister Diane standing in front. He thought, and what am I going to do now? 
She watched Kim get to his feet and proceeded to ask why you need that cigarette butt. Chang walked over and hugged Kim. He started to ask, who is this girl and do you know her? Kim started to answer, she is my little sister. Chang started to say, I didn't even know you had a sister. Chang said hello and started to explain that it was all a misunderstanding and that he was just smoking and Kim was just picking up a cigarette butt he threw. Chang went on to say that Kim was a very well-mannered boy and he didn't want the teachers to catch them smoking. Diane looked at Kim and started to say, please tell me this guy is lying. Chang pressed his hand on Kim's shoulder and he confirmed Chang's words. Chang hugged Kim and turned around and started to walk away. He started to tell the girl that they are good friends and don't make up anything unnecessary. And coming around the corner of the house, he started saying, we almost got caught. Kim started to reply, I'm ashamed of you. Chang continued to say, I saved your ass and you can at least say thank you. He looked at Kim and started to say, your sis must be pretty popular. Kim replied briefly, I doubt it. Chang looked around the corner and saw the girl bending over to put the bags away. He looked at her long legs and began to say, I'd like to be friends with her. And I think you and I will be friends. Now I want to go to the bathroom and we'll go together. After the toilet, Chang washed his hands and continued talking. Su Hyun, I'm a little hurt. Why didn't you tell me you had a sister? Kim looked away and started talking. I wouldn't say my sister and I are close. She doesn't even want to talk to me at school. Chang walked up to Kim and started to say, but why is she doing this to you? Why don't you introduce us? Kim started to say that she doesn't listen to me and thinks I'm a loser. Chang took Kim by the shoulders and continued to say, you have to introduce me to her. Kim took his abuser's hands off his shoulders and continued to say that his sister is not as cool as he thinks she is and that she has terrible grades too, just like me. Chang started to say that he was a bad student too and with his sister, they could go to the library and study together. He started hugging Kim again, and this time he pressed his finger on his chest and started to say that we are friends, aren't we? And stop breaking down and introduce me to her. Kim started to ask why her and you have to understand that she is just a normal girl. Chang came closer and smiling started to say, if I tell you honestly, you will introduce me to her. Kim started to ask if you're going to lie to me. Chang started whispering in his ear, because your sister looks really hot. Kim's eyes widened and anger just overwhelmed him. He stood there silently, not even knowing what to say. After a short pause, he started to say what you just yelled. You look like a fat pig and you don't deserve my sister. Chang looked at Kim angrily. Those words made him very angry. The doors of the next stall opened. Kuja got up from the toilet and didn't even have time to put on his pants. He started to say, Chang, you are out of line. Chang quickly ran up to the guy and punched him in the face with his fist. Kim stood paralyzed and heard his friend hit the floor. Chang started yelling, I told you not to scare me with your face. He kicked the guy and continued to say, Yakuza, you are a weakling, and if you are in high school, you should look like a high school student. Kuja covered his head with his hands and started begging, for God's sake, stop hitting me. Chang stood with his feet on Kuja's back and started to say, you are 18 years old now, and you should realize that I feel guilty when I hit you. And besides, I told you not to talk with such a serious look on your face. Chang heard footsteps approaching him. Kim started to say, get off him. You're acting like two grown pigs. Chang got off Kuji and started to say, please repeat what you called me. Kim looked confidently at his assailant and started to say, maybe you have some hearing problem. Chang walked towards Kim and started to say, you know, this is a sore subject of mine. And this time I will definitely send you to the hospital. He started swinging his fist and started yelling, now I'm gonna wipe you out. Kim took a step back, but there was nowhere to run. He swung his fist, and luckily his fist was faster than his beard. Chang didn't even realize what had happened. He saw only a flash, and when he opened his eyes, he realized that he was lying on the dirty floor. Kim clenched his fists and teeth and was surprised that his fist hit the exact spot he was aiming at. And he began to remember how he got the silver card yesterday. He was only interested in the gold card, and he didn't see the point of getting that reward. He didn't know what to do with the silver card, but there was no delete button anywhere. The guy decided to press the button to open the silver card. Kim began to read the boxing jab attack card. You can throw a jab. This is the type of punch used in boxing. The current skill rank is F0 out of 100. 
When Kim was punching his opponent's beard, he saw a blue, translucent screen that said, You used a jab kick. And as Bully collapsed to the floor, Kim thought he couldn't live like this anymore, and now he had to change. He looked at his friend who was lying there beaten and couldn't even get up, and he thought, I've got to fight back. At that time, the screen highlighted the text, created a new quest. After that, a quest appeared on the screen. Fight and defeat Choi Chang Dong. The reward for successfully completing the mission is one silver card and one bronze card. Kim started to say, how could you call my sister sexy? For saying that, I'll beat you so hard that your mother won't recognize you. He clenched his fists and got into a fighting stance. The system highlighted the text of the beginning of the quest. Kim saw the bully lying on the floor laughing. She ran her hand through her beard and began to speak. I was just wondering what that was all about. Kim silently took a step back. Chang slowly got to his feet and started to say, I didn't even feel your punch. The bully clenched his fists and continued talking. I can see that you really want to know what I'm capable of. You must have been watching tutorials on YouTube all night. Kim took aim, and without thinking long, he stabbed Chang's attacker in the nose. The system flashed the text you have struck. Chang saw the flash again and felt the cold floor. He stared at the ceiling and couldn't come to his senses for a few seconds. He thought that this loser had secretly studied boxing and how such a weakling could knock me down with one punch. Chang abruptly got to his feet and started punching with his fist. He started yelling, you learned boxing to beat me. Unfortunately, he didn't see the punch again and his nose sagged under the hard bones of the fist. Kim made a sideways check and read the text that the system displayed. You struck again. Chang held on with all his might to keep from falling. He leaned his knee on the floor and immediately stood up, hoping to strike. Kim realized what the bully was up to and staggered forward with three quick punches. The blows came just as Kim had planned. One hit the eye, the second hit the cheek, and the third and final hit the neck. Kim then took a backward check and watched with pleasure as the bully rolled his eyes up and fell to the floor. By then, Kuja had regained consciousness and was sitting on the floor. He didn't know what was going on and started to say it was unbelievable that you beat him. The translucent sensor highlighted the text to fight and defeat Choi Chang Dong reward one silver card and one bronze card. The system highlighted a new text quest completed. Kim walked up to the bully who had been hurting him for years and sat on his back. Kuja started to say impossible. Su Hyun knocked out Chang Dong. Kim started to read a new message. Your jab skill level has increased. Then he looked at Chang, who was lying there, not moving, and started to say, I probably just killed him. Kuja got up and started talking. He must have just passed out. Kim started to say, now I will bring Chang back to consciousness. He raised his hand and wanted to palm him in the face. Kuja caught his hand and started to say, now is not the time. And we need to get away from here as soon as possible. Kim looked at his friend and started to say, stop making that face. They ran out of the restroom and their goal was to get away from the school grounds as fast as possible. They saw an abandoned workshop and the door was open. Kim sat down on the floor breathing heavily and started to say we managed to escape. His friend sat down on the floor next to him and began to say, you realize this is just the beginning. Kuji's lips quivered in fear, and he went on to say that our class must be on fire and the whole school is on fire. Those guys are creepy because they always go together. At that time, Chang had already regained consciousness and was looking for Kim's hiding place with his bully friends. Kim put his hand on his face and started to say if I could continue attending school because they would beat me up during every break. A friend started to ask when you learned how to box. Kim started to answer that he just watched videos on NewTube and practiced a lot. The friend was surprised and started to answer that it was possible I didn't even know. Kim thought, to be honest, there was a notification I've never seen before. What does it mean that the skill level is increasing and what happens if I reach level 100? He opened the quest window and started reading the attack card box jab. You can inflict jab and current skill rank is F97 out of 100. Kuja corrected his glasses and started saying, what did you say? And can you speak louder? Kim thought he needed to see what reward was given and started to reply, don't take my words seriously, I talk to myself sometimes. He thought it looked like the others couldn't see his quests, and in that case, he could look at the cards right now. Kim started to say, I need your kiss. Kuja started to reply, maybe you're lonely. Kim discreetly pressed the get cards button and thought, how is this possible? 
Two cards appeared in front of Kim. He silently looked forward. Kuja thought his friend must be a little crazy after being beaten every day for a long time. Kim opened his mouth and started to say, how is that possible? Kuja started to reply, unfortunately, I don't know how to help you. Or maybe you want me to ask my mom if she knows any good psychologist. The three girls approached the abandoned workshop. Beck Sharon started to say loudly, what are you up to? Kuja started to say quietly, I was suggesting that we should run off the school grounds and now we are doomed. Kim thought, why is Beck Charon looking for me? He looked at his friend and started to say, stop making such a serious face. Beck Charon opened the door and started asking what you did that the whole school is looking for you. Kim thought to himself, I doubt she's feeding on Chang Dong. He went up to the girl and started to tell her that it was true that the whole school was looking for him. Kim confessed that he had actually fought with Chung Dong. The girl looked at the guys with pity and started to say, I'll pretend I've never seen you here, so go home as soon as possible. They did as the girl said, but unfortunately they got caught on the school grounds. One of the students started to say it was him, and I'm 100% sure. Kim bent his head and wondered what I should do. The other guy started to say, but how could he be beaten up by such a dead guy? At that time, Kim got really scared. Several guys also surrounded Kuja. One of them put his hand on his shoulder and started to say, even you seem stronger than that dead guy. The other one started laughing and said, I can't believe Chang passed out from that loser's punch. Kuja started begging to be left alone. The guy yelled, shut your mouth and punched him in the face with his fist. Students from the junior high school came out to see what was going on. The guy who came from an unknown direction explained to them to run away as fast as they could before they got punched in the face. Kim closed his eyes and listened to the unfamiliar guys shouting from the crowd. Now you can't run anywhere and what are you going to do? Maybe you want to hit me or maybe you want to fight me. He figured they might as well beat me now and if I keep stalling, that guy might show up. The monster who made high school students bow their heads with his boxing skills the unbeatable Gu Hanju from the west side of Ganbuku might come here. One guy turned back and started to say, look, it can't be him. The undefeated Gu Hanju has come here. Gu Hanju walked into the school and immediately started looking for which class Chang Dong was in. He went up to his idol and immediately started reporting that Chang Dong was beaten up in the bathroom for the first time in the history of the school. He started to say that there were rumors that Chang had even fainted, Gu Hanja looked down at the guy and asked him not to stand in his way. The guy apologized and stepped aside. Gu Hanja started asking who Choi Chang Dong was and where he was. Chang was on his way to meet him. He started to hesitate and said it was me. They walked into the classroom together. Kim stood looking at the floor. Gu Hanja started to say, I can't believe it's the guy who beat you. Chang started to answer, that's right, this guy hit me. Gu Hanja asked Kim to raise his head and look him in the eyes. Kim raised his head and looked first at one guy and then at the other guy. Gu Hanja pointed his finger at Chang and started to ask him if it was true that you hit him. Kim looked to the side and said yes. Gu Hanja started to ask why you did it. The guy saw that Kim was visibly nervous and started to say, you better tell it like it was. Kim started to say that it was Chang who started it first and that he's been harassing and humiliating the weak for a long time and the last straw was when he humiliated my sister. Kim started yelling, I won't let anyone insult my family. Gu Hanja scratched the back of his head, looked at Kim and started talking, and that was it. I heard a rumor that you have a good punch, and I think it might be true. Since you were able to knock out a guy twice your size, Gu Hanja came closer and asked Kim to punch him. He grabbed Kim's wrists and kept saying, I heard you, Box. Come on, try to hit me. Chang and his team of bullies started whispering something in each other's ear and smiling evilly. Kim started to say that he wasn't really a boxer and that they were making it up. Two guys came up and started hitting on Kuja. One of them put his hand on his head and asked him if you want to hit me. Gu Hanja looked at Kim and started to say, then should I hit you? Kim pressed his palms against his chest and thought, what should I do and why does this guy want me to hit him? Maybe I really should do it. Gu Hanja continued to say, don't be afraid, everything will be fine. Kim was afraid to even look at a guy who was much bigger than him. He wondered what would happen if I hit him. The situation is really bad because I don't have a choice anyway. Gu Hanja started to say, let's make a deal with you so if you can hit me, I'll back off and leave. I promise you that I will because my word is law. Kim didn't know what to do because he couldn't just run away. And he watched as more and more people gathered in the classroom. 
Suddenly, he had an idea. Kim remembered that he had two cards that he had recently gotten. He discreetly opened the quest window and wondered if I could use them now. Two cards appeared in front of his eyes, and he started to read the silver card is a healing bean, and you can only eat one bean a day. The bronze card hit high notes. It gives you the ability to play high sounds and can be very loud. He didn't think the high note punch would work in this situation, but the healing bean will be very useful, and if I use this card, my stamina will return to normal. But even if it does, I wonder if it will change my situation. Gu Hanju started to say, I told you not to stall and you better hit me or I might get angry. Kim thought, but there's no way I can beat this guy. He watched the bullies bullying his friend and thought, what should I do? And whether I hit him or not, he will beat me anyway. Maybe I could avoid the humiliation. Kim thought he had to act fast and threw a punch. The punch was so fast that the guy's hair flew up in the wind. Kim thought that now the situation was much more serious. And why did he always bring problems on his head? He wondered how such a big guy could dodge a punch so quickly. Gu Hanju continued to stand with his hands down and stared at his opponent. Kim stepped forward and threw two more sharp punches, but his opponent was able to dodge with ease. Kim took a step to the side and thought my plan didn't work, and what do I do now? Gu Hanju got tired of standing there and took a step forward and threw a strong fist punch at Kim's chest. Kim felt his feet lifted off the ground and his body flew backwards. He felt the air go out of his lungs and his eyes went dark. He lay on the cold floor and after a few minutes, he opened his eyes and realized that he had blacked out. Now Kim was no longer afraid. He realized that Gu Hanju had dodged his jeb and then knocked him out with one punch. He also realized that such mistakes were unacceptable and now he was dead. Gu Hanju was already heading towards him. Kim thought, how could I really try to hit him? And after that, I'm not going to live. Kim got to his feet and started to cover his face with his hand as usual. He thought this guy would tear me to pieces and feed me to the wild dogs. I would like to choose my own death. Gu Hanju stopped and started asking what you were doing. Kim started to answer, I'm waiting for you to hit me. The guy turned his back to him and started to say, I'm not going to do that. Let's go have a smoke. Kim started to say that it's true. I thought you were just a bully. He didn't know what was going to happen, but he went outside with all the guys. The guys got cigarettes and started smoking. One asked the other one what happened with that girl. The other one started to answer. I can tell you that I got her number, but she's not picking up for some reason. Kim felt out of place. He wondered what I was doing here. The guy started to say, try calling her again and offer to have a beer. The other guy started to say, you must have hit your head. You can't talk to girls like that. Kim thought about what's going on and why he brought me here. Gu Hanju held out a cigarette and started to say, what are you waiting for? Don't be shy, take it and smoke it. Kim looked at the guy and thought I finally got it. He's gonna beat me up right here. He put his hands up and started waving them around to let me know he wasn't interested. Kim started to say, thank you very much, but I don't smoke and I thought you brought me here because you can't beat me up in class. He watched Gu Hanju smoking and thought, so the rumors are true. This guy is a real thug. The guy took a puff of bitter cigarette smoke and started asking for your name. In response, he heard my name was Kim Soo Hyun. The guy apologized for what happened. Kim couldn't understand why he was apologizing. The guy started to say you were better than I thought you were and I didn't even aim. I just hit you on automatic. And I didn't box long either. I think you have potential. Kim's head was all messed up how this guy could come in and knock me out, and now he's showering me with compliments. After Kim got home, he went into his room and lay down on his bed. He thought I'd heard this guy was a scary person, and I can't understand what's wrong with him. Because he was so polite to me, he even apologized and complimented me. Maybe the rumors are false and Gu Hanju isn't that bad. The thought of that guy coming back tomorrow and beating him up made Kim get out of bed and he started to say that it was very disappointing. He opened the quest window and started reading. There are currently no quests available. Kim thought about the fact that these quests were the reason he ran into Gu Hanja and who even sends this in the first place. The system said the quests were still training quests. That's why they give so many cards. Kim wondered if the main quests were in a separate category. He had already gotten the gold, silver, and bronze cards and hoped there were cooler cards out there. Kim wondered how much stronger the cards could get if the level was higher than gold. He wondered what the possibilities might be on higher level cards. He looked at the cards he had already gotten and thought they were all fight related. 
Kim closed his eyes and tried to stop thinking about the quests. The next morning, his alarm clock woke him up and he had to go to school again. This time, the bullies were not waiting for him near the school, and he managed to enter the classroom quietly. He sat down at his desk and thought maybe Chang didn't come to school today. Kuja fixed his glasses and started talking. Guhanju is kind of quiet and I didn't think of him that way. Kim started to say I thought when I got to school he'd find me and beat me up right away. Or maybe he'll wait until I say something stupid about him and then he'll come and kill me. Someone entered the classroom. Kim was afraid to turn his head. He thought it was the guy from yesterday. Chang came over and started saying, Hey, you're here. I've been looking for you. Kim thought about having to fight Chang again. He clenched his fists and started to say, What do you want from me again? Chang started to answer, I didn't come here for that. I came to tell you that Gu Hanju wants to meet you after school. He waved his hand and turned around and started to walk away. Kim started to ask if he said anything else. Chang didn't want to talk anymore and started to reply, I did what I had to do, and now goodbye. Kim started to say why that guy wants to meet me after school and now I'm totally screwed. Chang deliberately told me that's the wound itself. He wants me to be scared all day. Kuja looked at his friend and started to say, I don't even have words. I'm afraid Hanju will just kill you. Kim started asking his friend what to do now and how to avoid humiliation. Kuja started to answer that you have no other way out. Even if you run away tomorrow, it will be worse. After lunch, Chang approached again and explained that Gu Hanju didn't have time and that it would be better for Kim to come by himself. After school, Kim headed to the club. Kim stood in front of the exit doors, thinking that he should meet Hanju today and get it over with. He walked into the club and was a little confused. There were a lot of people there. Kim looked at the people sitting at the tables and tried to find the guy. He walked over to one of the tables. Gu Hanju was talking to his friends, and when he saw the guy, he said, You're Kim Soo Hyun, that's right. He pointed to an empty seat with his hand and started to say, Don't be shy, sit down. Kim looked at the alcohol and thought that's what they do when they hang out. The girl started whispering in her girlfriend's ear if she knew this guy. The girlfriend quietly began to answer, I have no idea who he is. Kim thought, all the popular girls at our school are here. This guy must be trying to humiliate me in front of everyone. He thought about how I should behave and what I could do to not get beaten up so badly. He heard a familiar voice. Hey, Kim Soo Hyun. Baek Che Rin was sitting right next to him. She looked at the guy and started asking, what are you doing here? Kim looked at the girl and started to say, hey, I'm glad to see you. Beck Charon continued to say, I think I asked you a question. Kim lowered his eyes down and started to answer, you know, Hanju called me here. A guy who doesn't know her started to tell her newbie since you came here, sing us something. That's Hanju's wish. He wants you to sing. Kim didn't know what to do and thought if I said no, I'd ruin the mood. His voice was shaking and he started to answer, but I don't know what I can sing. The guy he didn't know started laughing and said, look at him shaking with fear. Kim remembered he had a map. He took the microphone and discreetly used it to hit the high notes. And when Kim started to sing, he was surprised that his voice could be so beautiful. Beck Sharon listened and watched carefully every movement of his hands. The girl thought he was much nicer than she thought. The girl leaned over to her girlfriend and started to say that he was talented. The girlfriend started to reply that it can't be and that maybe he was playing a phonogram. Hanju looked at Kim and thought it would be a good idea to ask him to sing and wondered what else he could do. When Kim finished singing, he immediately put the microphone on the table and sat down in his seat. Everyone looked at him in silence and Kim started to blush shyly. Beck Charon looked at Kim in a different way and started to say it's amazing that you didn't sing an anime song or something and I'm just amazed at your voice. The unfamiliar girl leaned over to her friend and started to say, I'm really surprised I think he's cute. The girlfriend started to respond. He's nice looking, but I liked it better when he hit those high notes. Two guys who were sitting next to Hanju started to argue about who sings better. Hanju got tired of listening to idle talk and started saying that both of them had no ear and needed more practice. A girl she didn't know started asking her friend if she had seen him here before. The girlfriend starts to answer that he has never been here before, and it seems to be Hanju's friend. The unfamiliar girl started to say, but I've never seen him bring his friends here before. 
One of the guys started to say his name is Kim Soo Hyun. The other one started asking him to sing us another song. Kim thought that Hanju wasn't going to beat him up and humiliate him in front of everyone. The two guys, smiling cheerfully, stood up and approached Kim. One gave him a microphone and asked him to try to sing some energetic song. The other one hugged him and started to say that you like to party. Kim smiled and started to answer, I will try to sing and cheer you up. The atmosphere in the club was very pleasant. Kim sang and thought that the rumors were lies, and Hanju was always a great guy. Kim looked at Hanju and started to ask if you wanted something special. Hanju smiled and started to answer, maybe it would be better for the girls to order the next song. The next morning, Kim woke up in a very good mood. When he looked out of the apartment window, he saw the sun shining brightly and a warm breeze blowing. The weather outside was nice for the first time in his life. Kim was excited about going to school. So as he walked onto the school grounds, he thought, I was sure I was finished, and I can't believe Hanju is calling me friend now. He headed for the front doors and thought school life would be as easy as a feather. Hanju said to let him know if anything happened. Kim opened the quest window and read that there were no quests available at the moment. He thought that since I started doing the quests, things are getting better, and I don't have to be afraid of bullies anymore. And maybe I'll ask Hanja to protect Kuja too. He saw a guy he knew coming around the corner. Hanju waved at him and started to say you're going to school. Kim said hello and started to say that he had to get in quickly. He saw the system send out a message saying I'm starting the main quest. He thought the training quests were over and now he had to do the main quest. Then the system sent a second message saying that after completing the first main quest, you will receive a special reward of a platinum card. Kim thought that the platinum card was cooler than the gold card, which meant that the quest might be harder. The difficulty of the quest didn't scare the guy. He figured whatever it was, I'd get through it. Kim looked at the translucent sensor and began to read, You need to start a fight and defeat the best fighter of the west side of Ganbuku High School in Guhanju time to complete the quest three days. Reward one platinum card. Hanju looked at Kim and started to say, First you say we have to hurry and now you are standing like a pillar. Kim's facial expression changed a lot. Fear was visible in his eyes. He thought maybe some of the rumors about Gu Hanju were exaggerated, but he is still the best fighter in the school and I have to beat him within three days. Kim opened the box jab card. Their current skill level was 97 out of 100. He thought it was unfortunate that the skill didn't work. Hanju started to say you shouldn't be afraid of me and maybe you have something to say. Kim started to answer, just my head is a mess. I don't know what to do. After school, Kim kept thinking that he had zero chances and wanted to find a way out of the situation as soon as possible. He opened the quest window and started reading. As he completed the main quest, additional quests will become available. These will give you the opportunity to earn more cards. Hours later, Kim was standing in a narrow, dark street thinking Hanju just punched me in the chest and I blacked out. I'm afraid to imagine what would happen if he punched me in the face. And from around the corner, I could hear shouting where he was hiding. We have to find him as fast as we can. Kim thought, so that's it. I hit this guy in the jaw and he fainted. Now I need to get to my senses as soon as possible and decide what to do next. One of the hooligans pointed his finger and started yelling, he's hiding in that dark street. Grab him quickly. Kim thought, I've managed to knock one of the hooligans down but there are still four more. One of the guys took off his jacket and started to say that you can't run away now. You know that Seong Chul takes care of the younger ones, but after what you did, you're dead. Kim became very scared and ran away with all his might and started screaming, why are you doing this to me? I didn't kill that guy, he fainted. Four guys were running behind him and one of them started yelling, we'll catch you and avenge Seong Chul. Kim ran and thought if the hooligans surround me, I just can't win and I have to fight thoughtfully. He could hear shouts from behind. You better stop or you'll get hurt. He thought he should find a place to fight one-on-one. -on -one. The hooligans were happy that they had managed to drive their victim into a back street. One of the guys started to say, look at him. He looks tired. The other started laughing and said, we need to show this loser that it's better to stay home in the evening. Kim rested his hands on his knees and breathed heavily. He thought, well, there are walls on each side and they are the only ones in front. One of the guys started to say, you think you can beat us here? Or are you so stupid that you even got the wrong streets and ran the wrong way? 
The other one started to say you don't look so good. You must have boxed. Kim thought here I can fight them one-on-one, -on -one, but now my strength is at zero. He realized that time was running out and he had to act. A few seconds later, a bean appeared in his palm. The third bully began to speak. Your physical training is weak and you must admit that you don't know anything else but jab. Kim ate the recovery bean without thinking. The fourth bully started talking. You should talk less or you're afraid of this dead guy. Maybe you need an example of what I do to losers like that. He started running forward and swinging his fist. In the quest window, Kim read your powers have been restored. The bully managed to shout, Now I will avenge Sang Chul. Kim used a jab and his fist hit the attacker's face much faster. Kim's punch was too weak to knock out the enemy. The bully took two steps back and tried to keep his balance. Kim took a step to the right and two steps forward. After that, he threw a series of punches with his fists. Three blows to the face and a final blow to the chest sent the bully's body flying several meters away. The three remaining bullies opened their mouths in surprise. One started to say what's going on and I can't understand how this loser managed to win. The other started to shout, I think this deadbeat is going to kill us all here. Kim looked at the hooligans and thought my body is used to this move and now I can use it whenever I want. And I think I can try to challenge Gu Hanju. The system popped up a text saying you must fight the bullies and win. At the moment, you have two wins out of five. The hooligans started to cower in fear. Their confidence was gone. One started to say, look, that guy killed Jin, and I think he and Sung Chul will be waiting for us in heaven. The second one started to say, but I have my own hopes and dreams, and now what? The third bully couldn't even say a word out of fear. He just pissed his pants. Kim started running forward and yelling loudly, I didn't kill those guys. The system highlighted the text and used a loud voice. Kim took a sharp blow to his enemy's jaw. The system has brightened the text. Fight the bullies and win. You currently have three wins out of five. Kim staggered to the right and threw a lightning-fast fist punch to the enemy's jaw. The system highlighted the text fight the bullies and win. You currently have four wins out of five. The third bully who pissed his pants tried to run away, but it was too late. Kim took three long strides to catch up with him and hit him in the jaw with his fist. The system highlighted the text, you have five wins out of five. The bullies lay still and didn't move. Kim sat down on the pavement and breathed heavily. He saw that the system highlighted the text side quest completed. Kim started to read, you have fulfilled the hidden condition. He wondered what the hidden condition was because there was no information about it before. The system highlighted the following message. The quest to defeat enemies without getting hit has been successfully completed. Kim looked up and saw that the translucent sensor was emitting a bright purple light. It began to read, We congratulate you, and for fulfilling the hidden condition you will receive a gold card. All the time Kim thought that the bullies could knock him out with one punch, so he ran away and finally fulfilled the hidden condition. Kim realized that he couldn't stay there any longer and took wide steps into the next street. After that, he stopped and opened the quest window and entered the reward upgrade. He smiled and started to say, unbelievably great luck has come to me. He looked at how wonderfully shiny the gold card was and thought he should look at it right away. Kim pressed the button to open the gold card and instantly his smile disappeared somewhere. He thought about what it was about. The system highlighted the text and Kim began to read, you must defeat the ringleader of Gangbuk High School, Gu Hanju. Remaining time, 16 hours, 2 minutes, and 23 seconds. Reward platinum card, one piece. The next day, Kim came to school. During class, he sat as quiet and moodless as ever. He opened the quest window time after time, but nothing changed there. He thought it's been three days, and I still haven't found a way out of this situation. Desperate, he put his hand to his head and thought I only have 8 o'clock hours left, and I should be able to defeat Gu Hanja in that time. He opened the cross's window again and thought I only have four cards, and that's the E-Rang jab, the recovery beans, the loud voice, and the gold card I got after kicking the bully's asses. Kim thought about whether he could beat Hanju, who had single-handedly beaten dozens of bullies and never lost. Kim was setting himself up to win. He realized that there was a chance that he might not win. He began to remember how he was bullied by Chang and his friends and thought that things could go back to the way they were before. He realized he couldn't let that happen and he planned to protect his friend Kuju. Kim heard a voice, you still want to kiss me. He turned his head to his friend and started to say, you must be out of your mind. 
Kuja started to reply. Just you have such a serious face, maybe something happened. Kim thought that Kuja had always been on his side and helped him as much as he could. He smiled and started to say, You know, there are a lot of changes in my life and I'm worried about Gu Hanju. Kuja took out a notebook and a pen and started to say, This is the guy who called you for a talk a few days ago. Kim started to reply, Don't pay attention, and thought that Kuja had defended himself for him many times and then got beaten up a lot. Kim was glad he had found such a friend. He thought he'd never even thanked a friend for that, and he should say thank you at least now. Kim smiled and started to say thank you for everything and for taking care of me. He thought I feel like I'm going to my death. Kuja fixed his glasses and started to say what's going on and why are you saying that now? Kim heard someone coming to the door and thought it must be the guy who came for me. The door opened and Hanju walked into the classroom. He looked at Kim and started to ask what you were doing. Kim started to answer, yes, I'm trying to learn something new. Hanju put his hands in his pockets and started asking if you want to go to the store with me. Kim looked at his new acquaintance and thought, how can I start a fight with him because I can't just say let's fight. He got up from his chair, smiled, and started to say, yes, of course, let's go. Kim thought I haven't been so scared for a long time and first we'll go to the store together and on the way, I'll figure out how to start a fight. An unfamiliar guy was telling his girlfriend that it was hot outside, so he bought ice cream. The girl started to reply that she was planning to go out and get ice cream too. And when they entered the classroom, Hanju was standing by the front door. A guy he didn't know accidentally stained his shirt with ice cream. The guy immediately stepped back and apologized. Hanju turned his head and looked unhappily first at his shirt, and then at the guy. The guy started to apologize that he stained his shirt by accident, and he didn't mean to do it. Kim wondered what his new acquaintance would do in this situation. Beck Charon was brushing her hair and looked at Hanju. She thought, I wonder what he will do to my classmate. Kuja thought that this loser would get them all in trouble. Hanju caught the guy by the shirt on his chest and slowly pulled him towards him. He started to say, you know who I am and that I can take your appetite away quickly. Kim thought he had to stop Hanja. He came over and started saying, we're going to the store with you. And if you reach out to the weak, you're just a bully. Kim thought if he did it right, he could get a platinum card. Hanju let go of the guy and started talking to Suhyun Kim about what you just said. He came closer and continued to say, please repeat what you called me. Kim looked into the eyes of his new acquaintance and started to say what you heard me say, I called you a common bully. Kim furrowed his eyebrows and thought, I know my powers aren't enough, but I'll do what I can. He thought he could use the gold card now and started to say I should probably use my skills. Kim thought he had more experience and would be able to do the same as in the training. Hunju pulled a napkin out of his pocket to wipe his shirt and held out his hand to Kim. Then he stroked Kim's head and started to say it's very rare to find a guy in this school who cares so much about others. He smiled and went on to say that you must be angry because I hit your classmate. Kim opened his mouth in surprise and started to say now, I have to prove you wrong. Hanju kept stroking Kim's head and started to reply, but I don't see the point and why friends should fight with their fists. He hugged Kim and continued to say you should relax and let's go to the store. Kim headed for the exit and thought it must be wrong. After lunch at big break, two girls were sitting on the steps outside the school. One started to say, did you hear the news? We almost had a fight at school. The other one started to say, I'm curious. Tell me who wanted to fight with who. The girl said that someone hit Gu Hanja. The friend started to say that this guy is the best in our school, and I wondered who was so brave. The girl went on to say that the brave guy was called Kim Soo Hyun. Kim was also sitting on the stairs a few meters away. He thought his plan had failed. The girl started to answer, I know that loser and I'm surprised he's still alive. The girl continued talking. Gu Hanju said he wouldn't fight. Kim was very upset because he didn't even think that his new acquaintance would apologize to his classmate. The girlfriend started to reply, I think the rumors about them being friends are true. Gu Hanju doesn't act the same way with friends. Kim thought about what to do. He must really think I'm his friend. Kuja came and sat next to his friend. Kim put his head on his hands, hiding his face. He thought everyone likes to gossip, but Hanja really likes me. He opened the translucent sensor again and began to read, You must defeat the ringleader of Gangbuck High School. The time remaining is 5 hours 12 minutes and 26 seconds. He realized that there was almost no time left to complete the quest. If it continued like this, the quest would fail. 
Kuja looked at his friend and asked Hyun, what's wrong with you again? Maybe you're so upset about that guy. Kim, without raising his head, started to answer that it's because of Hanju. Kuja started to say he is bullying you again, and I hope he will graduate soon and be gone forever. Bekcharin walked out of the school and headed down the steps to Kim. She started talking about how rumors had already spread throughout the school. She walked closer and continued to talk about what you were thinking when you challenged him. You really wanted to fight Gu Hanju. Kim lifted his head from his knees and started talking. I don't know. The girl sat down on the stairs next to Kim and started to say, You seem funny to me sometimes, and is it true that you got angry when you saw him hurting others? Kim made an indifferent look on his face and started to reply, You know it's a lie. Beck Charon smiled and started to say, Lies is your answer. Kim looked the girl in the eyes and started to say, I have a question for you. The girl replied shortly, Ask it. Kim started to ask why you are always hanging out with Gu Hanju and his kind. Why did you help me when Chang was beating me up, and why did you help me escape when the whole school was looking for me? And if you look at you in one piece, you seem very kind. I don't understand why you go out with those guys. You don't bully others. Beck Charon looked at her legs and started to say I only wear them because I'm comfortable. The girl looked at the school children walking by and continued to say, I think you were expecting some kind of unusual answer. Kim put his head back on his lap and started to say, I see, you're just like everyone else. Then he raised his head and continued to say, But you have a choice. Look how many kind and handsome guys there are at our school. The girl furrowed her eyebrows and started shouting, Who do you think you are and don't forget? She stood up and started to say calmly that you should have brought it up in the conversation, and I thought you were a normal guy. Kim apologized and started to say I thought we were friends, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. Kim heard footsteps coming towards him. He turned his head and heard Kim Soo Hyun. We're in trouble. He started to ask what's wrong. A classmate started yelling that it's not the time to sit around. The boy said that his friend Yakuza was in big trouble. Kim got up and started asking where Kuja was. He wondered what I could do in this situation. The high school students were standing not too far from the school. They were smoking cigarettes and laughing loudly. One of the guys started to say, look at that bespectacled guy, and it makes me laugh when I see his serious face. The other one puffed on the cigarette smoke and started to say, please repeat what you said or we didn't hear you. Kuja clenched his fists and started to say, I can repeat until he comes here. Then he started shouting, call Gu Hanja here. The bully touched Kuja's face with his hand and started to say, do you think if you shout it will affect us? Or maybe you think Hanju will just come if you ask. I remember seeing you somewhere before. The guy who was standing behind him started to say, isn't that Su Yun's mongrel and he follows him everywhere. The bully slapped Kuja and continued to say, Su Yun is close to Hanju. Think you can be his friend too? The bully started punching and at the same time shouting that you don't look like a student. Someone in the crowd started shouting to move away or you'll get hit too. The bully lowered his fist and silently stepped aside. Hanju was heading towards the crowd and started to say, learn to ask first what's wrong and only then punch. Hanju came closer and started asking why you were looking for me. Kuja clenched his fists and started to say, you know, I wanted to talk to you. He furrowed his eyebrows and continued to say, I'm asking you nicely not to touch Su Hyun anymore. Hanju thought I have to waste my time on some loser again. He started to say, don't make such an aggressive face and you'd better relax your hands or I'll get nervous. Now please repeat what you said or I don't understand anything at all. Kuja started to say, I asked you nicely not to bully Su Yun anymore. One of the guys started to say, is it bullying when a strong man drags a weak man around? But Kuja didn't hear these words. He was stunned by a strong blow to his ear. The bullies were watching with their mouths open. One of the guys started to say, it's crazy and look how that bespectacled guy did a somersault from the blow. The other hooligan started laughing and said that glasses man doesn't look like a schoolboy at all. Maybe he escaped from the circus. I've seen them do stunts like that. Hanju sat down next to the lying Kuja and started to say, didn't you know that Su Hyun and I are friends? He took Kuja by his face and helped him to his feet. Hanju started to say, I don't hit my friends, but I hate those who interfere in my affairs. After saying that he hit Kuja's nose with his fist and continued to say how you dare to call me. And tell me, have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror? Kuja fell on the pavement again. His ear hurt terribly, and now his nose hurt too. Hanju started to say that you know there are classes in the world and you have to fit in. And you're saying I'm making fun of Su Hyun. 
Just because he and I became friends, you call it bullying. Kuja tried to stand up, but his head was spinning and he sat back down on the pavement. He covered his face with his hand and started to say, please leave my friend alone. Hanju started laughing and said you should realize that you are from different classes and you should get away from him. Kuja thought it looks like that bully broke my nose and started to say, if that's the reason why you consider him your friend, then Suhyun won't consider you a friend. At that time, Kim ran up and suddenly threw a punch and his fist hit his opponent's face. The system highlighted the text you used a jab. All the hooligans started shouting furiously they couldn't believe that someone would dare to hit their leader. Kim slowed down beside his friend and calmly watched Hanju step back. Hanju took his hand to his lips and started to say good punch and how did you think of attacking me from behind? Kim looked at his friend and started to say sorry to keep you waiting. He remembered how Kuja was not afraid to defend himself for him in the bathroom. He knew beforehand that Chang would beat him. Kim got into a fighting stance and started to say, you know, if it wasn't for you, I'd have a hard time dealing with everything at school. One of the guys ran into the classroom and started yelling, there's a fight outside. The guy who was sitting near the entrance immediately stood up and started asking who was fighting with who. The other guy started to say the street is big where they are fighting. The guy started to answer, let's run to the back of the school and see for ourselves. On the way to the backyard, the guy said that Kim Soo-hyun wants to fight Gu Hanju. After a few minutes, a lot of students gathered in the backyard. One of the guys started to say that this dead guy is really going to fight. It's suicide. The other one started to say, I already know who's going to win. The girl who was standing next to him started to say that Soo Hyun is crazy. He doesn't even have a reason to fight. Kuja stood and held on to the wall. He thought this guy is a monster now. I'm even more afraid for my friend. Now I'll recover a little and when I have strength, I'll help Kim. Beck Sharon stood in the crowd thinking this loser could really die. Maybe I can try to stop them but I don't even have a plan on how to do that. Hanju took a step forward and started to say, Kim Soo Hyun, you really want to fight me. He leveled his neck and started to ask where in your head you get such stupid thoughts from. I wonder what motivates you. Hanju made another move forward and continued to say, you know, I thought you and I were friends. Kim started to confidently answer, I'm motivated by justice. Today I will once and for all prove to you and everyone here that it is not okay to hurt the weak and divide people into classes. Kim thought it was good that I had recently gotten a new card. He stealthily opened the quest window and clicked on the gold card. Then he got into a fighting stance and started to say, I have no friends in this school except Yakuza. A text appeared on the gold card and Kim started to read if you want to use the attack card with power increase. The duration of the attack is five seconds. Kim pressed the start button and started saying, yes, I'll do you in five seconds. One high school student started to say, did you hear what he just said? The other one started to reply. He said he would do Gu Hanja in five seconds, and he must have hit his head on the way here. The red-headed bully started to say that Su Yun is crazy, and we should tell his family to get ready for the funeral. The other guy started to answer, but I heard he was a boxer. The red-haired bully continued to say that even if he boxed, he couldn't compare to the invincible Hanju. Kim looked his enemy in the eye and thought I can beat him. He remembered that through practicing with bullies, he had upgraded his jab to E-rank and now it would be wise to use it. He used the enhanced jab and with a lightning fast left hand punch, he managed to hit the enemy's face. Yakuza wiped his glasses and thought, hang in there, Kim or Chang will wipe his feet on you like he did on me. Beck Charon watched carefully and thought how he managed to hit Hanju in the face. Kim took a step to the right and struck with his left hand just like before. This time, Hanju dodged the blow. He looked at the flying fist near his nose and started to say, you can't fool me for the second time and your five seconds are over. One of the school kids in the crowd started to say that was cool and I hope this guy puts an end to the bully gang. Kim thought that every second was precious and threw two more punches with his right hand. Hanju realized his tactics and dodged the blows. The other students started talking as if we were watching a boxing match. Beck Charon looked at her girlfriend and started to say that it was with Kim Soo Yun and he always boxed so well. The girlfriend started to reply, look Hanju once again ducked, he probably can't do anything. A plan appeared in Kim's mind and he immediately started to put it into action. He took a few steps back and lunged forward. The punch was indeed much stronger. The system highlighted the text you used the jab. The opponent who was punching half as much easily dodged the punch. 
The high school student looked at his friend and started to say why Hanju doesn't hit his opponent and if he really loses, we'll all be dead. The other guy started to reply, Don't be silly, I think he's just playing around. Chang was watching the fight and started to say, I think Su Yun's movements are strange. He's swinging his fists like he did when he knocked me out in the bathroom. Kim moved to a safe distance and thought I should keep on attacking. My opponent must be more tired than me. Hanju had already memorized Kim's every move. He thought it was time to end this game, and with one precise kick to the chest, he knocked Kim's attacker down. Chang started laughing and saying that Su Hyun doesn't know anything but Jeb. Kim got to his feet, but there was no air left in his lungs. He fell to his knees and tried to take a breath. Hanju started to come up and say that's all you can do. All the students stood and watched in silence. They were eagerly waiting to see what would happen next. Kim managed to get some air into his lungs. He started to get up and said, I always honor my words, but I just need five more seconds. Hanju ran up and slapped Kim in the face with his palm. He started to say, why are you so stubborn? Is it so hard to realize that I'm not your equal? He watched Kim land on the ground and started to say, I feel sorry for you and I don't like hitting the weak, but you make me do it. Did you really think you could beat me with just a jab? Kim was lying on the pavement and couldn't understand what was happening. The palm of his hand had stunned him, but luckily not knocked him out. He thought about how he was sitting on his bed in his room, wondering if he could beat Gu Hanja with Jeb's help. Kim clenched his fist and the system highlighted the text you want to use jab. He thought the jab was certainly strengthened, but not enough to defeat him. He started talking like I thought I had nothing left but to use the card I got in the side quest this time. He opened the gold card from the power increase and the text attack duration five seconds appeared. Kim went on to say that it would be better because it's a card from jujitsu or some special technique. I should be as vigilant as possible if I decide to use this card. Now he knew that the power increase only lasted for five seconds and wondered if he could win in just five seconds. He realized there was no other choice. Kim thought, I think my breathing is back to normal and I must win. Then he got to his feet and started running towards Hanju. The opponent stepped towards the attacker and struck with his right fist. He hit Kim in the face just as he planned and started to say, what are you up to? Chang smiled evilly and started to say this loser isn't even an athlete and he thought he could win. Now he's pathetically lying on the pavement. The bully standing next to him started talking because Hanju has been boxing his whole life. And the difference in strength is very big. I don't think Su Yun can attack. At that time, Kim tried to get up on his feet. Kim's whole body was in pain, but he got back on his feet and thought I can still use my strength gains. He started to run at the opponent again and shouted, when I say five seconds, it means I have to do more. The system highlighted the text used a loud voice. Hanju caught Kim by the arm and threw him over his shoulder. He started to speak. Can you explain to me more about what you are going to do? He watched Kim lying on the ground in pain and started to say, I think it's best for you to retreat. But Kim quickly got to his feet and without wasting any time, he started attacking again. He was getting closer and started yelling, but I can't back off now. He tried to dodge, but a glancing blow threw his head back. Kim thought I'll keep attacking until he gets tired or distracted. This time Hanju got hit in the jaw and thought this punch should knock him out. He started to say, answer the question when I ask you what you're up to. Kim's body flew back again, and he thought if I pass out now, it's the end. He managed to keep his balance by catching Hanja by the shirt. He moved closer to his opponent and hooked his arms just below the rib cage. Kim pressed his head on Hanju's chest and thought, I've been losing all my life, but now I'd better wait for a chance. After a few seconds, he thought maybe this is my chance. Kim clutched a bright green bean with his teeth. The system displayed the text accepted bean restorers. Hanju angrily started shouting, I don't like being ignored more than anything. System highlighted text strength restored. The red-haired bully started walking towards the fighting guys and saying, this is not a fight anymore. We need to break them up as soon as possible. The second bully starts yelling, I knew this would happen and I don't want to watch this puppy die. Kim continued to gather his strength and locked his hands around his opponent's waist. Hanju looked down and started to speak. You made a bad decision again. After so many defeats, you decided to fight me as well. He caught Kim's hands just below his shoulders and continued to say, you are going to die from the strength of my hands. Hanju squeezed his fingers with all his might and his anger changed to surprise. He wondered what was going on because I was in control of the situation. He tried to throw his opponent away, but he couldn't move at all. 
Kim clung like a tick and thought it was better to die than to go back to his old life. He thought that yesterday when he opened the gold card, he immediately realized that it was very different from the jab. It said a strength-increasing attack card that can increase your body mass by 100 kilograms for five seconds, and it can only be used once a day. Hanju tried to break his opponent's lock, but it didn't work. He thought, I know all the techniques, but why can't I do anything now? Kim pressed his feet into the ground with all his might. His current weight of 156 kilograms allowed him to move his opponent back a few steps. A schoolboy started yelling, look at Hanju's back. The system highlighted the text that the countdown on the strength increase map was starting. The red-haired bully stopped and looked at his friend and started to say, I think Hanju can't really break free of his grip. Kim crouched down a bit and caught his opponent just above his knees. He then abruptly lifted Hanju up and put him on his shoulder. Five seconds left. Kim leveled himself and clenched his teeth and thought, I'll never let anyone hit me again. He then threw his opponent's body against the pavement with all his might. Kim started to say you taught me a lot of things, like how you can't just stand there and wait to get hit, time remaining four seconds. Hanju thought how he could have such incredible strength. He was able to lift me up so easily, and after hitting the pavement hard, his eyes went black. Kim thought that his opponent had blacked out after that throw and started to take off his sweater with three seconds left. Kim saw that his opponent opened his eyes and tried to get up. He thought if I want to win, I have to use a special punch. Kim didn't waste any time, he ran up and threw a fist punch. The 156 kilograms heavyweight punch landed on his opponent's face. Hanju felt great pain and blood was pouring from his broken lip. He thought I have to get up as soon as possible. Hanju thought it's impossible and I think I underestimated this guy. He knew he had to keep fighting but he had no strength left. Kim thought that there was not a second to lose and if he could finish what he started, the most he could do was to win. He sat on Hanju and started punching him in the face. He kept on punching, and when the system showed the expiration date of the power increase, he calmly put his hands down. Hanju was lying there all beaten up but still conscious. In a very weak voice, he started to say, Sorry I underestimated you, and I made a lot of mistakes, that's why I lost. After hearing these words, Kim fell to the pavement next to his defeated opponent. The system highlighted the text, You have completed the main quest. All the hooligans started shouting that it can't be that the invincible Hanju lost to such a loser. Chang started yelling, get up and keep fighting. Beck Charon looked at the two guys lying on the pavement and started to say the fight is over, and now it's clear Kim won. Yakuza fixed his glasses and thought I can't believe that my friend is capable of such a thing and why he had to endure humiliation for so many years. Kim gathered his strength and crawled a meter away and rolled over on his back. He opened the quest window and began to read, you have received a platinum card. The system highlighted the text you want to check. Kim loudly started yelling, give me my reward. The next day at school, two guys were sitting at their desks having a fun conversation. One of the guys started to say that there was a fight in the back of the school yesterday, and he had never seen anyone fight so well. He looked at the empty desk and continued to say that Gu Hanju didn't come to school today either. The other guy started to answer his friend, but could you come after that? He was beaten up in front of everyone. His friends started to say, I wish that bully wouldn't show up at our school at all, and without Gu Hanju, it's easier to breathe. And that fight was unbelievable. Who knew anyone could beat him? The other guy smiled and started to answer, and it wasn't just anyone Hanju beat loser Kim Soo Hyun. The classmate walked to the door and looked out into the hallway. Then he turned his head and started to say, Shut your mouths, he's coming. Kim walked confidently down the hallway. The whole class looked at the guy like he was sick and started asking who was coming. A classmate started to answer, Kim Soo Hyun is now the king of our school. Everyone started to walk out of the classroom to the hallway to see their new leader. One of the guys started to ask if it was Kim Soo Hyun who fought with Gu Hanju yesterday. The other guy started to answer, I was in the backyard yesterday and saw everything and I can confidently say that he deserves to be the king of our school. Kim felt everyone looking at him and discussing. He thought, I'm the same guy I was a month ago. Kim wanted to be alone and thought it would be a good idea to hide in the bathroom. He closed the door behind him and sat on the toilet without opening the lid. He held the platinum card in his hand and couldn't believe he could really beat Gu Hanja. He started to remember what he had to endure yesterday and thought platinum card is a hard-earned card. It's the card that comes right after the gold card. 
and he thought how good this card is and I should open it as soon as possible. He pressed the button to open the card and a bright purple-white color flooded the room. Kim thought I'm kind of scared, but also curious about what might happen now. A card appeared in front of him that said you have received a simple peeking card. It allows you to view your opponents. Kim looked at the card unhappily and started to say it doesn't look like an attack card. I thought I was getting something better than a jab. I worked so hard to get it, and most importantly, should I be happy? Kim stared angrily and thought, why did I spend so much time and nerves to get this useless card? And what the hell is it anyway? Someone walked into a nearby restroom stall and started asking what you were mumbling about. Kim recognized the voice and started to answer nothing important. Just me talking to myself sometimes. Yakuza started to say, how long can you sit there? You know we have to hurry up and tell me you are already mentally prepared. Kim came out of the bathroom, washed his hands, and started to answer, I'm mentally prepared so we can go. Yakuza was the first one out of the bathroom. He turned to his friend and started to say, Suhyun, there are already a lot of high schoolers here. He continued to say, it's stressing me out how they're looking at us. Kim started to answer, I'm sorry. You know I don't like to draw attention. One of the guys started asking which one was Kim Soo Hyun. The other one started to answer the one in the back. He beat Gu Hanja yesterday. Kim thought I'm getting stressed by their stares, too. Only I wonder how far the rumors have spread. The two girls kept their eyes on Kim and discussed him. One girl approached her friend and started to say he looked kind, but he had a sly look in his eyes. The friend made a disgruntled look on her face and started to reply, I see an image on his face, and I guess he's pretending to be sly, and then he'll suddenly attack. And they say that Gu Hanju is still in the hospital, so he doesn't come to school. Kim walked by without even turning his head and thought he was fine. He's healthy and strong, and most of all, Hanju is just skipping school. The girl continued to say, rumor has it, that he even hit Hanju's father, and after that he even dared to threaten his family. Her girlfriend looked at Kim suspiciously and started to say, I heard that the test showed that he was crazy. I think he's really crazy. Two guys were scrutinizing Yakuza and gossiping about him. One guy looked at his friend and started to say I was told he was the son of a Yakuza boss. That's why they say Yakuza and he's 48 years old. The other guy started to answer. It's hard to say how old he is, but he's Kim Soo Hyun's right-hand man. They say they've been friends for a long time, but they fought for three days to determine who was stronger. After hearing that, Kim got nervous and thought it might be better to leave his friend out of it. I need to tell everyone as soon as possible that this is all a misunderstanding. Kim looked at the floor and wanted to walk down the hall as fast as possible. He was so preoccupied that he didn't even realize he was bumping his forehead against the chest of a guy he didn't know. The guy who was two heads taller and covered in tattoos apologized. He started talking. Me and my friends are looking for the guy who beat Gu Hanja. We were told he's short and never smiles, so where can we find him? Kim looked at the unfamiliar guys with a scared look and started to answer that it's me, Kim Soo Hyun, and tell me what I did wrong. The unfamiliar guy started to say, Son Banim, sorry we disturbed you from earlier, but our rules force us to introduce ourselves as soon as possible. He started shouting, I'm first year Hyun Dong greeting you. The three unfamiliar guys bowed low. Kim started to speak. It was too sudden and why would a first-year guy greet me? The guy without raising his head started to say, you are the new king of Gangbuck High School. Me and my fellow freshmen are now attending this school, and isn't it natural for the younger ones to greet the older ones? Kim took a step back and started to say, who is the king here I can't understand, and what other greetings are there? Hyun Dong continued to say, maybe you mean we should kneel. Kim started to say, don't you dare kneel down. Everyone is looking at us. And this is some kind of misunderstanding. I'm not going to divide the school into castes. You can throw your rules in the trash and go on with your lives. I just want to go to school in peace. Hyung Dong made a face like he was going to cry and started to say that means you're leaving us. Kim started to say, stop worshipping me and realize I'm not abandoning you because I've never owned you. Hyun Dong and his friends started to say, we understand you don't want to waste your time on people like us. After apologizing again, they turned around and started to leave. Kim looked at them and started yelling at them to go away. I don't want anything to do with you.
Kim started asking Yakuza, have you seen this guy? His eyes are looking in different directions, and I think he's some kind of mental patient. Yakuza starts to answer, I know this guy, he's a freshman leader. He used to follow the former king of the school all the time, and it pissed Hanja off a lot. Hyeon Dong had a reason to chase after Gu Hanju. All the standing students in the hallway became animated and started gossiping. The Yakuza fixed his glasses and continued to talk. Hyung Dong decided to greet you to grease himself. They say he's a relative of Lee Hyun Do who goes to Jevon High School. Kim started talking. I wonder why he's doing this. Yakuza came closer and quietly started talking. He wants to unite Gangbuk. There are other high schools, but now the Gangbuk district is more like a battlefield. The four strongest high schools are fighting to expand their area of influence. The most powerful school in northern Gangbuk has at least 70% of the territory. South Gangbuk has at least 15%. East Gangbuk has about 10%. And our West Gangbuk school has 5%, maybe a little more. Gu Hanjun wasn't interested in unification, but Haiyan Dong had a different opinion and wants you to help unify Gangbuk, Kim thought. But they look like common hooligans, and I shouldn't mess with crazy people and what kind of nonsense he's talking about unifying Gangbuk. At that time, Hyung Dong couldn't find a place to be. He stopped at the end of the hallway, put his hand on his head and started crying. His friends also didn't know what to do. Kim thought, but why would they put up a tough fight? And anyway, I'm not interested. I have to be careful not to be weighed down. Since Hanju disappeared, school life has become easier. Our hero wanted to be as far away from bullies as possible and go to school quietly. Kim opened the quest window and saw that the system had sent a new main quest. He started reading the West Gangbuck School Management. The first quest was to make the first year students of West Gangbuck allies. The second and third quest was closed. He also failed to find out what the reward for it was. He clicked the button to abandon the quest. The system highlighted the text. If you give up the main quest, you will not receive any more quests, and the rewards you have received so far will be canceled. Kim looked at it unhappily and thought it says here, if I refuse or fail the quest, I will forfeit all the rewards. I'm not afraid of losing my rewards, but if someone finds out, I'm weak again. He imagined he'd be back to his old level, and now Hyung Dong and his friends would wipe their feet on him. Kim started shouting, Hey, freshman, why do I still see you here? All three of them immediately turned around, and Hyung Dong started to say, Sorry, sir, but I don't know what to do now. Kim smiled and started to say, Don't worry, it's okay, I was just checking on you. Hyung Dong started to say, We are ready to follow your instructions. Kim came closer and made a serious face and continued to say, from now on, I'm taking over West Gunbuck. The three boys started jumping and waving their hands. Hyun Dong started to say, Kim Soo Hyun is the king of the school who will help us unite Gangbuck. Kim started to say, I'm glad you're so happy, but now I'll ask you to leave me alone. He went to his classroom and thought, but I didn't say I was going to unite Gangbuck. Kim sat at his desk and was trembling. He thought, now I'm the head of the West Gangbuck. That's why his whole body is trembling. He hoped that he wouldn't have any problems in the future and wouldn't have to fight anymore. After a few minutes, Kim realized that it was not worth it and that he would have to do it in future quests. He remembered that he had never used his new peeking card. Kim opened the card again and read the text that it was a simple card that allowed him to view his opponents. He thought he'd try it when he had the chance. After class, all the classmates packed their things as quickly as possible and left the classroom. Kim sat with his hand on his head and thought, I've been suffering all day today because of those first-year students. And I wanted to try a new map, but I spent the whole time in a trance recovering from the shock. Beck Charon walked into the classroom and headed over to Kim. She sat on the neighboring desk and was dressed in a school uniform and a short skirt, so she threw one leg over the other. The girl looked at Kim and started to say, what the hell are you doing? And there are rumors all over the school that you decided to take over the West Gunbuck. Sometimes I think you're funny and they say you're going to unite Gunbuck. Kim raised his head and reluctantly replied that it's not true. They're all gossips. Maybe you also believe that I'm crazy and beat up a whole Hanju family. He began to scrutinize the girl's slender body. Beck Charon started to reply that she doesn't believe the gossip and that's why she came to ask. She looked at Kim and couldn't understand what was going on. The girl started to say, we've been studying together for so many years and I don't know you at all and I hope you won't lie to me. She started to ask what was going on with you and why you were looking at me so strangely. Kim looked her silently in the eyes. 
and didn't seem like he was going to say anything else. After a long pause, he did say one word peeking. The girl felt very uncomfortable and started to say, are you crazy? The system highlighted the text used peeping. Kim moved his gaze lower and looked at her long legs. For the first time ever, the color of the sensor changed to pink. The system highlighted the text used to peek at Beck Sharon. The girl opened her eyes wide with anger and started shouting what you just said, but I didn't hear you. A translucent blue-colored sensor highlighted Beck Sharan's data. Strength level E, speed level D. Potential level C, endurance level D, intelligence level B. Kim realized that this was peaking. He thought that by peaking I could see the skills of others. That's not what I expected, but it's still awesome. The girl clenched her fist and started to say your look is not pleasing to me and I ask you again what you are doing. Kim used to think that Beck Charon was good at fighting, but her level was weak and her stats were lower than he thought. He realized he could use that on himself as well, and he said loudly, peaking. The translucent sensor highlighted Kim Soo-hyun's data. Strength level E, speed level E, potency level B, endurance level D, intelligence level B. The girl began to speak. My patience ran out and slapped Kim's face hard with the palm of her hand. The blow stunned the hero, and he thought to her I might lose. After that, Beck Sharan got off the desk and turned around and started to walk away. She started to say, it's your own fault the conversation didn't work out. Kim put his hand over his face and thought, I think I know what potential is. Maybe potential to fight. He looked at the map again and thought I didn't expect much from a map with that name. Kim continued to hold his face and thought it hurt like hell and whether it was true that Beck Charen's strength level was E. But how can I check it? And anyway, the map with the peak is much more useful than I thought. A few minutes later, Kim got up and left the classroom, but Hyun Dong and his friends were waiting for him. Yakuza also came over and said, Come on, I'll walk you out or you'll be in trouble with the students. Hyung Dong said he would go in front and ordered his subordinates to go to the sides. The bald guy started shouting, why don't you see that the king of Gangbuk High School is coming? The second subordinate started shouting, better disperse, and anyone who comes near will die. The two guys got scared and stepped aside. One started to say, let's get out of here as fast as we can, and you heard if you get close, they'll gut you. The other started to answer, I'm scared, and I heard even the teacher got hurt. Kim thought I look weird now, but when did I gut anyone? Hyung Dong smiled and started talking about how the juniors are very happy and now they have a future. Everything is happening as expected from our leader. Kim started to answer, Where do you see the juniors happy? They are afraid of me and see me as the bandit. He got as close as he could and started whispering in Hyung Dong's ear, Why you are doing this, and if you have something to say, then say it. Hyung Dong started to reply, I'm not too bright, but I think I know what I'm doing. He made an understanding look and put his hand in the inside pocket of his jacket. Then he pulled out an envelope. He bowed with his subordinates and started to say, take this month's payoff. Kim started to say, why are you giving me the money? And why is there blood on the envelope? Hyun Dong started to say, sorry, it was the freshman who stained it. We realized the mistake, and next time the envelope will be clean. Kim started to say, I don't even want to hear about dirty money. He saw Yakuza take the money and hide it in his pocket. Kim turned to him. Why did you take the envelope and give it back, please? Yakuza started to reply, but I think we should take the money. Hyun Dong started to say, Sir, you don't have enough. You seem to have different rates. Well, that's not a problem. Then we'll increase the rates. Kim thought these guys are scaring me again. I can't understand what's wrong with them or what they're doing. He started to say, Don't increase the rates. Just get out of here. That's my order. Kim decided to check out his new subordinate and turned on the Snoop card. He started reading Hang Dong's Stat Strength C Speed C, Potential F Stamina B Intelligence C. Kim thought, yeah, he's a real thug. Hyun Dong looked out the window and scratched the back of his head. He started to say, but why are you chasing us away and now I'm suddenly embarrassed? Kim thought I shouldn't mess with him. How tiring is all this, and when will this horror end? After that, he turned around and started to walk away. Hyun Dong started to ask him to stay. He followed Kim around and started talking about how they had to hold an inauguration. Kim saw that the system had highlighted the new main quest. 
He thought, why should I get involved in this and what is an inauguration? The system highlighted the following text, and Kim began to read the management of the West Gunbuck School. First assignment to make the first-year students of West Gunbuck allies is complete. Second task to hold the inauguration. Third task and reward unknown. A tear slowly rolled down Kim's cheek and fell to the floor. He started to say, right, we need to hold the inauguration. I am the leader of the school after all. And why are we still standing here? Let's go. Time is of the essence. Tears were rolling down his cheeks at that time. Han Dong started to say, thank you very much, and I believe you will protect us. The bald guy started shouting, here comes the king of Gangbuk High School. Everyone get out of the way or we'll release our guts. On the way, Hyung Dong said that they were already waiting for them in a separate room. After they entered the classroom, they saw that everyone was standing in formation, like in the army. Hyung Dong began to speak loudly and introduced our new leader. His name is Kim Soo-hyun, and only thanks to him will we be able to realize our dream. The members of the group welcomed the new king. Hyeon Dong continued to speak, and for many years we have wanted to unite Gangbuk, and only now it has become possible. All the members walked to the long table and bowed low. Yakuza looked at Kim and started to say, relax, and don't take it so seriously. The system highlighted the text, and Kim began to read the first task to make the firstlings of Western Gonbuk allies complete. The second task to hold the inauguration is complete. He stood up and began to speak. Now we are done with the inauguration. Hyun Dong took the pointer and went to the board where the map was glued. He started to say, but sir, we need a briefing. Kim said, okay, but let's make it quick and thought this is really crazy. And when did they have time to prepare? Hyung Dong continued talking, as you know, the Gangbuk area is no different from the battlefield now. Kim interrupted him, but how should I know? Hyung Dong began to answer my words, are true, sir. The reason why there is a power struggle in Gangbuk is because Sun Yahan, who once united Gangbuk, has given up his power. And unfortunately, he doesn't listen to me at all. And with the leader gone, a new power struggle has begun. In eastern Gangbuk, people just live for the day. Their leader is a real psycho, and rumor has it he's a traitor. In Southern Gunbuck, the high school students have the aura of diligent students. They say their leader is very kind. But judging by the fact that they're also involved in some kind of business, there's definitely something fishy going on. Hyun Dong clenched his pointer hard and started shouting so that they don't swallow us up and was interrupted by Kim. He started to say, so why don't we just give up and I don't see the point of wasting time and nerves on the neighboring areas? If they invade us, we'll just call the police. And really, why do we have to unite everybody? Can't we just maintain good relations with them? Yakuza closed his eyes and started asking for water. One of the guys started to say, hurry up and get the elder some water. Hyung Dong scratched his head with his pointer and started to say, I understand your good intentions, but we won't be able to maintain good relations with them. You see, they are already against you. Kim started to ask who exactly is against me. Hyeon Dong went on to say, You see, you've been spotted. Remember when you put on your jogging shirt and beat up all the hooligans on the street? After that incident, you were nicknamed Runner Kim Soo Yoon. Kim slapped his palms on the table and stood up and kicked the chair away. He started to ask why such rumors are spreading and if they know who is doing it. Young Dong smiled cheekily and admitted that he was the one who told everyone about it. Kim started yelling, you must really be crazy. He looked at the others and shouted, you all must be crazy and from now on I won't fight anymore. Yakuza also stood up and headed for the exit, he started to say. Because of you, there are strange rumors, and I think we have nothing more to do here. Kim pointed his finger at the bald guy and continued to say that I forbid you to follow me everywhere. Hyun Dong started to ask the senior not to leave because I haven't finished yet. And if you don't have time today, then what about the meeting? Kim grabbed the doorknob and started to say what meeting I'm not even coming, and I'm not going to listen to anything. He walked out of the classroom saying, I just want to study in peace. After they left the school, Kim said goodbye to his friend and went home. When he got home, Kim took the remote control and thought today was a hard day, and he needed to relax and turned on his favorite Korean rapper show. After that, he made himself comfortable on the couch. The rapper show announced that the next one would be singing Star in the Night Sky. Kim took the pillow and hugged it and thought, this is what's right for me. And why do I have to run the school? 
Does it make sense to fight for her? He heard her voice. Kim Soo-hyun, you're already home. Diane took off her sneakers and immediately started yelling. You know everyone calls you crazy. And what a circus you're doing at school. You know what they call me now? She came into the room and continued to say, Now they call me runner sister Kim Soo-hyun, or Ice Kim Diane, and tell me why I have to listen to this from my elders. Kim started to say, Don't worry, I have already decided everything today. Then he waved his hand to let her know that she was interrupting his favorite show. Diane turned off the TV and started asking what exactly you decided. Kim started to answer that there was a meeting about Gunbuck today and I'm not doing anything wrong, so don't worry. The sister immediately turned the TV back on and continued to say, Okay, forget it. It's better this way than to endure bullying. Anyway, I don't know what kind of meetings you might have, but if you overdo it, I'll tell my mother. Kim started to say, Look at the rapper star in the night sky. He's going to win them all. Diane started saying, I'm not interested, and I'd rather go to my room. Our hero was overflowing with joy inside, thinking I'm free now and everything will be back to normal. A few hours later, the action takes place in a nearby neighborhood. A guy shows up for a business meeting with his leader. He starts to say, sir, you already know about West Gunbuck. The leader started to reply that I should know. The guy started to say there are serious changes there, and I thought this would be useful information for you. The leader was holding a wad of money and counting it. He started to say, then don't waste my time, and it will be better for you if I count it correctly. The guy started trembling with fear. He said that Gu Hanju had been overthrown and now the new leader of the West. Unfortunately, he didn't have time to say anything. A strong kick to the face closed his mouth. The boy flew aside but still managed to stay on his feet. The leader didn't think twice and kicked the guy in the stomach. The guy, taking a few steps backward, hit his back against the wall and went down. After a few minutes, he came to his senses and continued talking. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. And this guy's name is runner Kim Soo-hyun. The leader came closer and started to say, that's not why I hit you. The guy started coughing up blood from his mouth. He started to ask why you hit me then. The leader took the guy by the face with one hand and started swinging with the other hand. He started to say the first reason is why I need to know this useless information. And the second reason is that I always seem to be short of money for some reason. The guy took a red bowling ball and waited for the frame to open to start the game. He turned his head back and started to speak. Sir, have you heard the news? The leader briefly asked what it was. The guy walked over to the balls and replaced the red ball with a blue ball. He thought this color will surely bring me luck. The guy went on to say that Gu Hanju of the Western Ganbuk had been sworn off. The leader briefly replied, yes, I heard. The guy swung and threw a ball that rolled down the center of the path. He started saying that this guy's name is runner Kim Soo Hyun. And everyone around him is saying that he's incredibly violent and what are you going to do about it? The leader started to say, what do you think? The guy didn't even care if the blue ball brought him luck. He started to say, well, I've got a lot of options. I just don't know which one would be best. The leader started to say, first, we need to see him. The guy came closer, smiled, and started talking about the gunbuck meeting coming up. On the road, someone chalked Kim Soo Hyun and Hyung Dong should make a decision as soon as possible. Hyun Dong went to the chalk on the road and lit a cigarette and started talking about the meeting coming up. But I can't get along with this guy. If we lose time, we lose everything. Kim sat in his room wondering what kind of message the system sent me again. Hyun Dong jumped at the sudden ringing of the phone. Kim was sitting on a chair bent over the desk. He started to say, hello, it's me. Young Dong started to answer the phone, sir, and what is your business? He covered the speaker with his hand so some passerby wouldn't overhear their conversation and continued to say, you told me not to disturb you. Kim went on to say, I said a lot of things, but please ignore them. Hyun Dong started to say, what happened, sir? And why are you crying? It's enough for me if you tell me what to do and I'll do my best. Kim opened the quest window and started reading the messages from the system. Western Gunbuck School Management. The first quest to make the first-year students of West Gunbuck allies is complete. The second quest to hold the inauguration is complete. You have a third quest open to attend the Ganbuck meeting. Kim clicked the Open Rewards button and continued reading for completing the last stage. You will receive one gold card as well as ten bronze cards. Our hero cried with happiness. He put the phone to his ear and started to say, You didn't tell me when the meeting was. Hyun Dong started to say, 
But sir, at school you said you weren't going to show up for the meeting. Kim put his head on the table and continued to say, but the reward is 11 cards, and how can you not go? The voice from the phone started to answer what other cards. As expected from a senior, you are still gambling. Kim didn't hesitate long and replied, just know that I'll go. Hyun Dong smiled happily and started to say, I understand you, and then we need to get ready as soon as possible. Kim took the phone away from his ear and started yelling at him. What do you mean, get ready? You just know that whatever you're doing, we don't have to do it, and we'll just attend the meeting. And I still haven't forgiven you for your old prank. You're going to do something weird again. Hyun Dong clenched his teeth and an evil smile appeared on his face. The next day of school, Kim used Peeping Tom. The classmate he was looking at started to get nervous and asked his friend if he was okay. When Kim turned his gaze to the guy, he immediately pulled out his phone and dialed his mom's number. After that, he started asking if she was okay. Kim smiled and thought, finally, I'm having fun, and I didn't even know that peeking at other people's skills was so fun. After the conversation, the guy hid his phone in his pocket, looked at his classmate, and started to say, I'm filled with a strange feeling of anxiety. The girl made a disgruntled look on her face and started to reply as if someone was peeking at me. A couple minutes ago, I was in a good mood, and now even you are annoying me. Kim continued to watch the girl accuse the guy of looking at her wrong and thought, but why do they react like that? And does peeping make other people feel ashamed? Should I continue to use this skill? But what's more interesting is that peeking has a level, and that means that the skill like jab can be improved. He opened the card and started reading. Peeking gives you the ability to view your opponents. Current level F, 17 out of 100. Kim was a little disappointed when he realized that peeking at two people only gave him one unit of experience, but he was still curious if anything would change when the rank went up to level E. After class at recess, Beck Sharon's girlfriend came up to her and they were having a fun conversation. Kim turned on the sneak peek and thought why they always wear such shirt closures. Maybe I'll be able to level up and see more than I do now someday. The system whispered the text to the V's using the sneak peek. Kim thought, so what if it doesn't work the way I want it to? The Yakuza, who was sitting at the next desk as usual, started sneezing. Then he started to say that one of the girls had used a new perfume, and now his nose was hurting. Kim looked at his friend in surprise and started to say that I'm not able to keep track of who uses what perfume. He thought it's strange why I haven't checked my friend yet, and without thinking, Kim turned on the peeping system. The system highlighted the text full name, Yang Guk Cha Strength Level C, Speed Level F Potency Level at Maximum S Endurance Level C, Intelligence Level D. He started to say, but why do you have your potential level at Max S? Yakuza turned his head and started to ask what other potential. Kim looked away and started to reply, forget what I said. After class, the friends decided to leave the school as quickly as possible. They didn't want to listen to discussions about themselves again. Walking outside, Kim started to ask his friend, do you also feel like it's the first and last day calmly lived? Yakuza calmly began to answer, today is the day of the Ganbok meeting. And if you're interested, I'll tell you the truth, I'm very scared. But I think I've already learned to live in fear. Kim started to say, I think I can protect you now. And if it wasn't for the 11 cards, we wouldn't have to be nervous. Yakuza started to ask what other cards, or are you talking to yourself again? Kim opened the cross window again and started to read the Western Gunbuck School Management. The first task of making the first-year students of West Gunbuck Allies is complete. Second assignment to hold the inauguration is completed. Attend the meeting reward one gold card and ten bronze cards. He thought about the fact that he had a third task left to accomplish, and just being present was enough for the quest to be completed. He realized that at some point he had become addicted to the reward, so he had to do the quests. He turned his head and thanked his friend for agreeing to go together. After that, he began to ask if you had some sort of plan. The Yakuza started to answer that first we need to be present, and as soon as we get a chance, we'll run away. Kim thought about the representatives of the North, South, and East Ganbuck. They must be scary people, and we better not provoke them. He started to say, please don't have any accidents. Yakuza lowered his glasses and looked at the guys who were waiting for them and started to say, hopefully nothing bad will happen, but it will be difficult. Kim started to say, what exactly will be difficult, and why do you say that? 
Kim walked closer to the guys who were standing in two rows like in the army. Young Dong and his subordinates bowed low and started to say, we are very glad you came, sir. Kim started to say, well, it doesn't make me angry anymore. Now tell me what you're up to again. Hyun Dong started to answer, you see, Gangbuk Summit is a meeting place for the best representatives of every high school in Gangbuk District. And we've prepared the guys in case something bad happens. They're all here because they're loyal to you, sir. In front of you are the freshman fighters who volunteered themselves. He pointed his finger at one of the fighters and went on to say, for example, this guy's grandfather is in critical condition, but he came. The guy started to answer, I think grandpa would be happy because he fought for his country too. Yakuza took a step forward and started to say, let's strengthen our faith in our hearts and go to hell for dinner. Hyun Dong started to say, all the guys here are ready to die for you elders. Kim looked at his friend and started to say, don't follow their lead and people will misunderstand us again. And I told you not to do that. Two girls were walking by and one of them started to say, these bandits are going to gang fight again. The other started to reply, look at those animals. They're probably going to make a mockery out of people. After hearing the conversation, Kim took a step forward and started shouting, I made a decision to all take our feet in our hands and go home. Only the three of us will go to the meeting. Hyun Dong started to say, Are you saying that we can handle all of them ourselves? Kim started to say that when I said that, I just think it's best. And you have to realize that standing here, we're attracting attention. Now everybody go home, or you can go visit your grandfather. All the guys made unhappy faces, and one of them started to say, Sorry, sir, we'll try not to bother you anymore. Kim looked first at Yakuza and then at Hyun Dong and started to say, Now we have to hurry to the Gunbuck Summit or you want to be late for the first meeting. And then everyone will think we're losers who don't know how to manage time properly. At that time, the action is taking place in Eastern Gangbuck. An unfamiliar guy was running down the hall with all his might. A guy came out and started beating him up. He started to say, you made the wrong decision, and you can't run away from me that easily. Can you please repeat what you said before? Or are you so forgetful that you can't even remember what happened half an hour ago? After another punch to the face, the strange guy sat up against the wall and apologized. The leader of the Eastern Gunbuck lit a cigarette and sat down next to the guy. He went on to say, you know, I don't have a hard time remembering you. You said high school kids are scary these days. He hit the guy in the face with his fist and continued saying, you know what, I can easily end your miserable existence. All you have to do is ask and I'll end your misery. The guy started to wipe the blood from his face and said, but I have a family and I promise to help them. The leader didn't think long and hit him with his fist and continued to say, maybe I should save your family from a loser like you. He put out a cigarette and started to say you called yourself a bandit but that's how bandits act. He started waving his hand and said, I'm sick of telling everyone if we drank alcohol together, you have to pay. The guy started to beg, please stop, sir, I promise I'll find the money. The leader looked away and continued to say, who dares to touch me? The unfamiliar guy caught the flying hand. The leader angrily started shouting that your assistant is here. Then he easily released his hand and kicked his opponent in the face. The unfamiliar guy didn't even have time to realize what had happened and his unconscious body fell to the floor. The leader began to say, see what your assistant has done. Now my sneakers are covered in blood, and I think you should wash them for me first. He heard a knock on the door. The guy half opened the door, peeked in and started talking. It's me, Hennem, sorry to interrupt, but the Ganbuck Summit is coming up. The leader started to say, I'm busy right now, but maybe I should save this loser for later. He looked at Hennem and started to ask, do you think I should go there? Kim and his team came to the meeting place. He looked at the construction site and thought to be happy. I don't need to go to any more construction sites. He looked at Hyun Dong and started to say, Where did you bring us? Do you think this is the place where they'll hold the meeting? Hyun Dong started to answer, This construction site had been frozen for a long time, and since some time the place was used for secret meetings. Now they are always held here. Kim tried to figure out which side of the house is the entrance and started to say that if you kill a person here, no one will know. Hyun Dong started to ask if you, sir, are going to kill them all today. Yakuza looked at the unfinished house and thought, now I have to memorize my every move, and if we have to run away, it will be useful information. 
Kim carefully pulled back the curtain that hung at the entrance and stepped inside the room. He thought there would be a bunch of older guys here. Maybe he shouldn't have come here after all. Three guys were standing around talking, and as soon as they heard someone approaching, they turned around and one guy started to say, you're Kim Soo Hyun from West Gangbuck. Kim looked at them and thought maybe they weren't as scary as I thought. He said that's right. The guy smiled and introduced himself. I'm Kang Seok from the South and we're the same age, so let's say you. Kim looked at the guy and started to say, Seok, Seok, no, Kang Seok, I get it, and you have an interesting name like a foreigner. Kang Seok pointed to the couch and continued to say, West Gunbuck can sit over there. Kim thanked him and went to the couch. And when they sat down on the couch, they felt very uncomfortable. Yakuza thought maybe I shouldn't be so scared because my face is much scarier, and maybe they're looking at me now and are afraid. Hyeon Dong sat very tense. He even clenched his fists and without turning his head said, Sir. Kim looked at him and asked if there was something you wanted to tell me. Hyeon Dong started to speak quietly. Don't believe his smile, he doesn't look dangerous, but he is still the head of South Gangbuck. Even though we can't tell what's inside him, there's always a reason why he's the head of the South Gangbuck, and you should be more vigilant. And I think they might be the most dangerous among the high schools. Kim saw that the leader was sitting on the couch with three guys standing behind him. He thought that way it would be easier for them to protect their boss. But the atmosphere felt good. They were just having fun talking. The guy who was bowling a few days ago started asking Sir how Kim Soo Hyun was doing. Kang Seok started to reply, I haven't seen that in a long time. And he started to remember Kim saying, Seok Seok. No, Kang Seok, but I get it. And you have an interesting name like a foreigner. After a short pause, he went on to say it's true that my last name is weird and can sometimes sound funny. But I think my last name is rare, and that guy started insulting me from the doorstep. You know, I didn't think he was capable of such provocation. Kim looked at the head of the South School and thought about what Seok was talking about and how such a person could be dangerous. Hyun Dong started to say, He's looking at you, sir. Just don't lose to his stare. Kim started to reply, sit tight. I'm nervous enough as it is. He once again opened the quest window, read the information, and thought, but why is the quest still not marked as completed? It's hard to believe that I'll get one gold card and ten bronze cards. I wonder what skills we'll get in this time. Hyundong started to say, sir, you've already relaxed a bit. Kim turned away from him and replied briefly, no. He wondered if the representatives of other schools should not show up. And when will they come from the East and North schools? The head of the Eastern school, whose name was Han Jia Ha, abruptly pulled back the curtain hanging at the entrance. He entered the room and began to say, Can you get this rag out of my way? He immediately looked at West Gunbuck's seat and began to say, I see we have guests, and it's good that the newcomer is only one of them because they're all sitting on the same couch like servants. Kang Seok got up and started to say it's a shame to hear such things from friends. Kim lowered his head and looked at the floor. He thought one look was enough to realize how dangerous that guy was and that he was living life to the fullest. Hai Yan Dong started to speak quietly. The guy who just came in is called Han. He is the head of the East School. Kim starts to answer. He looks like he's going to hit something off a girl. After that, he opened the quest window and saw that the system sent a message saying quest completed. He happily raised his head and looked up at the ceiling. The bright colors were shimmering like a rainbow. He continued reading the text you have been rewarded with one gold card and ten bronze cards. Kim thought, well, finally my mission is complete. Now I have to go home as fast as possible and check out the new cards. He stood up and quietly began to whisper. I've had enough for today and now let's go home. Hyung Dong started to speak, but sir, not even everyone is here yet, and aren't you curious to see the others? Kim walked quickly towards the exit and thought, I wonder what skills I'll get this time and if the cards will be useful. Han caught up with Kim and caught him by the neck. He started to say, where are you going? And you're the head of the Western School now. You know, I only came here for you. The Yakuza looked scared and thought, but how can we escape now that that guy caught Kim? Hyun Dong started to say, sir, let me help you. Han went on to say, why don't you say anything, or didn't you know that the new guy has to introduce himself first? But from the way that guy is talking to you, you are Kim Soo-hyun, the new head of Gangbuk West. 
Kong Siok watched in silence. Han Jae continued to keep his hand on Kim's neck. He started to squeeze his fingers harder and said, try to hit me now. He looked Kim in the eyes and continued to say, look at this loser. And don't you think he's swallowing his tongue out of fear? Kim closed his eyes and started laughing. Han started shouting, how dare you laugh? And you know I have a lot of interesting ways to get you to talk to me. Kim took as much air as he could into his lungs and continued to stand with his eyes closed. He thought it's a quest activator. And if I do something now, something very bad will happen. Han continued to say, I can see you're in pain and I wouldn't be surprised if you pissed your pants and you closed your eyes so I wouldn't see your fear. Kim started to remember how he met Gu Hanju outside of school earlier, and when he looked into his eyes, the main quest began. The system immediately highlighted the text to defeat the leader of Gangbuk High School. He realized that the system might highlight the prerequisite to go up against this guy. He thought then I just won't do anything. After that, Kim opened his eyes and looked at his opponent. He realized there was no point in getting into a fight. One of Kang Seok's subordinates started to say, look, sir, something incredible is happening. This Su Hyun didn't just provoke the older man, but he's not afraid of Han Jai Ha at all. Kang Seok started to say the right thing, and apparently everything I was told was true. Watch carefully and try to understand their plan. The subordinate went on to say what's with the indifferent expression on Su Hyun's face. Maybe he's looking for Han Jai Ha's weakness, and the rumors are true. That Kim Soo Hyun runner is even capable of taking the victim's family hostage for a cause. And I think if Kim Soo Hyun and Han Jae Ha collide, it'll be a draw at the very least. Kang Seok smiled and said, let's wait until the two of them get tired and then we'll attack them both. Kim thought that if this continued, his opponent might strangle him. And so much bullying over the past years at school has taught our hero to fight his inner fear. Kim thought, why am I not afraid? He rejoiced that for the first time ever he had managed to cheat the system. After all, the quest still hadn't appeared. Han Jae Ha clenched his teeth and started hissing like a snake. You provoked me with just one look, Kim thought. But if this continues, he'll have to fight him. He took in some air and began to speak. Whatever you're up to, you won't succeed. Khan's subordinate gathered his courage and came closer. He started to say, sir, you must stop. And you are the chief of the Eastern Ganbuk, and you must realize that fighting now. A palm strike to the face silenced the subordinate. Han's fingers clamped down hard on his subordinate's face. He angrily began to say, Since when did you decide to tell me what to do? Or have you already forgotten our last conversation? And I don't think you know what you're doing. The subordinate through his fingers began to mumble something indistinctly. He was saying, sir, you do realize that the head of the South School is here, and if you fight with Kim Soo Hyun, there's no telling what Kang Seok will do, but he won't miss the chance to take advantage of this opportunity, and try to calm down as soon as possible because you can meet Kim Soo Hyun later. Han Jae Ha let go of his subordinate, and when he turned his head, he thought that there was no one more dangerous than Kang Seok. Kang Seok looked back at him sweetly. He thought you should start a fight, and I'll see what you can do. Then he smiled and waved his hand. Han turned his gaze to Kim and started to say, you know what's coming. Kim made a serious face and looked him in the eye and started to say, time will tell. Han went on to say, you know, you're lucky today and I'll let you live a little longer. After that, he turned around and headed for the exit. At last, he started to say, I'm just tired of beating words out of people with my fists and I have nothing to talk about with you. Kang Seok looked at Han as he walked away and didn't clap his hands. He folded his hands like he was praying and started to say that's enough for today, and if we continue, we'll get into a fight. It's a pity we didn't have a normal conversation, but we saw each other, and now we'll at least say hello. Kang Seok looked to the north and there was an empty couch. He thought they might be late, but no, it's been a while. He went on to say that it seemed we had a new problem. No one had come from Gangbuck North. Kim was very happy that the conversation could end without a fight and started to say, Seok, Seok, we'll do it. Kang Seok thought this guy was provoking me again. Kim thought it was good that the time passed quickly because it could have been worse. And now that we're leaving, I have something else to do, so I turned on the peeping system. The system has highlighted the text you're using peeking. Kang Seok came up to Han and started talking about how it's been a while since we've eaten together and maybe we should go to a restaurant. Han started to say, what did you say, and what kind of restaurant could it be? I said, we have nothing to talk about. 
Kang Seok continued to say that time is passing, but you haven't changed at all, and it hurts me to hear you say that because I think we are friends. Han continued to say you better shut your mouth if you don't want to get hit by me. Kim stood silently looking at the guys. He thought that maybe the quest window had malfunctioned or there was no network. But why can't I see anything? After a few seconds, the system glowed red and highlighted the text of the rank of peaking is not enough. Kim turned off the cross window and thought, well, now I'm really not going to be here. He looked at his team and then at the exit and started to say we have to go. On the way home, Kim felt so tired that he could hardly move his legs. The next morning, he managed to get up only with the third ring of the alarm clock. He quickly got ready and went to school. And on the way, he thought that this meeting had made me so tired that I got excited and went to sleep as soon as I got home. But even after such a long sleep, I feel somehow unwhiskered. He opened a simple peak card that allows you to view your opponents and thought it was a pity I didn't get to know more about them. He touched his face and thought before it said that I had a low rank and that I couldn't watch everyone. He wondered what that depended on. He thought maybe it depends on strength. Then it means that Siok and Han are much stronger than me. And walking into the school grounds, Kim stopped abruptly and wondered what was going on. He started to say, you guys are making a circus out of this place again. The first year guys were built up and their hands were held at the seams. One of them started to say, sir, why are you doing this to us? He started crying and went on to say, you have told us this many times. The other guy confidently said, we respect you, sir, and now you are our hero. And because we heard the story of your heroic deed at the meeting, we decided to gather here and thank you. Kim looked at the guys in surprise and started talking. Now I don't understand what kind of deed we're talking about. I heard that you won the battle of the strongest and that Han Jai Ha, the head of the Eastern Ganbuk, was defeated. We were also told that the fight was over before Kang Seok intervened. It's a good thing that this good news has already spread throughout the school. Kim started shouting out what kind of mess is going on here and who's spreading such rumors. After working hard, Haiyan Dong sat on the ground near the school. He didn't think it was easy to get up so early and go to school to spread this rumor. But still, I hope it will bear fruit. The boy continued talking. Thanks to our leader, Hyung Dong, we found out the truth, and you are incredible. We love you very much. Kim raised his head and looked up at the clear sky. He thought, God, why am I being punished for this? His mood worsened, and his head began to ache, but Kim still headed towards the school. The crowd of boys who had gathered were cheering and following him. One of the guys started to say, Runner Kim Soo Yun is now the hope of the Western gunbuck. The second started to say, Is it true that you got some skill for killing a master? The third guy shouted happily, Show us proof of your strength, sir. After a while, Kim was lying on the bed, shivering. He thought, I haven't felt this bad in a long time and my whole body is aching. He was in the infirmary in a very bad condition and thought that all the tension I had felt since yesterday was reflected by the pain in my body. The pale complexion and black eyes didn't bode well. He thought I had a fever, but why don't they let me go home? Maybe it's because I've been skipping classes a lot lately and now I can't even go for health reasons. It's better to lie here and rest than to listen to gossip again. And if I'm already here, when will I ever get the chance? He looked around and thought it was good that no one was here. Then he opened the quest window and thought it was time to look at the maps. He opened the window with the maps from the last quest. In front of his eyes, he saw a gold card in the middle surrounded by ten bronze cards on each side. Kim smiled happily and started with the gold card. The system highlighted the application text of the gold card. He thought I tried hard and deserved to get you. The gold card opened and Kim began to read. You have received a simple card called a card master, and thanks to it cards can be combined and disassembled to get higher or lower order cards. Kim looked at the card with suspicion and thought it was combining or disassembling cards. And if that's what I think it is, like in the games. I think this card could be useful, but I'll deal with it later. He started talking, and now I'm going to ask you to show me all my hard-earned bronze cards. The system highlighted the text using ten bronze cards. Wasting no time, he started reading, You have received ten easy cards. One card is low voice, and now you will be able to play low notes. The card can look gloomy. The too low rank card is called What's the Smell? It boosts charm for a while, and it can only be used once a day. Three low rank card is called Where the Switch Is. 
It allows you to see in the dark for a while and can only be used once a day. Four low rank card is called provocation. It can anger your opponent for a short time. Five low rank card is called support. It slightly increases the stamina of one ally for a short time. Six low rank card is called a this. It increases sensitivity for a short time. Seven low rank card is called what was it. It improves memory for a short time. Eight low rank card is called elixir of strength. It improves strength by 0.5 ranks, but intelligence drops by 3 ranks. It disappears after use. 9 low rank card is called bond. It allows you to share your power with a member of the group for a while. 10 card is called too much work. When you wake up, everything is already completed. To get his bearings, Kim sat on the bed and started talking. The only useful card here is the elixir of power, but it has a condition that it lowers intelligence by 3 ranks. He wondered if there was any point in using this card, so he kept it just in case it would come in handy. The rest of the cards seemed like garbage to Kim, and he thought he should do something with them. He selected the Link Bronze Cards function. The system highlighted the text used by the card master, and now connect the card low voice and the card what is the smell. The colors of blue, purple, and pink began to intertwine. Kim thought, I wonder what's going to happen now. A few seconds later, a new map appeared in front of him. The system brightened the text to combine two bronze cards to create one silver card. Kim looked at the card and began to read as a result of the combination you have received a box street attack card. This is the boxing strike streetwise skill. Current rank F0 out of 100. Kim looked at the silver card and thought this punch must be much stronger than a jab. He got out of bed and immediately tested his new punch. The system highlighted the text you used a straight. After that, he sat back down on the bed and opened the gold card. He thought to understand how to connect the cards, I should read the contents again. Kim started to read that the cards can be combined and taken apart to get higher or lower order cards. He started talking because my mom said not to touch gambling. And by continuing this game, I don't even know what I'm getting into. He looked at the rest of the bronze cards and thought, what am I going to do with these? And quests don't seem like a gamble at all. After all, when I used to see casinos on TV, it was all about money, but here it's real life. The hero looked at the remaining eight cards, but did not see the point of reading their data on another circle. He thought, even this is gambling, I can't do anything about it. And now let's try to combine these four cards at once. The system highlighted the text used card master, and now combine the cards one provocation, two support, three connection, and four too much work. The bright colors flashed before Kim's eyes again. He hoped he had made the right decision. The system brightened up the text and combined the four bronze cards to produce two silver cards. Kim happily looked at the cards and began to read the first card action basketball three-pointer. It increases the probability of success of a three-point shot. The current rank is F0 out of 100. The second action card is a soccer penalty shot. It increases the success probability of a penalty shot. Current rank F0 out of 100. Our hero frowned his eyebrows and thought, I'm going to the Olympics. Why do I need these useless cards? What do I do now? Should I continue or should I stop playing? Kim looked at the card master and it said, do you want to continue linking cards? He thought these silver cards don't give me anything at all and it's better to have something. But if I connect them and there is a bad gold card, what then? After that, he got up from the bed and walked a few laps around the room. He was very interested, and he couldn't just end the game without getting anything useful. He thought there's nothing to worry about. He just needs to create a cool gold card. And I hate sports anyway, and I'm not going to use these cards anyway. A few minutes later, the system highlighted the text used Card Master and now connect the two silver cards. One card is a basketball three-pointer, and two card is a soccer penalty kick. A bright light illuminated the room, and Kim started screaming. I did it, and there's no fear at all. The system has brightened the text. When you combine two silver cards, you get one gold card. Kim closed his eyes and turned his head back. He thought, if I have no fear, why am I afraid to see if it worked or not? After a few seconds, he opened one eye and started looking at the gold card. The hero pressed the translucent sensor and the card opened. He began to read, You have received an action card called Master Please, and would you like to know more about the slave's speech? His eyes widened in surprise, and his blood pressure was so high that his nose was bleeding. 
He started to wipe the blood and thought maybe this card has some incredible master's power. Kim didn't hesitate and clicked the learn more button and continued reading the action card he received, which is called Master Please is Able to Make Something Good Happen If You Hit It. It becomes effective after five strikes. He looked at his palm and thought, what if my nose bleeds even more? After a short pause, he started to say no, it wouldn't. And it was probably because of the pressure in my body. He started hitting his face with the palm of his hand and thought that now the most important thing is to learn to make quick decisions. After five strokes, Kim's cheek turned red and he hoped that it was worth it and something good would happen. After a short wait, the protagonist took his hands to his face and realized that nothing had changed because he had hit himself. Kim opened the gold card again and continued talking, but it says master please, and that's why I thought this card makes a person a slave, but I'm becoming a slave myself. The system highlighted the text that said the main quest had been created. Kim wondered what the quest would be this time. He started to say all right now is the time for you to show up and I need more cards to unite. The system highlighted the text and Kim started to read that he needed to recruit a team of four people and the reward for completing the quest was one gold card. He thought he didn't have time to be sick right now and left the infirmary. Then he looked around and started talking and finally it happened and now he has to start recruiting people for his team. And why is the situation unfolding as if it were a real game and is there some kind of final boss to beat? The hero closed his eyes and thought about the fact that this quest is very different from the previous ones, and is it really that hard to get a team together? An idea came to Kim's mind, and he took out his phone and texted his friend Yakuza. Yakuza immediately read the message and wrote, I would love to join your team. A text window appeared in front of Kim's eyes, and he started to read that one of four team members had been added, and it was Yakuza. After that, he closed the window and thought that the main quest is too cool, and he needs to lure four people to his team and get the map as a reward. And when the hero went to the hallway, he saw Haiyan Dong walking towards him. The head of the freshman was very worried and immediately began to ask, Sir, what happened, and I bought you medicine. Yakuza silently walked over and was looking at something on his phone. Kim looked at Haiyan Dong and waved his hand and started to say, Don't worry, I'm fine now and maybe you want to join my team. Hyun Dong stopped abruptly and the first aid kit fell out of his hands in surprise. He looked at Kim with big eyes and started to say that he was very happy and had long dreamed of joining the gangbuck team. Kim watched Hyun Dong worship him and get down on one knee. He thought that if he recruited everyone on the team, things would probably go wrong. Hyun Dong realized he had done something wrong and tried to make amends. He looked down and started talking about how the hero should be greeted appropriately and that he would now call Kim the head of everything. Kim thought about the fact that he had to think it over carefully first, and it would be better not to have Haiyan Dong on the team. Kim looked at his subordinate and told him what he had changed his mind. Kim turned around and took a couple of steps and started to say, let's go Yakuza, because we've already finished talking with Haiyan Dong. Yakuza smiled and started to say, I obey you head of all. Kim smiled back and started to ask Yakuza not to repeat Haiyan Dong's words. A few hours later, Kim was lying on a bench basking in the sun, thinking about who he could recruit for the team. He realized that the team should be made up of only proven people, because after the recruitment, there might be some related quest, and if the team was weak, they would surely lose. The hero thought that before taking someone into the team, it is necessary to make a check and it would be best to look at their skills and choose the strongest people. After that, he opened a simple peak card that allows you to view the opponents. Recently, he managed to raise F level 91 out of 100. Kim looked at the clear sky with not a single cloud on it and thought that he should check everyone first. And he also wanted to check the card he had gotten this time as soon as possible. But approaching footsteps prevented him from doing so and someone's shadow covered the sun. Kim looked up and saw that the girl was standing right next to him. She looked at him in surprise and started to say that Kim Soo-hyun was really lying here. Kim sat down on the bench and started to say, Beck Charan, you look a little different, and maybe it's because you're dressed differently and what are you doing here? The girl looked at Kim and started asking why he was asking such stupid questions and why it didn't occur to him at all that she lived in this neighborhood. Kim started to ask Beck Charan if he had done something wrong to her. 
The girl started to answer that maybe you're saying that I've done something wrong to you. And if you really think so, I'd better go for a walk. Kim looked at her and started to reply, Okay, then. I'll see you tomorrow at school. Kim had a good idea and got up from the bench and started to ask her not to leave and told her that he had a big favor to ask. Beck Charon turned her head and started asking what he wanted. M continued to say, I know this may seem a bit rude, but can you do something for me? He stepped closer and had the girl slap his cheek with the palm of her hand. After that, he opened the action card called Master Please and thought that from a physical point of view, it would be better to ask Beck Charan to do it. Kim started to explain to the girl that he needed to check something and that she should hit him five times with her palm on his face. Beck Sharon blushed and felt embarrassed. She didn't know why she had to do it and started talking about how he was a pervert like everyone else. Kim pointed his finger at his cheek and started talking about how something good would happen if she hit him. He asked her to stop being shy because she had punched him in the face before. The girl started to say, you probably want me to hit you by swearing. Kim started to reply, but I didn't ask you to call me names. Beck Sharon started swinging her hand and shouting anyway after that, I have nothing to say to you. She heard some voices and her hand stopped. Five guys were laughing and slowly approached. The one in the front started to say, you really like getting beaten up. So maybe we can help you with that or it should be done by a beautiful girl. Kim turned his head and in surprise started to ask who they were. The red-headed guy stopped laughing and started to say, how could you guys score like that? The red-haired guy remembered how he ordered his team to find and punish the guy who hid in the dark street. And after a short pause, he looked at Kim and began to explain that he would easily help them remember who they were. After all, they came here to avenge Sung Chul, who was knocked out. Kim remembered that these were the hooligans who wanted to chase him down and beat him up. He thought, why did we meet again, and they weren't mobs, and why the hooligans materialize in the same place? Kim pretended he didn't know them and started saying he didn't knock out any Sung Chul. The red-haired guy pointed his finger at the guy standing next to him and started talking about Sung Chul standing in front of him. Then Sung Chul took a step forward and introduced himself and started to say, Nice to meet you, and I am a communicator according to the Myers personality type. A blue translucent sensor appeared in front of Kim's eyes, and the system highlighted the text, Side quest received. He thought, why should I fight again with those who I have already defeated once, and started to read the quest in which it was written that he should fight with hooligans and defeat them. Defeat the bully leader and five suckers, and as a reward for the completed task, will receive one silver card. The hero thought that he had nothing to worry about and he could easily deal with the bullies. The red-haired guy clenched his teeth and looked at Kim and started to say, do you know who we brought with us? Kim clenched his fists and wondered who the leader was and if it was Sang Chul. He started to ask, show me who you brought with you. The guy who was hiding behind the hooligans immediately came out and started shouting to get out of my way. The red-haired guy smiled and started to say, well, if you ask me to, I'll introduce you to Park Sang Hyok, who is from Gangbuk East High School, and he is a local from Seoul. Park Sang Hyok walked towards Kim and started to say that you probably didn't know that Sang Chul has a brother like me. Kim looked up at the guy and realized that he was the head of the hooligans. He quietly said peeking, and the system highlighted the text you are using peeking. A translucent blue screen showed all the data of the enemy. Park Sang Hyok possessed level B strength, level C speed, level F potential, level C endurance, and level F intelligence. Park Sang looked at his guys and started to say, look at my opponent, and he is even smaller than I thought. He then looked at Kim and continued to say, peeking or whatever you said. And you know I've heard a lot about you, runner Kim Soo Hyun. Kim thought about how to defeat such an opponent who has speed and stamina because there is no one with B strength in his school. The girl raised her hand up and asked Kim to step back. Beck Sharon confidently walked up and stood in front of Kim. She started asking the guys what school they were from and in response she heard silence, no one wanted to admit it. She walked up to them and told them to get out of the neighborhood as fast as they could, or they would be in trouble. Kim thought it was a good thing I had Beck Sharon and she was well connected. One of the guys started to say, look at this slave girl, and I think she's had a brave drink of water. The other one of the guys started saying, you think guys like us are bad guys. 
but we'll prove to you that we're not and give you a discount for being a girl. Kim went to the bullies and asked them not to hurt the girl and that she had nothing to do with it. Kim was suddenly stopped by a strong punch in the stomach, and he tried to stay on his feet and started flying backwards. But still, the hero managed to keep his balance. He grabbed his stomach with his hands and bent down. Park Sang laughed and said, Runner Kim Soo Hyun, what kind of head of the Western gangbuck are you? Park Sang kneaded his fist and continued to say, You're not much more than a toilet attendant. Beck Charon wanted to help Kim, but the bully grabbed her sleeve and started saying that Sang Hyuk's fist knows no mercy and hits the weak much harder. The girl started to ask Kim Soo Hyun if you're okay. Kim stood bent over and without raising his head started repeating the word belly. Beck Che Rin looked at Kim and started to say, why are you repeating the word stomach and it must be hurting you a lot? A purple translucent sensor appeared in front of Kim's eyes and the system highlighted the text that the action card master please successfully registered the first blow. Kim started to reply that he had a very pleasant sensation in his stomach. Beck Che Rin couldn't understand why Kim was saying that. Sang Chul started asking Beck Charon what's going on with your friend, and the girl said that Kim said earlier that he likes to be hit. Kim kept holding his stomach and thought it was true because he liked it a lot. Sang Chul looked at Kim and started to say that you must have bitten your tongue, and now you're repeating the same word. Or the second option is that you're just crazy. Sang Chul started to run towards Kim and continued to say, How can you say that in front of a girl? Sang Chul started hitting Kim's face with his fists. The character thought that he didn't feel any pain at all. The system highlighted the text that the card master please successfully registered the first, second, third, and fourth blow. The bully wasted no time in hitting Kim's face one more time. The system highlighted the text master please five punches completed. And after another blow, Kim saw that something good was happening. A quest window opened, and a golden master please action card appeared. Kim started to read the text. Something good will happen if you hit and your stats will increase, but the time is limited. Sang Chul thought that Kim wouldn't be able to recover for a long time after this. He looked angrily at his opponent and started to say, How did you like it, Su Hyun? The bully saw his fist hit him in the face and he didn't even expect it to happen. A translucent blue sensor appeared in front of Kim's eyes and the system sent out a message saying your strength has been increased from E to C. Kim took aim and struck the bully in the nose with his fist. He watched as Sang Chul's feet left the ground and his body began to fly backwards. A window with his own abilities opened in front of Kim's eyes, and he began to read that his strength had skyrocketed upwards and was now level C, speed level E, potential level B, endurance level D, and intelligence level B. Beck Charon looked at Kim with a surprised look. She couldn't understand if Kim had missed all those blows on purpose and how he had managed to stay on his feet. The bullies watched in fear as their leader missed a hard hit and passed out in midair. After Sang Chul's body was restored by the wall, he was no longer able to continue the fight. The red haired guy started yelling that Su Hyun had knocked out the freshly pumped up Sang Chul again. Kim started to ask Beck Charon if he could tell her something. The girl agreed to listen. The hero looked at the girl and admitted that he gets in a better mood when someone beats him up. Beck Charon blushed visibly on her face and started to answer, You know, the second option that you are crazy, and I think you are crazy. Kim once again opened the window with his abilities and thought that strength level C was very cool, but still not enough compared to Park Sang, who had strength level B. Park Sang started to take off his jacket and said that if you like it so much, I'll beat you up. Kim looked at his opponent's strength and realized that the bully was stronger. The hero decided to fight Park Sang. Kim put on his running shirt and tied it around his neck. He saw that the system sent a message saying that the side quest had started. Park Sang was glaring at Kim angrily and seemed to be ready to tear Kim to pieces. But the hooligans standing nearby had their fists raised and were running towards Kim. The red-haired guy who was running first started shouting, Park San, we can't hold back anymore because this guy knocked out our Sang Chul again. Kim got into a fighting stance and swung his fist sharply. The system highlighted the text of the jab used. The protagonist thought that there's a lot of Sang Chul here and maybe he should find the bottleneck again and it would be better to hold his jab and run to find a convenient place to fight. The three hooligans who were running behind him stopped abruptly and watched in horror as their comrade fell to the ground. 
One of the hooligans started talking about how Su Hyun had knocked out the beefed-up Jin with one punch. The second bully started to check if his comrade had a pulse and checked with his hand if his heart was beating. The third bully sat down next to him and started to say, Don Jin, please come to your senses. Kim looked at the gold card and thought that it was his master's strength, because he was holding back and didn't even touch his opponent's chin, and he was already unconscious. One bully looked at Kim and started to say, look now that Soo Hyun is coming to us and we have to take revenge. Kim slowly approached the hooligans and started to address Beck Charon. The girl interrupted Kim and said she didn't want to hear any nonsense. Still, the protagonist asked the girl to close her eyes. But Beck Charon didn't listen and continued to watch Kim knock out all three bullies one by one. After that, Kim continued to say that there was no reason for the girl to watch. Beck Charon started to reply that she doesn't like to be told what to do. The protagonist heard someone clapping their hands. The head of the bullies looked coldly at Kim and started to say, of course you have to be good for me to be interested. Kim got into a fighting stance and thought about the fact that his opponent surpasses him in speed strength and also in stamina. But Kim liked fighting so much that he wanted to compete with such a strong opponent. Park Sang quickly ran up and began to strike with his fist. Kim thought that the strength he possessed would surely help him defeat the bully. The protagonist deftly dodged the punch and counterpunched with his right hand. The system highlighted the text used by the streetwalker. Kim looked at his opponent and realized that his strength had suddenly decreased and his fear had made itself felt. A translucent sensor reappeared in front of Kim's eyes, and the system highlighted the information that the strength had been reduced from C to E. Park San looked at his friends who were lying on the ground and did not move, and started to say, did you all lose consciousness from such a weak blow? Kim didn't understand why he was given so little time and once again opened the golden action card, Master Please. He thought that the time didn't increase because he didn't get five hits, and that's why his strength immediately decreased. Park Sang caught Kim's hand and pulled it towards him and gave him a strong knee strike to the chest. This time, Kim felt a strong pain in his chest and thought that it was no big deal, because according to his calculations, he was just one blow short of five. The protagonist was hit in the face with a heavy fist and started saying he had enough. Park Sang was not a man who talks a lot. He saw that Kim had managed to stay on his feet and immediately threw a hard punch with his right hand. The bully watched Kim take a couple of steps backward and fall to the asphalt and began to say that he had a plan and that no one had ever been able to stay on his feet after his right-handed punch. Kim fell to the pavement with a thud but didn't connect. All he could think about was why the card wasn't working. Park Sang saw Kim trying to get up and thought that no opponent had ever gotten up after a punch like that. Kim got down on one knee and asked him to wait for a while, because he realized that everything was fine before, but now the card was not working, and there must be some other condition to apply the skill. Park Sang approached his opponent and started to say, You know, I don't feel sorry for you, and time is of the essence. Beck Charon couldn't watch what was going on. She went to Bully and started to ask him to stop the fight immediately. Kim thought that if he lost, the girl would be in danger. Park Sang looked at the girl and started to say that the fight was almost over and she would not wait for her beloved. The Bully took a step forward and sharply struck Kim's nose with his fist. Park Sang then continued to tell the girl that he was done fighting and that he could play with her. Beck Charon started to call out loudly for Kim, she was very frightened by the bully's words. The quest window opened in front of Kim's eyes, and the system sent the information that the master card had successfully registered five hits. Park Sang saw Kim trying to stand up, and fear appeared in his eyes for the first time. And after the system flashed the text that something good was going on, Kim headed towards his enemy with lightning speed, and his fist aimed at the bully's face. Park Sang didn't even expect that the enemy could have such power and his problem was that he didn't have time to block. Now it was too late, and he was falling to the ground. A window appeared in front of Kim's eyes, and the system sent out the information that the strength had been increased from E to C, and now the straight punch was used. Kim was happy that his skills had improved dramatically and thanked Beck Charin. The girl started to say that she didn't do anything. Kim held a small green bean in his hand and began to explain that thanks to her, he understood how to defend the five strikes and that the underlying reason was to protect her. He then ate the bean and the system highlighted the information that the recovery beans were taken. 
The protagonist went on to say that the secret was the shame of being hit in front of a girl. Kim realized that the card master please does not apply if you just get hit, and it is important to be ashamed at the time. Kim saw the bully leader run up to him and grab his legs. Park Sang put his shoulder into his opponent's stomach and started to say, You used to box, but have you heard of Park Sang Hyok who also wrestles? The bully thought that if he grabbed the belt on his opponent's shorts, he could easily throw him over his shoulder. Park Sang tried his plan but couldn't lift his opponent. The protagonist realized the bully's plan and used his strength increase just in time. Kim then threw away the hand that the bully used to catch him by his belt and hit him hard on the ribs with his fist. The bully screamed loudly in pain and his legs gave out and he started to fall to the ground. Kim raised his fist above his head and thought that he had used his strength card to increase his body mass. The protagonist made a strong punch with his fist under the bully's eye and realized that the increase in punching power was due to the master please card. Beck Sharon watched the fight in silence and thought about the fact that her classmate had been a loner all these years and how it was possible that such a loser could do such a thing. Kim sat on top of the bully and started throwing punches aiming at the enemy's beard. And at this moment, the main character's strength had increased to level A. Stamina had also increased to level A. Speed had increased to level C, potential to level B, and intelligence to level B. After such a strong series of blows, the bully passed out. Kim lay down on top of him and opened the quest window, which said that the side quest had been completed. The system sent the following message saying that the silver card had been received. Kim was now even more curious to see what was in it. He opened one eye and thought that the quests were getting harder every time he did them. The next day, Kim didn't want to wake up early and go to school, but he somehow forced himself. And when he was walking along the corridor of the school, he thought that yesterday's quest was interesting and why quests often coincide with my actions. Maybe that means someone's giving out these quests. A sudden smack on the face with the palm of his hand finally woke Kim up, and the system sent out information that the master card had successfully registered the first smack. The protagonist heard the words he got a slap on the right cheek. Maybe you want to get a slap on the left cheek, too. Kim looked at Beck Sharon and asked her what happened. The girl looked at him aggressively and started to explain that she already knew that he was spreading rumors around the school. Kim put his hand on his cheek and started saying that he didn't know what he was talking about. Beck Charon started yelling at Kim, and how could you tell everyone that we were dating? At that time, the school kids were already gathered around them and started gossiping. Kim took a step back and raised his hands and started to say, But why would I spread such rumors since you and I have nothing to do with each other? One of the girls who was standing a few meters further down the corridor started to say, Look what love rubs and their turbulent youth. A guy leaned over to his friend and started whispering about seeing Beck Shireen kissing Su Hyun. The other guy started to reply that the rumors about them having three kids were true. Kim saw that the students in the hallway were starting to disperse, and a few guys were heading towards him. Hyung Dong walked forward quickly holding a large bouquet of flowers. He looked at Beck Chirin and started to ask if it was true that Kim Su Hyun saved you, and that's why you fell in love with him. Bak Jae Rin started yelling that she didn't like Kim Soo Hyun and who made that assumption in the first place. Hyun Dong started to ask if it was true that Kim Soo Hyun knocked out a guy twice his size yesterday and that Kim Soo Hyun's crowning blow can knock out even a horse. At that time, the students gathered around the window and started looking outside. On the main street near the school, there were a lot of people walking around as usual. A guy in a white jacket was going about his business. And as he was walking by, he accidentally bumped the shoulder of a guy he didn't know and started apologizing. The strange guy looked at the guy in the white jacket and immediately recognized him. But the white jacketed guy didn't even stop and walked forward without paying attention. The action takes place in the eastern district of Ganbuk. The guy apologizes to his friends. After Park Sang Hyuk kneels down and says that he did his best but could not defeat his opponent. The bully remembered how he lost the fight yesterday and continued to say that the rumors about Ranner Kim Soo Hyun are true and that he plays dumb and distracts the opponent and then puts all his power into one punch. Park Sang lowered his head and continued to say that from a fighter's point of view, I can definitely say that Soo Hyun must have studied hand-to-hand -hand combat because his punching power was as strong as mine. Please forgive me for defaming the name of East Gunbuck High School.
Han Jae Ha, the head of Eastern Gangbuk, came closer to Park Sang and started saying that no one expected anything from you. And you got a couple times of money and you think you're one of us. You're not even worth beating. Han Jae took out a cigarette and leaned over and kept saying to Park Sang in his ear, If I hit you, it means you're in my family. And you say there are rumors about Kim Soo Hyun? Park Sang replied that he was sure of it because he had tested his strength on his own skin. Han Jae started saying that he should check if it's true as soon as possible. And if Kim Soo Hyun wants to fight me, he can spread any rumors he wants. One of his subordinates approached his leader and asked if he wanted to change today's schedule because they had things to do in the afternoon. The head of the East Gun Book asked not to change the plans. The guy started to ask, but when are you going to deal with Kim Soo Hyun? Han Jae Ha lit a cigarette and briefly replied that he would deal with him now. At that time, Kim decided to check the card he received for the last assignment. A card appeared in front of his eyes. Kim started reading the text you have received a sudden boost card, and it will allow you to increase your stats to your opponent's level. Kim thought that this card could be very useful and that he could try to use it when he had the chance. Han Jae Ha was smoking a cigarette and saw someone approaching him. A guy named Huang Sung, who is ranked 14th in Gangbuk East, started to say, Sir, but why do we have to go to the chicken with a cow knife? Because you can give the job to me, and I promise I'll tear that Su Yun's limbs off and put him in front of the statue at our school. Han Jai started talking, and you didn't hear that Gu Hanju lost the fight. Huang Sung started to clap his hands on his stomach and started to ask, But sir, you don't believe me. Look at my huge body, and I eat guys like that Su Yun guy for dessert. The head of the Eastern Gang Buck came closer and started to say, Huang Sun, are you out of your mind again, or is your brain even fat? But you're a big and strong guy. I want to see if you can handle it. I'll let you do the job. Just remember, you better not come back without a win. After class at Big Break, Kim opened the window again with a simple sudden boost card. He already knew that it increased stats to the opponent's level. But unfortunately, the detailed information was not revealed. He wondered if it was a good skill or just an empty card, or if it was better to use this card for a master card. He put his hand on his head and decided that he had to be patient, because manipulating with cards is addictive and he could end up in a puddle. The protagonist opened the quest window and thought that now it was more important to recruit team members, because the reward for the task is one gold card. And who else should I recruit because I need to recruit people with good stats? As Kim walked out into the hallway, he saw that his flip-flops were torn. He hoped that soon his peeping would be up to rank E. Then he could start looking for people. Kim stopped again and saw that his flip-flops were tearing even more and thought that he would only get to work after he got his torn flip-flops fixed. Beck Sharon was coming from across the hall towards Kim. She started to say, Hey, Kim Soo Hyun, the class teacher is looking for you. Kim bent down to look at his torn flip-flops and rested his head on the girl's chest. Beck Charon started saying that it's not funny anymore and you must really like it. Kim tried to explain that his flip-flops were torn, but it was too late and he got a palm in his face. The system highlighted the information that the host card had successfully registered a second punch. Kim fell on his knees and started to say that he wasn't looking there at all and that he was destined to get into trouble. The girl said that she would report him to the police right away. Kim held his face and started begging Beck Sharon not to report him to the police, and that his old, decrepit slipper had actually torn. The hero thought, what's going on and why do I feel a chill on my back? Kim looked back and saw that Gu Hanju had come to school. He started to say how long you've been gone. I feel uncomfortable and I want to talk to you. And you know, everyone was worried and asking for you, and I was worried too. Gu Hanju thought it was better if they didn't talk to each other and walked past in silence. Kim wanted to say something else, but he saw that the system sent a message that said side quest received. He opened the quest window and started reading Recruit Gu Hanja to your team and get one silver card as a reward. Kim thought about how he could get Gu Hanja on his side after that fight. Maybe I could fight him again, but I don't know if I could beat him a second time. The hero didn't want to give up on the quest because there was a silver card as a reward. A strange girl leaned over to his friend and whispered that Kim Soo Hyun was up to something again. Kim looked at Gu Hanja, who was leaving, and thought it was worth a try. Kim followed him and asked him if he wanted to join forces, and that he still considered him his friend and thought they could make a good team. Gu Hanju stopped and listened to Kim, but didn't say a single word. He didn't even turn his head and went about his business. 
Kim stopped and continued to say, I understand and have a good day. After school, the main character and his friend went to the bus stop. Kim started to complain to his friend that today was another hard day at school, and the worst part was that Gu Hanju ignored the invitation to join the team. Yakuza scratched his beard and started saying that the rejection was an unexpected turn of events. Kim continued to complain, you know I couldn't sleep at all at lunch, and I was afraid that Gu Hanju might suddenly attack me. Also, the peaking doesn't work. The Yakuza started asking what's not working. Kim looked at his foot that wasn't wearing a flip-flop and asked him to ignore it. Kim heard someone say, sir, we've been looking for you everywhere because we're in big trouble. The guy came closer and started to say that a gang from Gangbuck East had caught our high on dong. Kim smiled and started to answer. I suggest you go to the police because you are used to ignoring the public authorities all the time. The guy started to ask if he could get his guys together first. Kim looked at the guy and started to explain, you see, if I go, I will get into a fight again and anyway, it would be better for you to handle it yourself. The guy started to ask, sir, please, you have to help us in this situation. But Hero didn't want to get into trouble and headed towards the bus, which had already opened the door. And after Kim and his friend got inside, the bus closed the door and started to pull away. The guy who stayed at the bus stop started yelling, sir, don't joke like that because we don't know what to do. An unfamiliar guy in a white jacket calmly watched the situation from the side. Yakuza started to ask Kim if it's okay if you don't go. Kim sat down on the seat and answered that he had decided not to go because East Gunbuck is run by Han Jai Ha. I'm sorry, but I have to ignore it and hope that Haiyan Dong will be out of there by morning. Kim thought about the fact that he didn't get any quest and he shouldn't act unless he had a reason to. Then he opened the window and thought that the weather was nice today. The action takes place in the Eastern District. A heavy blow knocked Haiyan Dong to the ground. Four hooligans came over to see if he passed out. One of the hooligans started to say, you're high on dong from Gangbuck West. Do you think it's a good weather for you to go out today? And you first went under Gu Hanju and now under Kim Soo Hyun. Maybe you want to tell us how you're doing now. The bully sat down next to high on dong and continued talking. I know why you're silent. And it's because as soon as someone defeats runner Kim Soo Hyun, you're like a rat to the winner. High on dong started talking about how a wise bird makes a nest in a tree and a long-lived man chooses a monarch to give his life to. The bully started to say, can you say it in simple words, or are you going to university? Hai on Dong went on to say, you see, before I was just choosing a tree, but now I've found my man who I'll continue to serve. I don't need anyone but him. Anyway, our king won't come here just to save me. So finish me quickly, and my death will surely not be in vain. Huan Sun laughed and began to say, you know, Hyung Dong, I can smell a lie and aren't you ashamed of yourself? You're very foolish if you think we're going to end this quickly. Hyun Dong started to say, Did Han Jai Ha send all of you to catch me alone? Wang Sung picked up the metal pipe and started to reply. Are you saying you could handle me if I was alone? Hyun Dong looked at the bully and started to say, Five against one isn't fair and you decided to take a gun. Wang Sun explained that he could easily hurt any opponent without a gun. Then the bully swung and the metal pipe stopped near Haiyan Dong's head, and he started to say that this is the weapon I prepared for you. Now take this metal pipe and try to hit me. Haiyan Dong took the pipe and hit his opponent's big belly hard. Haiyan Dong saw the pipe stuck in his fat belly and dust flew off his clothes. But the bully stood firm on his feet and didn't even move. Huan Sun started talking, and that's all you can do. I think your problem is that you don't know who I am. And with a direct kick, Huan Sun continued to say, you thought you'd hit me, and I wouldn't give it to you. The other bullies watched Haiyan Dong's body fall to the ground, and one of them started to say, if you want, I can tell you that Huan Sun is the 14th strongest bully in Eastern Gangbuck. The bully then looked at his leader and asked for permission to finish off Haiyan Dong. Huan Sun briefly gave his permission. The bully picked up a pipe that was lying on the ground and said, if you like to swing this weapon so much, you deserve to be punished and started swinging it. Haiyan Dong closed his eyes and mentally said goodbye to his life. He apologized to his monarch for annoying him all the time. But suddenly, Kim ran up and saved Haiyan Dong. He knocked out the bully with one precise blow. The system highlighted the text that a straight punch had been used. The rest of the gang watched their comrade fall to the ground and couldn't understand where Kim had come from. Huan Sun looked at Kim and said it was good that you came because I was getting bored and was about to go home. 
Hyon Dong got down on one knee and started to say, Sir, thank you for saving me. But I don't think you should have come because those hooligans told me they'd kill anyone who got in their way. And we can still try to escape. Kim looked at Hyun Dong and started yelling why you're always giving me trouble. And you can't realize that this time I was worried about your skin. But don't worry, I'm getting used to it and I'll try to do something. The bullies calmly watched and tried to assess their opponent. They didn't look like they were scared at all. Kim opened the window and used a peek. The hero saw the abilities of the first two bullies and thought he could take them down. One guy started to say it's definitely Kim Soo Hyun and he's smaller than I thought and he's definitely the head of the West Gunbuck. Huang Sung started to say, Sir, answer the question. You are definitely Kim Soo Hyun, and I heard that you are a year older than me. Kim scanned Huang Siong's abilities and realized that he was a serious threat, and his A-rank stamina was even a little scary for a hero. Kim thought he could use three attack cards at once, the first one with increased strength, the second was a box jab, and the third was a box straight, Hwan Sung walked up to Kim and started to say, Sir, I'm going to hit you with all my might, and you think your skull can take it. Kim looked at his opponent and thought that this guy is really big, and it's probably going to be very hard to win. Huang Sung went on to say, You don't even answer me. So it's true what they said about you not being very talkative. Kim realized that they were in different weight classes, and the height difference was very big, and if he aimed at his face, he would probably lose. Huang Sun stepped aside and took off his jacket. One of the subordinate hooligans started to say, maybe you don't need to dirty your hands and burn calories. I suggest that you give permission and we'll deal with him. Huang Sun put his jacket over his subordinate's head like a hanger and started to say that he decided to do some stretching and deal with the problem at the same time. Kim saw the bully confidently heading in his direction and realized that he wanted a one-on-one -on -one fight. Huang Sun smiled and started to say, Go ahead, sir, and let my guys see what you can do. Kim thought it was better to fight one opponent than a whole bunch of them. He ran up and landed two hard blows to his opponent's abdomen. The system highlighted the text that he had used a jab and a straight punch. Hai An Dong felt guilty and regretted creating such a ridiculous situation. The hooligans staggered from foot to foot and watched quietly. Kim continued to stand in a fighting stance with his fist extended forward. He wondered what was going on and why his opponent wasn't hurt at all. Huang Sung looked at Kim's fist stuck in his stomach and started to say, But sir, what are you doing and weren't you planning to hit me harder? Kim thought he had to find a way out of the situation as quickly as possible, and then he took a step to the side and began to strike with his fist. A series of punches landed on the bully's stomach and chest area. Kim thought that the fat absorbed all the damage and therefore the enemy's stamina was a plus. Then there was nothing left but to aim for the face. Huang Sung put up a block and immediately landed a strong punch with his fist. He started to say how you're like a body blow. I didn't know you were so weak. Kim felt the air from his lungs instantly escape. He ran back to a safe distance and started coughing loudly. Heon Dong started yelling, sir, but you know you have a big weight difference and you said you could figure something out. Kim started to answer, if there is a weight problem, then I have a way. Hyun Dong continued to say, well as expected from the man in charge, and I'm sorry I dared to doubt you. The hero looked at the huge bully and thought he had a card that ignores weight class. Kim ran up and caught the bully by the waist with his hands and pressed his head on the enemy's chest using the power boost. A window opened in front of Kim's eyes, and the system sent information that the card could not be used. Wang Sung caught the hero by the neck and easily lifted him up on his outstretched arm. Kim flailed his legs and tried to take a breath. He saw a window with the information that the strength card could only be used once a day, and the time left to use it was one hour. Kim remembered that in order to defeat Park Sang, he had used the power boost yesterday. Huang Sung took a step forward and bent his arm in which he was holding Kim. Then he threw Kim's body downward onto the pavement. The hooligans, who were quietly watching the fight, started laughing and one of the guys started saying why Su Hyun gave up so easily. Many stars appeared in front of Kim's eyes, and he lay there unable to move a finger. Huang Sung sat on top of the loser and began to say, You are definitely the head of the Western Gang Buck, and somehow I defeated you too easily. Kim's whole body ached terribly, and he realized that he was unable to continue the fight. Huang Sung got up from Kim, looked at his guys, and started to say, now I'll let you finish what you started, and I'm sorry to waste calories on them. The guy started to say, well, finally we can deal with Kim Soo-hyun, and first we will break his legs with a bat. 
Hyun Dong ran up and covered Kim's body. He started to say, first, you have to deal with me. The bully started swinging the bat and said to stay out of the way and stop this drama. Suddenly, the previous head of West Gangbuck appeared and kicked the bully hard in the ribs. Hyun Dong looked surprised and started to speak. But sir, why did you decide to help us after such a thing? Kim raised his head and started to say, Gu Hanju, you came to help us after all. I feel bad because I didn't mean to hurt you. After that incident, I think about that fight in the backyard every day. Gu Gangju looked at Kim and asked him not to remember that fight anymore. Gu Gangju started to say, remember today at school you said something and I think you invited me to join the band. Maybe you think I'm stupid and it would be better if you explain what you meant by that. Kim started to explain, you know I want to create a group of people who are loyal to me and I thought if you joined we would be even stronger. Gu Hanju started to take off his jacket and asked them not to stop him from dealing with the bullies. Kim started to ask if he understood correctly. Gu Hanju put his jacket on the ground and started to say, okay, I'm joining your team, Kim Soo Hyun. A translucent sensor appeared in front of Kim's eyes, and it said that the mission to recruit Gu Hanju to your team was completed. The system sent the following message informing him that the side quest had been completed. Kim continued to read that the reward was one silver card. He saw bright colors intertwine and a silver card appear. The hero opened his mouth in astonishment and couldn't believe it had happened. Gu Hanju made a serious face and walked over to Huang Xion. Huang Xion started talking to me. It's the first time I've seen you, but I've heard a lot of things and I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. I suggest we don't waste time talking and start fighting right away. Gu Hanju started talking, but you're not fighting me. And I think you want to finish what you started. As you can see, runner Kim Soo Hyun is still in good condition. Kim opened the quest window and started reading, You have taken the recovery beans and now your powers are fully restored. The system sent the following message informing you that a new quest has been received. And now you must use a combination of different cards and the reward is a gold card. Hwan Sung silently walked up to Kim and suddenly punched him in the face. The system highlighted the information that the card master please started counting the punches. The bully quickly caught Kim by the shoulders and hit him in the chest with his knee. He started to shout that I didn't beat you enough, so you're still coming. Hyun Dong started yelling, Sir, please do something to him. The system highlighted the information that the MasterCard had already recorded four punches. Huan Sun wasn't going to stop. He punched Kim in the face one more time and started yelling at him, thinking that if you changed your shirt, something would change. The hero took a few steps back and saw that the system had sent a message saying that the MasterCard had successfully counted five hits and now one of the characteristics was randomly increasing. Kim looked at Huang Sung and started to say that he was getting shy from the large number of punches he had received on his face, so he threw a strong punch with his fist into his opponent's chest. The system highlighted the text that the strength was increased from E to C and a straight punch was used. Huang Sung moved to a safe distance, grabbed his stomach and started talking, but this time it hurt. And how did you manage to break through my natural block since I had already beaten you anyway? The hooligans started walking around nervously looking for ways to help their leader. Hyun Dong started to say, sir, if you lose, then tomorrow those bullies will come to our school and take away everything we love. Gu Hanju hoped that Kim Soo Hyun had some trump card in his pocket, because it's very hard to defeat such an opponent. Kim opened a simple sudden boost card that increases stats to the opponent's level. And when he clicked on the details, it revealed that it gives him the ability to make high jumps. The hero immediately decided to test the card and jumped high in front of his opponent. He pressed his legs to his chest and thought it was amazing that this card really works. Huang Sun raised his hands up, smiled, and started to say, Look, this madman is jumping into my hands. Hyun Dong started shouting, Sir, don't let that fat man catch you. Kim Soo Hyun changed his trajectory to fall in front of his opponent. He realized that if the bully caught him in the air with his hands, he would be in a bad situation again. Kim remembered that when Gu Hanju agreed to join the team, the system sent him a reward, and when the hero received the silver attack card, he read the information that it gives him the ability to use a reversal kick like in Taekwondo. And now was the right moment to use the U-turn kick. Kim used his trump card. Kim's foot turned like a hand on a clock, and the hard sole of his sneaker smashed the bully's nose. The hero thought that this time he was able to perfectly measure the distance to the enemy's face and the force of the blow. Huan Sun did not expect such a sudden turn of events, and now it was too late, and he fell to the ground with blood all over his clothes. 
The last thing Juan Sun saw was Kim's white sneaker. A gang of hooligans immediately gathered around Juan Sun lying on the ground. One guy started shouting, sir, give us permission, we can still deal with Su Hyun. Hai Dong looked at the gang and started to say, it seems your main man is lost and now it's time for payback. Kim looked aggressively at the hooligans and began to say, who among you is going to risk a fight with me? A blue translucent sensor appeared in front of the hero's eyes and said that the side quest was completed. The system immediately sent a message with a text, and Kim started to read that as a reward you get one gold card and whether you want to open it or not. Kim clicked the open button and started talking. I hope it was worth it. Two gold cards appeared in the quest window, and information that he only had to choose one card. Kim thought this was a serious problem, because he didn't know which card was better. One bully started to say, look at Huang Sung lying there, not moving and not opening his eyes, which means he passed out. The second bully started to say, what should we do now, because his face turned pale. The third bully started to say, get ready for Gu Hanju to come. Gu Hanju culturally asked the hooligans to take Huang Xian and get out of here as fast as possible. The bully apologized and explained that in order for them to get their fat leader, they would have to find a means of transportation. Kim felt very tired and his body was still tense from the fight. All he could think about was getting home and getting some rest. As he approached his apartment, he heard loud music playing. Kim went into the room and saw his sister Diane dancing and taking pictures of her slim body on her phone. Diane saw Kim and immediately turned off the camera on her phone. She started to say, you got it all wrong and you told me you were going to be late. Kim briefly replied that you are annoying me with your behavior and we are both tired, so let's stop it. He then went into his room and lay down on his bed. Diane went on to say, actually in my class, everyone dances it and they even sing karaoke. Kim started to answer, and since when did Zeratwodens become popular? Kim opened the quest window and thought about which map to choose. The first card is a simple card called Card Vision, which allows me to know in advance what card I will get and it is definitely a useful feature. But do I need it now? The second expendable card is called Encounter Encounter, which is the most powerful card there is. Kim wondered if a gold card could be more powerful than a platinum or diamond card, and whether it was possible for a card to speak. He wondered why the card wanted to meet, and if it would answer questions. Kim decided to get some sleep first before thinking further. The action takes place in Gangbuk East. Huang Xian, 14 number 14 in Gangbuk East, asks why he's being sent home. A guy walks up to Huang Xian and starts to say you heard right and Han Jai Ha won't forgive you for losing. Listen to my words and stay out of his sight for a while. You know our leader's character, so if you don't want to die, live quietly as if you're already dead. Huan Sun started to reply. I understand, then let me go home as soon as possible. But Han Jai Ha was walking by and saw Huang Xian. One of the guys immediately started asking the leader to calm down. Han Jae Ha started talking and how you even had the guts to come to school. Wan Sun realized it was too late to run away and had no choice. He fell to his knees and began to say, please forgive me, sir. I almost won, but suddenly Gu Hanju appeared. If you give me one last chance, I promise I'll make it up to you. Han Jae Ha started to speak, but where's your confidence now? You said you'd eat Kim Soo Hyun for dessert. He walked up to Huang Xian and started to strike him with his palm. It's set in West Gangbuk. Kim Soo Hyun thanked Gu Hanja for helping them out yesterday. Kim remembered how Gu Hanju had knocked out a bully with his foot and started to say, You know, yesterday was really dangerous, and if it wasn't for you, I would have been in a lot of trouble. But why did you help me? Gu Hanju didn't hesitate and said, Maybe it's because I call you by your first name Kim Soo Hyun and not like everyone else, sir. And you better tell me why you're telling me all this in the bathroom. Kim started to say, You know, your name sounds like help. It's a joke. But I'm just saying that because I just saw you. Gu Hanju started to say I don't need help and I can shake it off myself. Kim smiled and started to answer, but I'm always being held by my subordinates and then shaken off. And anyway, thank you for joining my team. Gu Hanju started to reply. Don't be mistaken, I plan to just observe. You better take care of the Eastern Gang Buck. Kim looked at his comrade and started to say, How do you think Han Jae Ha will act now and maybe he won't bother me anymore? Two girls who were walking by started gossiping. One of them started to say, look at Kim Soo Hyun and Gu Han Ju, and they must be up to something. The other one started to say that she heard that Gu Han Ju had joined runner's team. Kim continued to tell his comrade that if we prepare well, Han Jae Ha will also lose easily. Gu Han Ju made a serious face and started to say Soo Hyun Kim. 
You know, I heard that guy is a real daredevil. And you should watch out for Han Jae Ha because he's not stupid at all. People who don't know Han Jae Ha only see him as a guy who's impulsive and can't think logically. But Han Jae Ha, despite his appearance and his actions, is much smarter than anyone else. At that time in East Gangbuk territory, Huang Sung was on his knees and closed his eyes. He thought Han Jae Ha was going to beat him up like everyone else. But Han Jae Ha surprisingly changed his tactics. He put his hand on Huang Seon's head and asked him how Kim Soo Hyun fights. You're not someone who can be broken, so you have to tell me everything from the beginning to the end. I want to know every detail of yesterday's fight, from Kim Soo Hyun's manner of speech to his behavior and habits. And the most important thing I need to know is his strengths and what techniques he uses. Han Jae Ha sat down next to Huang Sion and continued to talk. Wiggle your brain while I'm calm. Huang Sion started to answer. I understand you, sir, and I'll tell you everything now. The guys who were with Huang Sion last night stood there silently watching. Han Jae Ha stood up and suddenly kicked Huang Sion's broad chest with his foot, shouting, I need information. Huang Sung started coughing, and after receiving a strong blow, his chest began to bleed. The bully started talking about how he realized what kind of runner Kim So Hyun is. A guy who was watching the fight yesterday started talking about how Kim Soo Hyun, a skinny and unassuming guy, was able to knock out Huang Xiong with one punch from a U-turn. Huang Sun continued to lie on the ground and started to say, Sir, you see my opponent looked like he was dying and suddenly he got better, and I didn't even expect him to suddenly use a special kicking technique. Han Jae Ha, who has a plus intelligence, calmly looked at his subordinates and began to say, Now, I believe you, and it looks like Kim Soo Hyun is the one. The action takes place in Western Gangbuk. During the reunion, many of the school's best fighters loyal to Kim Soo Hyun gathered. After Kim Soo Hyun and his friend Yakuza entered the room, the fighters came to the long table and bowed. They began to congratulate their king in one voice. Kim began to ask why they were congratulating him. The Yakuza began to say that rumors had already spread that Kim Soo Hyun had defeated number 14 in the Eastern Gangbuk, whose name was Huang Sung. Haeon Dong took a pointer and went to the board and pointed to Huang Sun's picture. Then he looked at Kim and began to say that you knew you had a new nickname, and it was runner cannibal Kim Soo Hyun, and it had changed because you had just destroyed the enemy. Haeon Dong showed a map of the area and continued to say you see Wan Sun is just a pawn and he has no land under his control. If he did, it would quickly become ours. From now on, we have a lot of issues to deal with in terms of expanding our territory. Kim rested his head on his hand and thought that his team was serious about uniting the lands. And how did it all turn out that he had to deal with such serious issues? And that all this is only happening because there are quests and why of all people he was chosen. The hero opened the quest window and picked up two gold cards. He thought about whether the quests would ever end or if he would have to do quests for the rest of his life. Hyung Dong looked at Kim and started to say, Sir, you are doing a great mime, and we are all ready to applaud you, as expected of Kim Soo Hyun, runner cannibal who performs mimes. Kim thought he had a lot of questions, and now it was time to choose. He didn't want to spend his life doing quests without knowing why they were appearing. It was a shame about the card vision, but he needed to know the source of the quests. Kim chose the meet and greet card and thought if the player card wanted to meet me, he should do it. All the people in the meeting looked at Kim with surprise. Hyung Dong began to speak, sir. You are here for a briefing, and I am trying to tell you our plan. A quest window opened in front of Kim's eyes, and the system asked him if he wanted to use the meat card. Kim agreed to use the map. Suddenly it became quiet, and all the noise somewhere disappeared. The hero looked at the empty room and started shouting, What is going on, and where have you all disappeared to? Kim became very scared, and he got up and headed for the exit. But there were no school children on the corridor either and Kim started calling his friend Yakuza, but he didn't answer. The hero started to run with all his might and shouted, Hi, on Dong, where are you? I promise to listen to your plan. Kim ran like crazy down the stairs from the other floor and started screaming, but why are the teachers missing and they should be working? The hero remembered that bullies used to bully him every day, and he wished he was alone at school. Kim left the school and thought that maybe his dream had come true, but why isn't there a single person on the street? A sudden bright light blinded the hero, and he covered his eyes with his hand and looked up. Kim saw that the system had sent him a message with the text, Nice to meet you, and this is our first meeting. 
The hero looked at the huge player's map hanging in the air and thought that something impossible was happening. The system sent the following message and Kim started to read it. You must have a lot of questions. Ask anything. And let me answer all your questions. Kim looked up and started talking about how first you have to answer my four questions. The first question is who gives the quests? The second question is why do I have them? The third question is what do you want from me? And the fourth question is what quest will be the final one? The system sent a text message and Kim started to read your questions. Your questions have been accepted and from now on I will answer all your questions. And now I'll connect you to him. Kim started talking, so is it real that I will be connected to someone and I will be able to talk to them? A loud human voice started to answer. You got it right. And it's you, Kim Soo Hyun. I think you're a lucky guy. I didn't expect you to pull the meat card. But I was even more surprised that you made that choice. Kim started talking, which means someone else did the quest besides me. The electronic voice started to say, you have nothing to worry about, and I'll be honest, it's a little early for a meet and greet. And I don't even know if you can handle this case. Kim started shouting what else is going on and you have to tell me what the last quest is. A voice from the map started answering. You must have a lot of questions. However, we can't trust each other yet. Maybe you can demonstrate your abilities first. Kim briefly answered what abilities you are talking about. The voice from the map went on to say, if you can unite the Eastern Ganbuk with the Southern Ganbuk, then I think I can believe in your power. The bright light blinded the hero again, and he covered his eyes with his hands and started to say, Unite means I have to fight again, but why should I do that? A voice from the map started to say, You want to give up, and you don't even think it's your last chance. Because your eyesight has improved, and it's really good to be able to see all the details. You're also much taller, and I think you're doing much better now. You've been able to overcome the bullying, and your life has started to change. And it's all thanks to the gold card. Don't you get enough of the bronze, silver, gold, and platinum cards? Don't you wonder what a diamond master card or a player card can do? Kim heard some noise, and the voices started to intensify. He felt a hug. Hyun Dong pressed himself against Kim's body and started to say, Sir, you scared us a lot, and I thought you had fainted. You just closed your eyes and didn't say anything. Kim started talking about how he was having trouble breathing to let him in. Hyun Dong calmed down and started talking. Anyway, me and Yakuza made a plan for uniforms at our school. But if you're tired, we can finish it another day. You're the only one. Kim realized that by using the meat map, he looked asleep. He got up from his chair and heading for the exit suggested to end the meeting for today. The hero remembered the voice on the player's card saying that this was his chance. Kim thought that since he said his eyesight had improved and his height had increased, it could mean that he had access to higher ranked cards. This chance might not come again, and he should try it. Hyun Dong turned his head and started to ask if there was anything you wanted to say, sir. Kim looked at his comrade and said he was interested in the Gunbuck Association. Hyun Dong started to say, sir, you mean you've made a final decision, and my joy has no limits now. I will spread the good news to all the schools as soon as possible. After that, Kim left the classroom and left the West Gangbuck High School grounds. A couple in love was walking down the street. The guy started telling the girl that her new eyelashes looked amazing. The girl started telling him that a new beauty salon had opened in their neighborhood. Suddenly, the girl got really angry and hit the guy in the face with her palm. The guy was very confused and started asking why she did that. The girl started apologizing and making excuses. Kim, peeking from around the corner, thought about the fact that he had used peeking many times before. He wondered what would happen when he reached a certain number of points. A few minutes later, the system sent a message informing him that his peaking skill had risen to E-rank. Kim was very happy and looked around looking for someone to use the E-rank peaking skill on. Kim saw Beck Charon walking down the street, watching something on his phone as usual. He thought about why that girl was there, but he still used the E-rank peak. Kim started reading that Beck Charon is 168 centimeters tall and weighs 49 kilograms. He wondered if it was dangerous to see even her weight. Beck Charon started looking around nervously, and Kim had to stop peeking. And he walked into the narrow street, fearing that the girl would notice him. As he walked confidently down the street, Kim looked at the cards he'd earned through hard work. He thought about whether he could unite East and South Gangbuck with these cards, and how he could get more attack cards. Kim thought that he might be able to reach an agreement with Kang Siok, the head of the Southern District. 
But the head of the Eastern District, Han Jae Ha, seemed like a really scary guy. Kim started to say until I get stronger, I should avoid meeting him. Han Jae Ha blocked Kim's way and started to say, do you really think you can avoid meeting me? But it's late, and as you can see, I'm here in front of you. Kim froze in surprise and said hello. Han Jae Ha kicked him from the turn around and continued talking. We're not in a relationship where we can say hello to each other. Kim took a step backwards from the sudden blow to his chest and then fell down, sitting up and rolling on the ground for a few meters. He started coughing and wondered why it was so hard to breathe. Han Jae Ha pretended as if he had nothing to do with what happened and started to say, why don't you watch your step? Then he took off his jacket and asked Kim if he wanted to swing his legs around. Kim wasted no time in taking the regenerator beans and the system highlighted a text saying that he was regaining his health. Han Jae Ha ran up and threw another surprise leg kick, but Kim managed to dodge the kick and started to run away. Han Jae Ha calmly followed Kim and started to say, I meant, do you want to fight with me? And you must have realized that you should run without looking back. Kim ran a few dozen meters, took off his backpack and got into a fighting stance. Han Jae Ha walked towards Kim and continued to say, come on, run like a coward or you have a sense of pride. And I wonder how you could beat Huang Sung. Kim looked nervously at his opponent and started to say peeping and I'm warning you to stay away. The system highlighted a message informing that a peak was used. Kim saw that his opponent was 181 centimeters tall, weighed 68 kilograms and had almost all his abilities at maximum. Han Jae Ha started to say that you only won yesterday because you were peaking. Kim saw that his abilities were much lower. He was 171 centimeters tall, 56 kilograms and thought, what should I do since I had used all the recovery beans and the opponent's level was as far as the moon? Kim started to ask his opponent why he decided to fight today. A blue translucent sensor appeared in front of the hero's eyes. The system sent a message and Kim began to read that a side quest has been created and you must win the battle with Han Jae Ha. The reward is one platinum card, but there are hidden conditions Han Jae Ha started to say that there is no point in putting off the fight for later. Kim looked at the enemy and started to say, maybe you want to set a day and fight at full strength. And there's no point in you taking me out here where no one can see. Kim realized he was very weak right now, but he couldn't give up the platinum card and tried to think of something. The hero went on to say that the Western and Eastern Ganbuk are uniting and you'll be fine with this cheesy scene for our battle. Or do you think you'll lose to me? Kim hoped that Han Jae Ha would fall for his bait. Han Jae Ha walked up to Kim, looked him in the eye, and started to say, Since when do you decide such things, and you better tell me the time when I'll see you? Kim bent down to pick up his backpack from the ground and started to say, Don't worry about it, I'll call you myself. Han Jae Ha turned around and pulled a cigarette from the pack and started to walk away. And without even turning his head, Han Jae Ha started to say, Don't take too long, I don't like to wait. You know your plan is good for me because I was going to beat you up, and now I want to take everything you have. Kim thought he couldn't be sure he'd beat his enemy next time and used a sudden boost. The hero decided to fight a monster with almost all of his stats at max level. Kim aimed his fall trajectory so that it would be convenient to strike a surprise blow and thought about not letting the enemy take over the school. The system sent a message informing him that he had used a power boost and also a spinning kick. Kim thought that one punch of that strength should be enough to knock out the enemy, but the enemy managed to dodge. Kim landed on his feet and apologized. But it was too late and Han Jae Ha retaliated with a punch that hit Kim's chest. Kim's body flew backwards, but he still managed to stay on his feet. Han Jae Ha began to accelerate. He measured the distance to his target perfectly and started to make a turn in the air. He started to say that you were wrong to attack me from behind. Han Jae Ha straightened his leg and made a precise kick to Kim's jaw. He went on to say, didn't you know that I'm always on guard even when I'm close to death? The hero didn't even have time to realize what had happened before his eyes went black and he began to fall to the ground. The system highlighted the information in red that the side quest had failed. Han Jae Ha walked over to Kim who was lying there without moving and began to say, your steps are terrible, but your technique is not bad. The system sent the following message informing you that you are receiving a hidden condition. And the first defeat in the battle against an invincible enemy has been accomplished. Congratulations, you have fulfilled the hidden condition and you get a diamond card. But the hero continued to lie on the ground in a blackout 
his consciousness simply shut down from the pain and shock. And, unfortunately, he couldn't read all the messages that came from the system. Half an hour later, Kim heard a familiar voice ask Sir what's wrong and how can I help you. Kim opened his eyes and saw Hyon Dong holding his hand and crying. Kim started to ask where he was. Hyon Dong started to say I found you in the alley unconscious and brought you to class. On the way, I was told that you fought with Han Jai Ha. They also told me that that bully attacked you suddenly in the alley. Kim thought it made sense and it looks like Han Jai Ha knocked me out. And Lee Hyung Dong saved me. Hyun Dong went on to say, don't worry, sir, I've healed your wounds. And for your sake, I've learned a bit of basic medicine. Kim looked at his comrade and started to reply, I wish you had taken me to the hospital and thank you half as much. So I really lost. When Kim thought about the fact that he had failed completely, his mood completely disappeared. He felt like a loser because he couldn't do anything. It was the first time Kim felt such a big difference in strength. Wan Sun was okay to fight with, so why couldn't I even stand up to Han Jai Ha? In terms of strength, it was like a B-level versus A-level fight or some other kind of strength. Maybe by strength, I mean the total attack power. But in any case, I think I was just lucky. Gu Hanju said hello to Kim and started to say it's good that Han Jai Ha stopped because he could have killed you. Kim looked at his comrade and started to say, what are you doing here? Were you worried about me? Kim remembered that even Han Jai Ha was wary of Gu Hanju. He wondered how strong Gu Hanju must be. After that, he immediately turned on the peeping device. Gu Hanju started to answer, you know, I was wondering what condition you were in after the fight. Kim saw that Han Ju's strength level was at its maximum, and the rest of his stats were practically the same as Han Jai Ha's. Kim thought that they were about the same level, and that means that Gu Hanju had succumbed to me. Kim sat on the desk, and his head was still spinning a little. He looked at Hanju and started to say, I'm curious about you. You see, I realized something, and now I want to ask you a few questions. Hanju saw that Kim had gotten to his feet and was heading towards him, and he started to say, ask questions, and I'll try to answer. Kim started to say, why are you helping me? And it seems like you were giving me a lot of credit during the battle. You even said you would join my team, and I want to know what your reason is. Gu Hanju started to answer. This is the first time I've seen someone like you. That's why I was curious. But don't be mistaken, I didn't say I'd act together with you. Kim started to say, should I believe that you gave in to me out of curiosity, or should I look elsewhere? And if you have something to say, be kind enough to share it with me. Kim opened the quest window and saw that he had a diamond card available. He didn't even expect to get a diamond card for a side quest. Kim thought, but isn't winning a fight a requirement? This time I just got lucky and it seems like the heavens helped me. And since I said I wanted to test my skills, I guess there won't be any more cards like this. I should be thankful I was able to get one at all. The platinum card gave me the skill of peeking. I wonder what the diamond card will have. The hero briefly opened the card and the system highlighted the information that the diamond card was opening. Kim watched as the colors of green, yellow, and purple began to intertwine. The whole room filled with bright flashing lights and the system highlighted the text congratulations you have received a challenge card. Kim began to read the information he received about the copy cloud activating the summoning from a safe location. The system began to ask if you wanted to know more. The action takes place in the territory of Eastern Ganbuk. The gang members began to gather at the designated location to greet their leader. They line up in rows like in the army with the main guy in the front. And when they saw that the leader had arrived at the meeting place and was heading towards them, they immediately bowed. The head guy began to congratulate his king. Han Jai Ha, the head of the East High School, went to his gang and began to say, I see that everyone is already gathered and I'm the last one as usual. The guy in front said hello to Han Jai Ha and started talking about how there are rumors that he fought with Kim Soo Hyun and everyone is curious about how the fight ended. Han Jae Ha started to answer that if I had lost, do you think I would have come here? And as for the fight, nothing special happened. Kim Soo Hyun is weaker than I thought, and now the Western Gunbuck is ours. Han Jae Ha turned to Num 13, whose name is Kang Do Hyuk, and ordered him to gather the guys and finish the West Gunbuck. He reported that Kim Soo Hyun lost the fight and is not really a big threat. And there's only one person to watch out for in the Western region, and that's Gu Han Ju. He also said to look for Gnome 5, whose name is Park Gong, as soon as possible, and tell him to finish his business and go to the Western District. Only if we work together can we eliminate Gu Hanju. Han Jae Ha took out a cigarette from his pack and lit it. 
He went on to say that from now on, they should focus on the southern gangbuck and deal with their leader, Kang Sayok. Han Jae Ha took a drag of bitter cigarette smoke and continued to say that as soon as we capture the western and southern districts. We'll go after that kid from Gangbuck North right away. And I appeal to everyone here to bring useful information from the northern district as soon as possible. The action is taking place in the western district. After Kim Soo Hyun came home from school, his sister Diana came to him and asked him to come home. I have girlfriends coming over today, so please don't leave the room. Kim started to say, but why are you forbidding me to leave the room? Maybe you're embarrassed of me. Diane started to answer, I'm not shy, I am just afraid that you will be uncomfortable and I hope you will listen to me. Kim smiled and started to say, I think I will find the right moment, and then I will leave the room and confess my love to your girlfriend. Diane promised to fulfill his every whim if he listened to her. Kim started to go into his room and said that he liked to walk around the house in his underwear. Diane started yelling that's why she didn't want him to meet her girlfriends. But Kim ignored his sister and was only thinking about his new diamond card. There was only one reason he was in such a hurry to get home. The protagonist was happy to finally be in his room in the safest place in the world. Kim opened the quest window and thought, I've had a hard time, my jaw still hurts. He opened the diamond card and began to read the information that he would now be able to summon a cloud capable of copying and pasting. After a few minutes, Kim decided to summon the copy cloud. The whole room was filled with a bright flashing noise. Kim watched as the light grew brighter in one spot and began to form a cloud. The formation process lasted a few seconds, but it seemed to Kim that it lasted for a long time. He had never seen anything like it before. The system sent a message informing him that the copy cloud had been created. Diane heard a knock and opened the door. She immediately started asking her girlfriends why they were late. The girlfriends said hello and started making excuses that they had ordered takeout, and their order was taking a long time to arrive. The girl gave the food to Diane and started to say, excuse us in exchange for such delicious food. Diane started to reply, I hope you bought a drink. The girl started to say, I didn't buy a drink, and I'm thinking about helping you with the Tic Tac talk. And tell me if you're home alone or if runner Kim Soo Hyun is there. Diane started to reply, stop calling my brother that and maybe we should get down to business. The girlfriend started to say, but you're the snow queen, Kim Diana, and I have a great idea we can do a snow style Tic Tac talk. Diane looked at her friend and started to reply, I told you not to call me that, or do you need to explain twice? Kim couldn't believe his eyes. He got out of bed and thought it was a dream. Then he pinched himself to check and realized it was real. The hero looked at the copy cloud and started to say, listen, you can answer questions. Maybe you're called a diamond card and now you'll just float silently under my ceiling. He wondered what powers the cloud had and if other people could see it. The system highlighted a message and Kim began to read that when copy mode is activated, you can copy a nearby object and be careful after activation, it will automatically start copying the object. Kim thought to find out what it is. He should try it out and activated the copy mode. The system displayed information that the object to be copied is being searched. Diane knocked and immediately opened the door to Kim's room. She started to say, my girlfriends are asking for your autograph. Kim looked at her sister and warned her not to go in his room. Diane didn't listen and took a step forward. A cloud was hanging from the ceiling right above her head. Kim looked at his sister and started to say quickly, go to your girlfriends. He saw the cloud change shape and color and begin to envelop the girl's fragile body. Diane started asking Kim what was going on and why she couldn't move. The system highlighted a text informing her that Diana was being copied and that she could not move during the copying process. Kim looked at his sister and after a moment of thought answered, I don't know what's going on. Diane continued talking, but I'm having a hard time breathing. Kim saw that the system sent a message saying that the copying of Kim Diana was successfully completed. After the cloud dissipated, Diana fell to her knees, trembling with fear. Kim thought that he should have chosen a safe place to check the map, and it was all his fault. He ran up to his sister and started asking how she was feeling. Diane looked at her brother and started to answer. You know, my body felt like someone had tied me up and then I got really hot and I couldn't even breathe. Kim was confused about what to do and what to do if her sister saw the copy cloud. Diane couldn't come to her senses, repeating over and over that she was telling the truth about something holding her back. Kim asked her sister to elaborate on what she saw. 
Diane was very frightened and suggested that there was a ghost in their house. At that moment, Kim realized that her sister hadn't seen the copy cloud after all. Diane then left the room and started telling her friends that there was a ghost in her house. A friend started to say, but how could there be a ghost in your house? And you should realize that there are no ghosts in the modern world. The other friend found Diane's story funny and asked her not to make up any more stories. Kim sat on his bed and took the cloud in his arms. He thought about the fact that he couldn't experiment on his sister, and if something happened to her, he wouldn't be able to forgive himself. He began to reassure himself that there was no other place as safe as this, and that it wasn't his fault that some girlfriends had come over. Kim realized that the map was copying people, but he didn't know what to do about it. The system highlighted the information, and he began to read, You can insert Diane. The hero thought, why not try and confirm the information? The system reported that the insertion of Diane had begun. The cloud had been lying still in Kim's arms until then, but it started to move. Kim got out of bed, and the first thought that came to his mind was to run away, but he knew that there were girls in the next room, and he would be embarrassed. And after a click, Kim saw his sister Diane standing in front of him with a sign around her neck. He opened the door to his room and decided to see what his sister was doing. But Diane was sitting on the couch asking her girlfriends to shoot tic-tac-toc with the ghost. Kim saw his sister's clone start to move. He locked the door for fear that his real sister would come in again. Kim approached the girl and whispered to her, saying, what's going on here, can you answer me? But the girl silently looked at Kim, and her facial expression did not give away any emotions. He couldn't believe that he really managed to copy a person and decided to touch her. The girl tried to dodge, but Kim touched her face. He thought she looked like a real person and her nose was warm. Kim thought that if other people could see the clone girl, he would be in big trouble. He was afraid that people would start rumors that an alien was living in his apartment, and then he'd get caught and sued for cloning people. Kim didn't even expect a girl to slap him. The system reported that the copy cloud was in a bad mood, and the host card successfully registered one slap. Kim moved a safe distance away and thought she'd hit me from the right side just like that. And it could be that the clone girl is as thoughtful as Sister Diane. The system reported that the copy cloud was returning to the map. And as the girl scattered in the air, Kim saw the calling card. He thought about how he would use such a useless card. The next day at school during class, Kim sat there unable to register what the teacher was saying. Kim's mood was very bad, and he was immersed in his thoughts. He made it look like he was reading something in a book, but what he was really thinking was that he had worked so hard to get the diamond card, and it was just a copy and paste. And why do they call it a diamond card? So she copies a person. Then what? Even if I have two little sisters, they'll piss me off twice as much. I was so excited about this card, and then I end up with some garbage. Suddenly, Hyun Dong came up to Kim and said, Sir, we seem to be in big trouble. Kim took his heart and started to say how you scared me. You should at least draw your eyebrows. Hyun Dong reported that the Eastern Gunbuck had started to act. Hyun Dong stood with a few other guys and continued to tell Kim that Han Jai Ha wanted to take over the Western Gunbuck and had sent his guys here to do so. And we know that the leader Park Gong Na 5 in the Eastern District, who is known for his bad reputation, and his assistant Kang Do Hyok Na 13 in the Eastern District, who is stronger than Huan Sung, whom you killed, are on their way to us. Both opponents are strong enough, and we don't have anyone like them yet. And if we face the guys from Gang Buck East, we have no chance of beating them. Kim looked at Haeon Dong with a frightened look and didn't know what to say. After a few minutes, Kim asked the guys to leave him alone. Kim clenched his teeth and thought that the guys from Gang Buck East were coming here and that they were stronger than Juan's son, and I was lucky to beat him. I don't know when the hooligans will come and if he'll be able to handle them. I guess I can't solve this problem by just winning the fight, because Han Jae Ha will come again and then I'll be finished. The only three attack cards I have left are Box Jab, Box Straight, and Taekwondo U-Turn Punch. And maybe there's a way to get more attack cards. I wonder if I can find more cards at Sang Chul Park, but I don't even know when he will appear again, and if I find him, I can't be sure that the quest will give me new quests. Time is so short and there's no way to get stronger in such a short time. Kim walked out of the school and headed towards the smoking area. He sat down on the sidewalk and put his hands on his head, but unfortunately he couldn't think of anything. The hero heard a voice. What are you doing here? You don't smoke. Kim looked up and saw Gu Hanju walking towards him. 
He took out a cigarette and lit it. Kim thought maybe I should ask Hanju to help me train. He looked at his comrade and started to say, Listen, Hanju, I have a favor to ask you. Hanju took a drag of bitter cigarette smoke and started to answer, I don't want to help you. Kim looked at his comrade and continued talking, but I haven't said anything yet. And if you don't want to help me, there's nothing you can do. But I wanted to warn you. Hanju started to answer. You should have started with that. Kim suggested we go to a place and promised he'd tell us everything on the way. It's in Gangbuk East. Kang Dohek, number 13 in the East Gangbuk District, entered the apartment. A voice from the other room started to say, Come in. Don't be shy. Kang Dohek started walking down the hallway and said hello. Park Gun 5, number 5 of the Eastern District started to say, I'm glad to see you, and don't pay attention to those guys on the floor. Kang Dohek looked around and started to ask if you were probably doing research again. Park Gong started to answer, You know, I've only been messing around, I've tried mixing things up, but I don't think I can make any money and I should find out how the guys from Gang Buck South are doing, that Kang Siok has a good pot. Park Gong looked at Kang Dohak and asked if you were going to go to West Gang Buck. Kang Do took his jacket from the coat rack and put it on Park Gun and started to answer, that's right, because Han Jai Ha ordered us to clean up the place. And maybe you can deal with this Han Jai Ha, he's making me do the same thing twice. So when are you planning to go to West Gang Buck? Park Gun looked at Kang Do Hak and asked if you don't know about me and Han Jai Ha. Park Gun turned around and headed for the exit and said, I'll go now. The action takes place on the roof of a high-rise building in the Western District. Kim stands in front of Gu Hanju and stares at him silently. The hero suddenly took a step forward and struck Gu Hanju's face with his fist. The system highlighted a message saying that a jab was used and now the jab skill has been upgraded. Kim cheerfully started to say my skill is going up and thanks for letting me hit you. But you don't have to miss all the punches next time you can just block me. Gu Hanju held his hand over his face with a sign on it. Kim got into a fighting stance and thought that half an hour ago I was desperate when Gu Hanju said he wouldn't help. I had to use another plan and luckily I was able to copy it. And thanks to the diamond card, Hanju doesn't have to help me. Now Gu Hanju is a training dummy so I can raise my experience points. Kim ran up to his opponent and threw a lightning fast fist punch. The system highlighted the information that your straight punch skill is being increased by the opponent's strength. The copy of Gu Hanju managed to block every time Kim attacked. Then the hero regrouped and launched a spinning leg kick. In front of Kim's eyes, the system highlighted the information that the skill of jabbing and turning kicking was increasing rapidly. Even after hours of hard training, the copy didn't let himself miss a single punch. Kim was overjoyed when he saw the message that his straight skill had risen to D rank. He continued to strike and felt his level rise. The action takes place at Gangbuk Girls High School. Yang Soha was walking down the hallway with her friends. A friend started to say to Seoha, what are you planning to do today? Seoha replies that she wants to go home and read a book. The other friend looked surprised and started to say you're going to read books again. You're already a real humanitarian. A group of guys who were standing near the school couldn't take their eyes off the girls who came out. Kang Dohek. No 13 lit up a cigarette and began to say that the girls at this school are so cool. We should get some of these beauties for ourselves. The guy standing next to him started asking if Park Gun had gone on a mission. Kang Do Hyok said that Park Gun was on his way. The guy started to say, then Gu Han Ju will take care of Park Gun. And you take on Kim Soo Hyun, and are you sure you can win? Kang Do Hyuk put out the cigarette on his tongue and started to say, you're still asking me. You heard that Su Hyun was torn to shreds by Huang Siong, and think about if I, who is stronger than Huang Siong, went up against Su Hyun, he would be taken away in an ambulance right away. The guy started talking Kang Do Hyuk, you're a logic genius, but I suggest we deal with Kim Su Hyun a little later. The guy looked at the girls and continued talking. Now we can have some fun here. The next action takes place in the western neighborhood. Kim was walking in the company of his companions. Hyun Dong looked at Kim and started to say, Sir, you look chipper today. Have you been practicing? Kim started to answer, I'm just in a good mood to blow up a lamppost. Hyun Dong started jumping up and down and continued to say, You're so energetic. It's like you've already defeated someone. And you're so confident that you're not even afraid of getting electrocuted. They saw a guy running towards them shouting loudly that there was a problem. Kim started to say he's always in trouble. 
The guy ran closer and said that the guys from Gunbuck East had showed up, and that the bullies were currently bullying the school children. The guy didn't know what to do and asked how he could help the students. Kim started to answer that he should call the police. It's possible that they've taken hostages, and there's no reason for us to get in there and help. Hyundong started to say how wise you are, sir. But what school are they at now? The guy started to answer that it seems to be a girls' school where the hottest girls in the neighborhood go. Kim and his team headed towards the school. He started to say, well, I've changed my mind, and I think we'll have dinner in hell. And walking a few dozen meters, Kim heard a voice, sir. Where are you going? The hero turned his head and saw Huang Sun heading towards them. The Yakuza fixed his glasses, and his partner Haiyan Dong started talking about where Huang Sun had come from. Huang Sun came closer and continued to say, You know, because of you, everyone is laughing at me now, and that's why I came to restore my reputation. Haiyan Dong looked at Kim and started to say, What should we do, sir? It seems that this bully has come to fight, and how can we do it alone? Kim looked at his comrades and ordered them to go to the girls' school. Huang Sung started to say, I know there are beautiful girls in that school, and soon they will all be ours. Kim Soo Hyun, you must be crazy because you can't beat me alone. Remember that time when Gu Hanju suddenly appeared, so I got distracted and got hit once. You must have felt the difference between us then. So you'll be waiting for Gu Hanju to show up like that. The hero quietly said that he won't come this time. Now that I have no choice, I can do it alone. Kim showed his fist to his opponent and thought, what's going on and how can I be so confident? The next scene takes place in a narrow street near the girls' school. Yang Soha heard footsteps approaching and felt someone grab her shoulder. Kang do Hek looked at the three frightened girls and started to say, you know I touched you because you are the most beautiful. We only followed you because we want to have fun together. Me and my guys are ready to party with you for three hours. I'll pay you whatever you need. The hooligans were scrutinizing the girls, and one guy started to say, you probably didn't think there were other guys like us who would even pay. Yang Soha realized that the three of them couldn't escape so easily, and started to say, what do you want, and please leave us alone. The girl tried to pass, but Kang Do got in her way, and Soha continued to say, let us pass. We have to go home, and we have our own money. Kang Do Hak touched the girl's face and started to say that you can go straight to being an idol because you have a pretty face. Come work for our leader, and I'm sure you'll like him. Yang, Soha started to say, what are you doing? Please don't touch me. Suddenly, Haiyan Dong came out from around the corner and started yelling at Kang Do to calm down. Kang Do started to say, you can see we are busy right now, and who are you? Hyung Dong started to answer, I am from West Gangbuk and I came to chase you out of our neighborhood. My name is Lee Hyung Dong. One of the hooligans started to say, you must have lost your fear. We're much older than you. Hyun Dong was very scared when he saw a bunch of bullies coming towards him. The guy in front started saying, you came alone. If we hit you once, you won't survive. And look at him, he even got into a stance. That's disrespecting our elders, and we should teach him a lesson. Hyung Dong knew he had to hold out until Kim came. But the bullies stopped abruptly and their expression showed fear. Hyun Dong wondered what had happened to them all of a sudden and if they were afraid of me. One of the hooligans pointed his finger and started to say it was the same guy who fought with Kim Soo Hyun for three days. The super rookie they call the Little King. Look at the devil Yakuza number two in West Gunbuck heading our way. The girls looked hopefully at the guy walking toward them. One started to say that the devil himself had come to save us. The other started to say, that guy looks like he's a good fighter. Hyung Dong looked at the hooligans and started to say, I'm sorry I'm so rude, but even the Yakuza decided to come with me. Then Hyun Dong looked at Yakuza and started to say, Well then, I'm asking you to handle this situation as a senior. The bully in the front started talking, but I didn't think this guy would come here. Hyun Dong went on to say, You see, these bullies are picking on the girls, and I think you should start by punishing them. These guys probably don't know how you dealt with the previous bullies. The Yakuza took a few steps forward and looked at his enemies with confidence. One guy started to say, look at this devil with his hands in his pockets. He probably thinks he can handle us without hands. But don't get distracted. He could be the one they're talking about. The other guy started yelling, Yakuza, say something or I won't be able to take it. But you know, no matter how strong you are, we'll take you down. There's a lot of us. 
and when Yakuza saw a whole crowd of hooligans running towards him, he just closed his eyes and didn't move. The hooligans slowed down again and opened their mouths in surprise. Because they saw the head of the West Gunbuck heading towards them, Kim showed his bloody fist and started to say sorry for being late, but your comrade was tougher than I thought. The loser Huang Sung was lying on the ground not far from the school. His face was swollen and there was a bruise under his eye. He was still conscious and couldn't believe he'd lost. This fight was completely different from the last time and I thought I could definitely win. But how did Suhyun get so strong in such a short time? The hooligans stood there silently watching, their confidence gone somewhere. The Yakuza started to say, you came after all, Kim Soo-hyun. Now you've ruined all my fun, but I'll give in to you just for today. Kim looked at his friend and started to answer. I realized what the situation was and decided to handle it myself. So you don't need to get your hands dirty with these bullies. Kim looked at the hooligans and heard a voice. Well, you surprised me by winning Juan Sun. Kang Do Hyuk came out from behind the crowd of hooligans and continued to say, you know, I'm much stronger. Kim turned on the peeper and saw that Kang Do is 179 centimeters tall and weighs 79 kilograms and actually has higher stats than his previous opponent. Kang Do looked at his guys and started to say, what are you guys doing here? Maybe you came to say hello. The bullies immediately raised their fists up and started running towards Kim. Kim also clenched his fists and started to say, let's see what happens to you now. The hero remembered that when he finished his training and was sitting on the roof of the house, he decided to check how much his level had increased. And when he opened his rank B battle cards, he was surprised because even the names of the techniques had changed. The three attack cards that were now called Red Jab, Red Straight and Red U-Turn were upgraded to critical hit probability. Instantly, strong boxing punches were thrown at the faces of the attacking hooligans. Haiyan Dong and Yakuza couldn't believe their eyes because the fight lasted one second. Yang So Ha thought that Kim Soo Hyun was very strong because he knocked out several bullies so easily. Kim saw that the system sent a message that a side quest had been created and that you must defeat Kang Do Hek in the battle and get one silver card as a reward. Kang Do Hek looked at Kim angrily and started to say that you realize you can't get out of here alive now. Kim started to say, I understand that you're the boss here, and I think your name is Kang Do Hek. Why don't you run right away and call Han Jae Ha? The system highlighted the text that the quest is starting. The guy who was standing a few steps away from Kim decided to suddenly attack. He raised his fist and began to strike. The hero was prepared for this outcome and used a straight punch. Kim saw that the bully was no longer a threat and confidently moved forward. The next bully decided to try his strength, but Kim threw the first punch. And to make sure that the enemy would pass out, he threw the second punch. One of the guys ran up to Kim from behind and made a fist and said, let's see how fast you are if I attack from behind. But the hero easily dodged the blow and stopped his fist near the opponent's face. The guy was so scared that he couldn't even say a word. Kim held his fist near his opponent's face and started to say, I gave you a chance to try your strength, but you knew who you were attacking. You were wrong if you thought you'd come to the girls' school and make a mess. And you all shouldn't have gotten in my way. Now, Kang Do, please repeat what you said. Kang Do threw out his cigarette and started to say you're a good fighter and you're so much like runner Kim Soo Hyun. But it's better if you don't tell me what to do. And I've already realized your level. It's about the same level as Huang Xian. After saying that, Kong Do ran up to Kim and started punching him with his fist. Kang Do remembered his last conversation with Huang Xian. When he asked him what kind of strength Kim Soo Hyun had, Hwan Sun started to say that if I fight him again, I'll win for sure. Kim Soo Hyun doesn't have much strength. He couldn't even break through my natural block. He's only good at pretending to lose and then attacking sneakily. But anyway, I can't relax because I already lost to him once when I got distracted. No matter how reckless you are and the skill level you possess, there's no way you can lose. Kim jumped up and used a spinning kick, and his foot hit the center of the attacker's face. Gang Du tried to keep his balance and thought that fat guy told me that Kim Soo Hyun was weak. A punch of that magnitude can't be considered weak, and now something strange is happening. The sudden boost allowed the hero to jump high. Kang Do raised his head up and thought he could fly. That look on his face really pisses me off. Kim used the power boost, and just as he planned, he hit the enemy in the nose with his fist. And when he added critical damage to the punch, the combination left the enemy with no chance. Hyun Dong happily raised his hands in the air and began to say, Sir, I knew you would quickly make order here. 
Yakuza stood next to him and smiled silently. Kang Do lay on the ground, stunned by the strong blow. His nose immediately swelled up and saliva flowed from his mouth. Kim, realizing that the bully was unable to continue the fight, began to say that you made me fight in front of the girls, and that's not nice. The girls looked at the hero in silence because they had never seen anyone so strong. Kim saw that the system sent information that the quest was completed and the silver card was rewarded. He looked at the girls and started to say, you're all right, little ladies. Now you won't be picked on by bullies. One girl bowed low and thanked her savior. The second girl took Seohu's hand and started to say, thank you again and we'll go. And when Kim turned around, he heard the girl continue to say, why are you looking at him like that? You've heard the rumors about Kim Soo Hyun eating the corpses of those he defeated. Kim thought, but I can hear everything. And when he turned his head, he saw one of the girls walking towards him. So Ha approached him and holding out her cell phone started to say, hey, maybe you can give me your phone number. Kim recognized the girl and started to say that you are a friend of my sister Diane. The friend started to say, so Ha, are you crazy? It's Kim Suchin himself. You know he's very violent. The other friend started to say, you know he kidnaps girls and ties them up too. Seo Ha looked at her friends and started to answer. I know what they say about him, but I'm very grateful to him. Kim looked down and started talking, but I don't even know what you're up to. Hai On Dong started to say, Sir, stop mumbling in this situation. It's better to say what you think. Kim looked at the girl and started to say, Then I'll leave you my number. Kang Do was lying on the ground not far away, started to say, Enjoy it while you can. You don't have long to live anyway. Yakuza came up and put his foot on the loser's chest and started to ask, What are you talking about? Kang Do slowly looked at Yakuza and started to say, you're the devil, Yakuza. I guess you heard about No. 5 in Eastern Gangbuk, whose name is Park Gong. You'll have a chance to meet him soon. As soon as Park Gong is done with Gu Hanju, he'll come here right away. The next action is in the Western District. Gu Hanju took off his jacket and started doing push-ups on the bar. Hanju started to say, go away, I need to practice. Park Gun started talking, and it's now called training when you lose to Kim Soo Hyun. Han Jae-ha sent me and told me to grab you and bring you to him, and if I bring you to him, Kim Soo-hyun will be next. That means you don't have to think about Gu Han-ju losing to Kim Soo-hyun anymore. Gu Han-ju jumped off the bar and with a lightning-fast single punch knocked his opponent down and choked him to the ground. Park Gong didn't even expect that the punch could be so incredibly powerful. He regretted coming and began to complain, saying, Han Jae-ha sent me to get you. Gu Hanju sat down beside the loser and began to talk. That's good, so it's going the way I thought it would. You're lucky this time because I needed an excuse to go with Kim Soo Hyun. The next scene takes place near an all-girls school in one of the high-rise buildings. The mother starts talking to her daughter. So, Ha, it's late, and why aren't you asleep? The girl starts to reply. I'm sorry, Mom, I didn't even notice how the time flew by. The mother looked into her daughter's room and continued to say, So, Ha, I know that you like books very much. You can read some more and go to bed. Sioha started to reply, thank you, you even made me feel embarrassed. As soon as her mother left the room, Yang Sioha, who was already 17 years old, pulled out a 19-plus book and continued reading. When Kim Suchin entered his apartment, he went straight to his room, took off his backpack and put it on the chair. After that, he lay down on the bed and couldn't stop thinking. After a few minutes, he said quietly, I won after all. Kim smiled and thought how I could beat two opponents in one day and even Han Jae Ha couldn't win with me. My enemy has a lot of sixes who always go with him. If I can beat them alone, I've only defeated Num 13. I can't do it alone. Maybe I need to learn from my enemy and recruit as many guys as possible. But first I need to figure out how to recruit team members. Right now I have Yakuza, Gu Hanju, and Lee Hyung Dong, and that's three people. I have one spot left, and who should I take? It has to be someone I can trust. I have to think carefully about my options. But I've used a lot of sneak peeks and never found anyone. The hero began to say I summon a cloud. After a few seconds, the cloud settled on the hero's legs. Kim continued to say cloud take the form of a human. The hero calmly watched as the cloud began to form the shape of a man. A few seconds later, Kim had a girl in his arms. He started to say cloud. I like everything, but please don't turn into her. Kim pushed the girl off his feet with his hand and continued to talk, almost hitting her. Go away from me. Cloud listened to me and better turn into Gu Hanja than my sister. The girl crawled across the bed without saying a word and sat down opposite Kim. 
Kim started to say, okay, whatever you want, we need to get started as soon as possible. After that, he held out his hand to the girl and continued to say, go to my team. The hero saw that the system highlighted the information that the main quest is completed and the recruitment of team members is also completed. The reward is one gold card. The girl calmly looked at Kim and shook his hand without emotion. Kim started to say, see how simple it is? I'm always thinking too much and making life difficult for myself. We just need to act and everything else will fall into place perfectly. The girl continued to look at Kim in silence. The hero continued to say, you know, such an obedient sister I like even more. Maybe you want to see what we won this time. Kim opened the gold card and started reading, you got a simple card called I am a team member, and now you can raise a team member. Look at all the characteristics of your teammates, and in the future you can pick a player and pump him up. You can also get a lot more information on how to nurture your teammates. Kim took another look at his team's stats and found it suspicious that the team members' characteristics were hidden. Kim tried to find useful information and thought about how to do it. Maybe if I fight, the others will grow. The system sent a message with the text want to know how to raise team members. Team members can only be nurtured with a nurture card, and you can get a nurture card with the help of a nurture quest. Kim thought we should wait for the nurture quest first, and I have a feeling it will be easier than the side quest. He looked at the copy of his sister, who was holding the map in her hand, and thought, why haven't I opened the map I got for the battle with Kang Do Hyok yet? Now I need to find out as soon as possible why I had to beat up a whole bunch of hooligans. The system highlighted the text that the map was being opened. Kim began to read. You have received an attack card called the Boxing Weave. You can now use Boxing Weave and your current rank of F technique. Kim looked at his sister's copy and started to say, you at least pretend to be interested but I'll show you my new punch anyway. After that, the hero used the boxing weave several times and liked it very much. It was something unusual. Kim wanted to continue using this punch, but saw that the system sent a message saying that a side quest had been created. He got curious and started reading the text, you must complete the boxing flower using the boxing hook, and the reward is one gold card. Kim started talking, and it turns out there are such side quests. And what else is the reward for completing the boxing flower? Maybe I should just get an attack card with a hook. It's too risky, but I think it's time to use the master card and I better get my act together sooner. A simple card appeared in front of the hero's eyes so he could combine and disassemble to get higher or lower order cards. Kim opened four bronze cards at once and started to say it's time to deal with the cards I'm not using now. I'm not going to use them anyway. He began to connect the cards that called where the elixir switch is and what it was. The system highlighted the information that a master card had been used. And as a result of combining four bronze cards, you get two silver cards. Kim started to say it's not that easy to do it all at once. By the way, I've never tried to split cards and I have a lot of silver cards. Maybe it's worth a try. The hero squeezed the gold card hard in his hands and wondered if I should take such a big risk. And after waiting for a long time, he started to say, maybe this would make a good card. The next day when Kim came to school, he was immediately informed that today was a very important assembly. The boys who had sworn to serve him much earlier had gathered in a secret room. When Kim and his friend Yakuza entered the room, they all bowed and congratulated him. Hyung Dong walked to the middle of the classroom and began to speak loudly. Ranner Kim Su Hyun and Devil Yakuza, you have demonstrated your strength in the Eastern Gang Book. Kim looked at Yakuza and started to ask, what is it that they are congratulating us on again? Yakuza started to reply, next time leave me out of it. Hyung Dong smiled and started to say, of course you should be congratulated because you were able to beat Kang Do Hek from East Gunbuk and now his territory is ours. Kim started to ask, what are these other three countries that you are pointing at with your pointer? Hyun Dong began to answer that there are three high schools in this area that Kang Do Hyuk was following and they are Sojin High School, Dojin High School, and Jogang High School. Thanks to your victory, all these schools are now connected to your Sion Bynum. Kim started to ask, that's not bad, but what do we do about Han Jae Ha? Since he has no power left, he'll come here to deal with it. Hyun Dong started to answer while we have time to rest because I've contacted Gangbuck South and made arrangements. Kim abruptly got up from his chair and began to speak. From now on, I'll ask you to elaborate. The next scene takes place in Gangbuk East. 
An unfamiliar guy came to the door and stopped. He didn't want to go inside the room. He went in and immediately announced that Park Gong and Kang Do Hyok had lost. Han Jae Ha silently took out a cigarette from his pack and lit it. The guy continued talking. It seemed like the schools that Kang Do Hyuk was watching had gone to Kim Soo Hyun. What are we going to do now if you just say so, because we're always ready to act? Han Jae Ha abruptly stood up on straight legs and started to say we need to go there right now. The guy started to reply, okay, sir, then I'll get everything ready. Suddenly, the door opened and a frightened guy ran into the room and started shouting, sir, we are in big trouble. South Gunbuck moved. Kang Seok found out that our guys lost the fight to Kim Soo Hyun. It looks like he's going to start a war, too. If this keeps up, we'll be attacked from the west and the south. What do we do now, sir? Han Jae Ha ordered to send number two to the west not to fight, but to hold them back because Kim Soo Hyun is weak. I can beat the western leader any time. But I have something important to do first. And I think Kang Seok is much more cunning and stronger, so I'll personally go to the south and deal with him. At that time in the western area, Kim looked at his comrade Hyon Dong and began to say, I didn't even think the enemy would surrender so quickly. The hero thought that the main enemy was still out of his league. All this time he has been getting stronger through quests and training, but it's not enough. Hyon Dong began to say, You sure you're not mad at me for making a deal with the South Gunbuck? Kim replied briefly, No. Hyon Dong continued to say, Since we've bought some time, can we sort out the inside? Kim started to ask, what do you mean? Let's get inside and what are you talking about? Are you suggesting to gather more people? Hyun Dong started to answer, that's one way too, but I'm talking about something else. Two girls who were walking by looked at Kim. The girl started to say, you heard about Kim Soo Hyun, that he doesn't flush water at the point when he goes to the bathroom. At that time, Hyung Dong continued to say that you've already expanded your territory and there might be some problems. I'm talking about the three schools that Kang Do Hak was in charge of. You're in charge of them now, and we don't know if they'll listen to you. There could be a riot at any moment. How about you personally clean up the mess? Kim saw that the system highlighted that an educational quest had been created. You must restore order in the three high schools of Sojin, Dojin, and Jogun. As a reward, you will receive three education cards of medium strength, speed, and stamina. You will also receive a random medium level attack card. The hero thought so. This is what this quest is all about, and thanks to it, I will be able to raise the boys. He looked at Hyun Dong and began to speak. I don't think they are able to cause us any more problems than we already have. I suggest we get right down to business. Why don't we go to Sojin High School and talk to the students and see what they think of us? Hyun Dong was surprised when you started to speak, but you were so confident in your decision right away. Look, sir, I think that girl is looking at you, and I think she's coming to us. Yang Soha hesitantly walked over and said hello. Kim started to say, you're that girl, and I've seen you somewhere before, but what are you doing here? Hyun Dong started to say, Sean Benim, how can you not remember? This is the girl you saved from the bullies. Seo Ha got a little red in the face and started to say, Diane and I made a deal today. Kim started to walk forward and said, sure, now I remember you're my sister's friend. Then have a good time, but don't go out too late. Seoha saw Kim walking by and replied shortly, Okay, but listen to me. Kim stopped and started to turn to the girl. Kim started to ask what is going on with you and why are you covering your face with your hands? The girl started to answer, but why aren't you answering my messages? I've texted you many times, but you don't answer. So I decided to come here to you and just ask you. Hyung Dong looked at Kim and started joking, sir. How could you not reply to a girl's message? You are a bad boy. Seoha took her hands away from her face. She was embarrassed, but she continued to ask. But you will answer me someday. Kim turned around and started to answer. I don't have much free time. I'll just have to get back to you sometime. I'll go by then. Seoha continued to stand at the same spot and looked towards Kim, who had left. She started to say this time he wasn't so nice. Maybe it's true what they say about him. Bek Chai Rin, who was standing around the corner, heard everything. After Kim left, Bek Chai Rin came out from around the corner and started to say, look at that jerk Kim Soo Hyun. The next scene takes place in the forest near Sojin High School. A group of guys were sitting comfortably on the grass. They were in a bad mood, so they were smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol. A guy started asking the others what we should do now that our leader Kang Do Hek had lost. That means we have to obey the Western gunbuck. 
The second guy started to say we have to obey this runner Kim Suchin, and he's so scary, and if I understand correctly, he's our boss now. The third guy who was sitting next to us eating chips started to say, you know what I mean, but what do you care who beats you? Jang Jin Su, number one at Sojin High School, was sitting on a stump nearby, listening to everything. He calmly lit up a cigarette and started to talk. Would you shut up already? Listen to what I think about this. We'll serve Han Jae Ha until the end. I'll kill that Kim Soo Hyun myself when he comes here. If you want to go after him too, I suggest you join his team. One of the guys looked at Jin Soo and said, Come on, we're just kidding around. It's just an idle conversation. A group of guys saw someone heading towards them. Kim stopped at the top of the road not far from the guys sitting there. He was breathing heavily and rested his hands on his knees to take a break. Kim looked at the boys and started to say, You are from Sojin High School. Why are you sitting in the forest like bandits? Jin Su saw that Kim was tired and decided to take advantage of the situation. He quickly ran up and began to strike with his fist. Kim noticed that his opponent was running towards him and started to dodge him. The hero took advantage of the twist and went under the attacker's arm. Jin Su started to say, Well, let's just say you managed to dodge my punch this time. Haiyan Dong started shouting, Sir, how could this brigand attack you? Then Haiyan Dong looked at Jin and continued to say, You're worse than my son Banim. Kim thought that since he had already attacked me, I should act and came close enough to use a hook that hit the opponent's ribs. Kim watched as his opponent flew away from the blow, but stayed on his feet. The hero thought that the hook was a good move and wondered if the bandit wanted to attack again. Kim remembered how happy he was when he got the attack card that allows him to use the boxing hook. Then Kim thought, I finally have that card. And how many times have I tried to get it? I've connected and disconnected cards many times using whatever I had in stock. I even spent high-value cards that I promised myself I wouldn't touch lately. Thanks to the boxing weave card and the boxing hook card, I managed to complete the quest called Boxing Flower. When Kim saw that the quest was completed, his happiness was unbounded. He knelt on the bed waiting for the reward of the boxing flower. The hero stopped thinking for a second when he saw that the bandit had decided to attack after all, and going out to meet the enemy, he gave a strong blow with his fist to his jaw. Kim then revealed his new attack card, which allows him to use the Dempsey Roll boxing move. The hero saw that his opponent had somehow managed to stay on his feet again. He thought this was the best opportunity to use the Dempsey roll, and a series of punches landed on the enemy's head. Haiyan Dong started yelling, This brigand is stronger than I thought, and why hasn't he succumbed yet? A group of guys who were sitting on the grass watched the fight fearfully. This time the hero decided not to leave any chance to his opponent, and struck again. Kim was also motivated by the thought of getting a new card. Kim saw the information that a new educational quest was starting. Jin was holding up well, but couldn't withstand such a strong series of blows and fell down in front of the hero's feet. Kim started to say this guy is not that strong. This fight looked a lot easier than my training. The guys who were sitting on the grass immediately kneeled down in front of Kim. One guy started to say we wanted to follow you from the beginning. But Jin told us not to, and he's really a bad man. Kim saw the information from the system that Sojin High School is in order. You should clean up Dojin High School and Jogang High School. Kim looked at Haiyan Dong and began to say it seems to be in order. Let's go to the next school. Haiyan Dong started to answer Sung Ba Nim. You look like a real gangster. I'm even a little scared. Half an hour later, our hero and his companion were already at Dojin High School. The superintendent of that school gathered the boys to welcome the new leader. The guy started to say thank you for taking care of our Dojin High School. We were just having a hard time because of the Eastern Ganbuk. Before he could leave the Dojin school grounds, Kim saw several guys running towards him. The main one who was running first started to say, We are from Jogang Technical High School, and we also like to be under your control. We just ask you not to raise the levies. Kim started to answer about that. You don't have to worry, I won't charge you any money. The guy started to say, I will tell everyone that a merciful king has appeared who will protect us from the bullies. Kim saw the information from the system that the order in the three high schools is completed, and now you get three education cards and one attack card. The hero opened the cards and began to read one card allows you to use force on a team member. 
two card allows you to apply speed to a team member. The three card allows you to apply stamina to a team member. And four, a random mid-level attack card allows you to use a random attack skill on any of the team members. Kim smiled and thought, finally, I can finally bring up the team. The following action takes place in the territory of West Ganbuk at Xianbei High School. One thought had been on Kim's mind since he was wounded. He now had the nurture cards, but he couldn't figure out who to apply them to. Kim once again opened all the characteristics of his team members and thought of making Gu Hanju a full warrior. But would I be able to control him? Maybe I should give everything to Lee Hyung Dong, but I don't feel like it. Kim looked at his best friend Yakuza, who was also standing by the urinal. I thought I'd better give it all to him because he's the weakest right now. Kim started asking how you were doing. Yakuza started to answer quietly, don't say anything. Kim thought, but is it right to make his best friend fight? If he gets hurt, I think my heart will burst. On the other hand, someday he'll have to fight over me anyway. First, I'll have to give him the power to protect him. The Yakuza started talking. I'm getting good at it now. Kim was determined to put everything into Yakuza. He opened the quest window and applied the nurture card to team member Yang Guk Cha. Yakuza still continued to stand by the urinal and look down. But suddenly he raised his head and started shouting, I did it, but what is this awesome effect? Kim started to say, since we've sorted out the three schools, then what we were worried about is completely taken care of correctly. Lee Hyung Dong was standing inside the restroom near the front door, holding fresh towels on his hand. He started to say everything exactly like this Sun Bainim, but I'm curious about something. Kim started to say, so share this information with me. Lee Hyung Dong started to say who the number one person in the North is. He wasn't even at the meeting. And if even Han Jae-ha and Kang Seok are afraid of him, I should definitely find out more about him to prepare myself. The biggest problem we have is that there's no accurate information about this guy. If we talk about the usual local leaders, we can judge them by their past. But there's no information about his past, only rumors of his incredible strength. Kim wiped his hands with a towel and started to say that there are such secret people, but we haven't met him. He might be a normal guy. Yeon Dong started to say it's true that there are rumors about you too, but you're normal. Kim headed for the exit and started to say Yakuza and I should go and get ready for class. Bye. Yakuza started to say I probably won't sleep tonight. Kim came out of the bathroom and started to say, don't say that or you might be misunderstood. Yeon Dong walked out of the restroom into the hallway and thought about how things have settled down in the new districts. But until when will Sun Banim have to deal with everything himself? There will be more districts and schools under us now. He can't intervene personally every time. A passing teacher started to say Hyon Dong is still in school, to which Hyon Dong started to reply, Sorry, teacher, I'm on my way out. Hyon Dong went back to his own thoughts. Seon Banim will no longer be able to pay attention to internal affairs. We need someone who can take care of the internal affairs, and it must be a very thorough person. Who should we entrust with such an important job since everyone thinks that Sun Benim is some kind of trash? Girls are usually very meticulous. As the girls passed by, they noticed the guy's gaze and thought he was up to something. Hyun Dong thought, wait a minute, I think we have the right girl. He saw Beck Sharon walking down the hallway with two girls. Her friend started asking, what's the success of your Instagram popularity? Beck Sharon started to answer that you just have to be beautiful. The second girl started to say, but we're beautiful too, and maybe you can tell us how you stay popular for so long. Hyun Dong thought that there was a slight spark between Kim Soo-hyun and Baek Jae-rin. If they start dating, she could take over internal affairs. Baek Charon started to reply to her girlfriends, if you want me to teach you how to be freaking cute, that's the secret. Hyun Dong kept looking at the girls and thinking that if he could get them together, it would be a peaceful time. He sat outside the classroom for the whole lesson waiting for recess. When the lesson was over, Kim came out of the classroom and Beck Che Rin also came out. Hyun Dong immediately approached them and suggested they have some fun. Beck Che Rin started to say what it meant to have fun. Hyun Dong started to say that we can become friends and get to know each other. How about we all go to the pool house together? Beck Charon came closer and slapped Hyon Dong's face with her palm. After that, she started yelling, You've lost your fear. Don't act like we're friends like that. Why do I have to go there with you? You know, Hyung Dong, it's true what they say. 
You only have bad thoughts in your head. Why don't you tell me what your tricks are? Hyun Dong took his face and started talking about how hard it hit me and I felt sick. I just wanted to spend more time with you guys. Kim felt sorry for Hyun Dong and started to say, if she's being too rough with you. You just suggested we go on a vacation, and you have to punch me in the face because of that. Hyun Dong started to say, I think it's because of that pool house. You know, there are a lot of pictures on social media of pool houses, and lately school kids often rent them and have fun together. She loves social media, and I thought she'd like my idea. Beck Charon, who was just leaving, stopped and looked at Hyung Dong and started saying you deserved it, and how can high school students go there alone? Hyun Dong started to say I'm sorry it didn't work out and I got punched in the face for it. Kim smiled and started to say, you know, I like your idea and I don't think you should give up so easily. Hyun Dong looked upset and started to say since she doesn't want to do it, I'll have to give it up. Who knew she'd get so angry? When Hyun Dong was left on the hallway by himself, he thought maybe Beck Che Rin was right that I have the wind in my head. If I was smarter, I would have thought of some other plan. Hyun Dong felt someone put a hand on his shoulder. The Yakuza started to say why you didn't consult me. You talk a lot about nothing, but such an important matter should always be discussed with me. The next scene takes place in a small store in the Western District. Beck Sharon heard someone entering the store and started to say, Welcome. Two girls came into the store and started saying, We're here to see you. Beck Charon started to say you scared me and you should have told me you were coming. The girlfriend started to say we heard that Kim Soo Hyun rented a house with a pool. You're coming too. Beck Che Rin started to answer, but I said no and I don't want to go. The girlfriend kept saying, come with us, it'll be more fun, and if we don't like it, we can always leave. The other friend started to say, but I've already checked it out and it's a very popular place. I mean, we need to get more followers. We'll go and have fun on our own and just use the guys. Beck Sharon started to talk, but I promised my aunt I'd be at the register before she got back. Okay, I'll go with you guys. I'm just going to make one phone call and settle this. Her friends ran up and started hugging her. One girl started to say, I'm going to have tons of followers. The other girl thanked her and asked her to dress nicely. Beck Sharon started to say, then I have one more question to solve. The girlfriend started to ask what other question just pack up and go. Beck Charon started to answer, Do you want to go shopping with me? I need to buy a bikini. Kim met up with Yakuza, and a few minutes later, Hyun Dong walked up to them. Kim started talking. Well, now we have almost the whole team together. But you know, I have a weird feeling. We're definitely going to that pool house today. Hyun Dong started to say that's right, Sun Bayanim. And didn't you say before that you wanted to go with us? Kim started to say, What are you talking about? I just didn't want to see you give up so easily. Hyun Dong looked surprised and started to answer. But you talk too much, sir. Yakuza looked at Kim and started to say, You know what I'm curious about? First you said that we have a team almost complete and we can go out and have fun. And now we have Gu Hanju here. I'm kind of embarrassed that he's coming with us. Kim started to answer, You know I was just asking, but I didn't think he'd really want to come with us. Yakuza looked at Gu Hanja and started to say you should learn to dress properly. Maybe you should take off that black shirt or the girls will think we're going to a funeral. Hyun Dong looked around and started talking and it looked like they were coming. Look, we're going to have fun with such beautiful girls today. Kim started to say, why aren't they wearing bikinis? Yakuza walked up to Lee Hyun Dong and started to say, you didn't tell me anything about Gu Hanju coming with us either. Hyun Dong started to reply, sorry if you are uncomfortable, I can ask him to take off his shirt. Kim turned on the peak and started looking at the girls. He really wanted to see if everyone was wearing a bikini. Beck Sharon walked up to Kim and slapped him. She started to say, don't look at my bag like that. The system highlighted the text of the Mapmaster request, successfully registered the first punch. The next action takes place at the scene of a fight between East Gonbuk and South Gonbuk. A guy quickly runs down the street and starts shouting, sir, I was told that West Gangbuk has moved. Kang Siok stood there wearing only his pants and all the guys present kneeled in front of him. A guy ran closer and continued to say the leader of the Western Gangbuck has established order in the three schools that used to belong to the Eastern Gangbuck. Kang Siok started talking. It seems like this Kim Soo Hyun isn't so stupid. Kang Siok started to ask if they're hunting the Eastern Gunbuck now. The guy started to answer. Not really, I was told they went on vacation. 
Kang Siok started to say, I don't know why they're doing this now, but if I go to the East Gunbuck, the West Gunbuck should help and be there for me. Maybe you managed to find out where they went, the guy started to answer. I was told they went to the pool house. When Kim saw everyone gathered, he asked if everyone was ready. Now let's go out and have fun like we planned. The next action takes place in Gangbuck North in the pool house. Half an hour later, Kim and his team were already there. Kim looked at Hyun Dong and started to say, So this is the pool house. I hope you made the entry. Hyung Dong started to reply, Of course I did, and you can go inside right away. Kim commented that it was good that we had arranged everything quickly. Hyung Dong asked to pat him on the head for a job well done. Kim reasoned that maybe some other time. The Yakuza felt uncomfortable with Gu Hanju standing behind him and looking at him. Beck Sharon looked at her friends and suggested that we split up first, because we had to unpack and change. The girlfriend started to reply, Let's go to the girls' room. Kim stood beside the girls, silently looking at them and smiling. Kim stood next to the girls, looking at them silently and smiling at them. Beck Sharon, who was walking with the girls, stopped abruptly and turned around and hit Kim in the face with her palm. Then she started to say, Why are you following us? The system highlighted the message that the card master please successfully registered the second hit. Kim looked at the girl and asked why you were hitting me. I thought we'd be in the same room. Beck Charan started to answer, I understood your plan. You wanted to spy on us. And what reason do we have to sleep in the same room? Kim took his face reddened and started to answer, It's just that times are different now. Young Dong didn't hesitate to walk up to Kim and started to say, Son Benim, let's go quickly. We're only here for two days, not much time. Beck Charin looked at Kim and started to say, You better pay attention to the guy's appearance. Why did Hyung Dong show up to the party in his school uniform? Anyway, we have to go now. See you later. Hyung Dong walked around the room looking at the large windows. He reported that there was a lot of light and the atmosphere was perfect. Someone from the street was already watching our team. Three guys and one girl were quietly watching the action across the street in the pool house. One guy started to say these guys came from Ganbuck West and they probably just wanted to have some fun. As far as I know, They've been making a lot of noise in their neighborhood lately. Now they want to come to northern Ganbuck, too. The second rice guy, the strongest of the group, lit a cigarette and started to say, If you see one in a black shirt, it must be Gu Hanju. The third guy hugged his girlfriend and said that Beck Sharan was also there. Then the guy looked at his girlfriend and continued to say, But you are much prettier, honey. The girl started to reply, I see that stupid Beck Sharan on Instagram every day. The two guys looked at the biggest among them and chattered like parrots about what we should do now and if we should report upstairs. The red-haired guy started to answer what kind of report you're thinking about. The guy started to reply, but we have to do something or just leave it as it is. The red-haired guy started to have a plan and suggested that we deal with them ourselves. Then the red-haired guy threw away his cigarette and explained to his companions that, first of all, you have to show your good side in front of them. Two girls jumped into the pool with their clothes on and were having fun. One of them picked up her phone and started taking pictures. Then they moved to another corner of the pool and continued taking selfies. The girl who was holding the phone in her hand started to say, Look at this picture. It turned out really well. Whether to post it or not, say it quickly. The friend looked at it and started to say, it's crazy how beautiful we are. Of course, put it up. The girlfriend was fooling around and shouted happily that now we were going to be celebrities. The second girl hit her phone and started to say, don't splash water into my phone. The friend started to answer, who cares, because we're going to be popular. Maybe you want to take more pictures when Beck Sharon gets here. The girl started to answer, 300,000 photos we took and finally we got one decent one. By the way, did you see how beautiful and perfect Gu Hanju's body is? The girlfriend started to say, yes, he looks really good, but did you look at the other guys? The girl snickered and started to answer, and there was someone else. You know, I just had a crush on Gu Hanja, and if he had a good personality, I'd go out with him. The girlfriend started to say, what the hell are you talking about? You should call Beck Charon. After a few minutes, the girlfriends heard the doors open, and they swam closer to see who had come to them. The girl looked at Beck Sharan in surprise and asked, Well, you finally came, and what were you doing there for so long? 
The girlfriend started asking why you came in a bikini. Beck Sharon started to answer something wrong. I can't understand what's going on with you two. When the girls got out of the pool, Beck Sharon came closer and continued to say, didn't we agree to wear bikinis together? The girlfriend laughed out loud and started to reply. Didn't you see my message? We said we weren't going to wear bikinis. What bikinis would we be wearing? We're high school girls. Beck Sharon turned around and silently started to walk away. The friend kept laughing and started asking Beck Sharon where you were going, and if you were wearing a bikini, you should take a picture. Without even turning her head, Beck Sharon shouted that she would not be photographed with the traitorous women and would not go anywhere else with them. After Beck Sharon had changed, everyone gathered on the first floor in a large room. Beck Sharon was still angry. She sat down on the floor and started to say, You think I'm crazy? And decided to show you my body? Hyun Dong was bitching about how they hadn't even thought about it, and if this was really what we came out here for. Kim smiled and said that if Beck Chirin didn't wear a bikini, then he would go home. After the company had eaten a delicious meal, Beck Charon started talking about how we ate everything and who was going to clean it up. Yakuza looked at Hyun Dong and asked if you could clean up the place. Hyun Dong nodded his head and said, I understand Yakuza Sunbae. Kim looked around and asked where Gu Hanju was. Hyun Dong replied that he went for a run after he ate. Kim started to say he's so fit, but girls don't like muscular guys like him. The girl continued, We're all going to die anyway. So why bother exercising? We are leaving tomorrow and he decided to spend time on training. The girl who was sitting next to him started to say, Look, it's night outside the window and we're really only here for two days. Beck Sharon made herself comfortable on the couch and asked what we should do now. It's very boring here and can we go home now? The friend started to say Beck Sharon had taken up her job again and she was the one who was the happiest of all. Hyun Dong thought that he couldn't let the girls go home because then his plan would fail. He started to say, if you're so bored, I suggest we play a game and whoever loses shaves off their eyebrows. Beck Charon looked at Hyun Dong and asked what kind of game you want us to play. Then she looked at her friends and went on to say he thinks he's the smartest because he doesn't have any eyebrows. But I'm curious about the game. Kim looked at the girl and suggested to start with a simple game of some kind. Beck Chirin started to answer, but I don't know any game, and if I don't like it, I'll just go to bed. After five minutes, Beck Charon yelled that Kim Soo Hyun had lost and accused him of taking a wrong turn. Kim started to justify that it was his turn and that he had done everything right. Beck Charon insisted that Kim was cheating and threatened that if he continued, he would have to go to teacher Han Muchol. Kim leaned closer to Beck Charon and spoke monotonously. As you know, the loser shaves his eyebrows. Beck Charon started to reply, Kim, you're the one who lost, and you're the one who has to shave off your eyebrows. Kim started to say, you didn't even show me your bikini, and you demand I do this. Hendon watched with his eyes squinted, and a plan seemed to be brewing in his head. The braid girls looked at Beck Charon. They really wanted her to lose because they were hoping to see her without eyebrows. Beck Charon took the shaving machine in one hand, and with the other hand, she caught Kim by the neck and threatened to shave off your eyebrows. Hyun Dong started saying, Sun Benim, it seems like one of you two lost. Then Hyun Dong made a mysterious look and went on to say, I suggest that just the two of you play one more game together. Beck Charon insisted that Kim Soo Hyun lost and said that she would not play this game again. Hyun Dong calmly walked over to the closet and opened the doors. After that, he said that he had invented a very interesting game, and if you agreed to play it, everyone here would know 100% who had won. Kim came to an empty closet and couldn't understand how he could play with the closet. Beck Sharon also came up to him and started to say, But what is there to play with? Hyung Dong smiled and said that the game is very simple. You go in together and whoever comes out first loses. Then we knock the loser's eyebrows off and that's it. Kim looked at Hyun Dong and started to say, if the point of the game is to keep whoever stays in the closet the longest in the closet, then it's too easy for me. Hyun Dong added, you don't just have to go in there. You will need to hold hands and be patient until one person gives up. Kim started to ask if they had to hold hands. Beck Che Rin also objected that she didn't want to hold Kim's hand. Hyun Dong made a serious face and said that if they didn't want to follow the rules, then the two of them would have to shave off their eyebrows. 
The girl looked at Beck Sharan and started saying that if there was nothing between you two, it was okay to hold hands or if you had any feelings for him. The girl also smiled and said that it was just a game. If she's shy, there's something between them after all. The girl looked at Beck Sharon and went on to say that she could always say no and everyone else would just pretend she had won. Kim looked at the girls and couldn't understand why they were talking to Beck Sharon like that. They had smiles on their faces, but it was still an overwhelming atmosphere. Beck Sharon took Kim's hand and started talking about how she never loses and that he should have thought carefully before starting a game with her. Kim climbed into the closet holding the girl's hand and began to reply that he was very patient, and now time would tell who was right. Young Dong walked over to the closet and closed the doors. He announced that the game had now begun and the door must be closed. Hyun Dong thought that it was all for the sake of West Gunbuck. Kim stood there all tense and began to say there is very little light and why is your hand so cold in the house? Meanwhile, Yakuza went out of the house to the summer terrace for some fresh air. The Yakuza thought that while the youngsters were having fun, it would be good for him to take a little walk. He started talking about Su Hyun and how he'd grown up so much. Yakuza could not accept his appearance because he always scares people away from him. He was a little jealous because all the girls watched Kim with interest. The guys who had been watching the pool house all day saw an opportunity and immediately approached Yakuza. When Yakuza saw three guys coming at him at a fast pace and just stopped, he realized there was no point in running. The red-haired guy stopped at arm's length and started saying what you're muttering under your breath. Tell us your name and you're the Yakuza devil. Beck Sharon continued to stand silently. She sank into her thoughts and turned her head to the side. Kim couldn't stand still. He shuffled from foot to foot, then lifted Beck Sharon's hand and looked at it. Kim planted his fingers a little harder and asked, Your hand is already wet, and why you are going to lose so much? The girl started to answer that she didn't know why, and that his hand was wet too. Kim was talking about having seen it in a movie before. Beck Sharon started asking with interest what exactly he had seen. Kim started to reply that I think the movie was called Ranabel, and there were also people in the closet. Beck Shireen had no idea what he was talking about. Kim looked straight ahead and suddenly saw that the system had sent information that a quest had been created. Then he looked at the girl and went on to say, You know, my eyes have gotten used to the darkness and I can see you very well now. Beck Sharon couldn't understand why he was looking at her like that and started to reply that she was getting used to him already. Kim pressed himself against the girl and couldn't take his eyes off her beautiful eyes. Beck Chae-Rin started to say, Kim Soo Hyun, you're hugging me now. Kim saw a side quest window that said he had to lose Beck Sharon and come out of the closet. As a reward, he would receive one silver card. Kim immediately leaned away from the girl and thought about just coming out of the closet because the reward was not bad. Beck Sharon didn't know why Kim had shuffled off to his corner. The girl didn't understand what was going on and went on to say, you know, it's so hot in here, you could go crazy. Kim kept thinking that it was very easy to complete the quest and get the map. He kept looking at the girl and didn't want to do the quest, because only now he felt happy. Beck Charon was hot and adjusted her shirt. Afterwards, she asked Kim not to look at her like that. Kim immediately shifted his gaze to the closet wall and made the excuse that they were so close and he just couldn't help but stare. Beck Charon furrowed her eyebrows and started to say that he should try and at least do something about it. Kim liked that they were locked in the closet, but what could he do in this situation? He started saying, you don't look so bad. You don't have any pain. Kim saw that the girl's whole body was already wet and even her t-shirt was glued on. He wondered why the girl was sweating so much because it wasn't a water park here. Kim liked to hold the girl's hand and by that time it was already hot. Kim started to say, I wonder if there is any food left or if our comrades have already eaten it all. Beck Charon couldn't understand how anyone could think about food now and said briefly, you must be out of your mind and stop holding me, let's just let go of my hands. Kim started to respond, but we have to follow the rules and hold hands. I can't stand people who break the rules in the game. Beck Charon squeezed his hand hard and started yelling at him to come out of that closet. Kim said that if he came out first, he would tell everything. Beck Charon started talking about how there was nothing to tell him. Kim continued to insist that he would not come out and said that he did not want to shave his eyebrows. 2087.
The girl began to talk in a quiet voice about how she could draw eyebrows and promised him that she would draw them even prettier. Kim looked at Beck Sharon and asked him to be patient. He didn't understand what was happening again. When Kim saw the girl huddled against the back wall looking very sad, he thought something was probably wrong. He heard the girl breathing heavily and started to ask if you were in pain. Beck Charon whispered that she was fine, but the look on her face made it clear that she was not. Kim offered to kiss, to which the girl asked him to be quiet. Then Kim put his free hand on his chest and started to say, You have to tell me what's going on with you. 2091. And I'm ready to hear everything. Beck Sharon replied that she couldn't be in a confined space and that after one incident she was afraid to stay home alone. Kim looked surprised and asked if you were claustrophobic, but you don't even look claustrophobic. The girl started to say that claustrophobia was not that serious, but that she had been attacked once. Kim started to say, but when you were attacked, nobody told me anything like that. You know I would have protected you. Beck Sharon explained that it was a long time ago, so he doesn't know anything and that she was very badly abused. Kim thought it was some kind of devious plan and asked her to stop making up stories. But the girl insisted that it was true and that it all started in middle school. She started telling me that all the kids were saying that she had a cheeky look. When I went to the cafeteria for lunch, my food was often doused with yogurt and I would end up hungry. Then bullying became fashionable. There was a time when they locked me in a closet and left. They started to make fun of me even more when they found out I was scared. Since then, I can't stay in a dark and narrow place for long. Beck Sharan paused and thought, why would I tell a stranger and maybe he doesn't care as much as everyone else? The girl looked sadly at Kim and began to say that she didn't think that they would sit in the closet for so long and that she had agreed to this game for nothing. At that moment, Kim began to realize that deep down, the girl was not what everyone thought she was. Kim remembered that horrible day at school when he was bullied by Chang Dong and how Beck Charine caught the bully's arm, saving him from another punch. Kim also recalled the situation when the whole school was looking for him and Yakuza. Kim realized why Beck Sharan had helped him then, because she had been in the same bad situation once. He announced that he would be the first to come out of the closet. Beck Sharan asked why he decided to lose. Kim didn't know what the girl was going through before. Now he felt sorry for Beck Sharin and started saying that he should have told her right away. I believe what you said because times are so tough now and it must have been hard for you. You're also afraid that bad things might come back, and that's why you treat people so coldly. You don't have to be afraid of telling me everything because we can agree that it's our little secret. Beck Charon started to say that she felt much better, and maybe it would be better to let the problem go and tell her friends. She looked at Kim and started asking why he wouldn't come out of the closet. Kim reported that the door was locked, and how could they lock us in here if there wasn't even a lock on the door? Beck Sharon screamed hysterically and quickly opened the door for us. Kim put his shoulder against the door and started shouting, It's not funny, Hai An Dong, if you don't open the door. I won't forgive you because I'm runner Kim Soo Hyun. Kim looked at Beck Chai Rin and continued to say that it seemed like we were the only ones left in this room. If Hyung Dong was here, he would have opened the door. We'll have to wait for a while. Two rivulets of tears immediately rolled from Beck Sharan's eyes. She started to say, but what are we going to do now? And how could they all do that and just leave? They left us alone and now we're going to sit here until we die. Kim saw that the system had highlighted the information that the bandwidth overrun had been used. He then smashed the double closet door with one strong blow and ran out into the room shouting, I told you I was runner Kim Soo Hyun. The system highlighted the information that the quest was completed. Kim stopped in the middle of the room and continued to say there's a limit to jokes. Or did you think we were going to sit there forever? Kim thought about why his arm hurt so much and looked at his fist. He started to say because of that joker Lee Hyun Dong, I skinned my fist. Beck Che Rin quietly walked up behind him and touched Kim's sweater. Then the girl started to say, You know, Kim Soo Hyun, I used to think you were just a loser. But now everything has changed, and I realize that you're a normal guy. But according to the rules of the game, you have to shave off your eyebrows, and I'll draw you new and beautiful eyebrows, as promised. Kim didn't even turn his head and started to answer. You know, Beck Sharon, to be honest, I didn't do it just for you. I'm actually glad I broke that closet. 
I had a hard time being in there, too, because he started reacting. Beck Charon looked out from behind Kim's shoulder and wondered who had started the reaction. The girl repeated the question, but Kim stood silent. She imagined what he was saying and immediately blushed and felt ashamed. The girls who were sitting in the same room started crying and apologizing to Beck Charon. A friend told me that Hyung Dong had put a mop between the handles of the closet so they couldn't get out, and he ordered them not to open the door until he came back. The other friend started saying that they didn't even know Beck Charan was claustrophobic, and that she had been bullied in middle school. Beck Charan asked them to stop talking about it and threatened them that if they did it again, they would be dead. Kim laughed out loud and started talking about how if they did that again, he wouldn't forgive them. The girlfriend looked at Kim and then looked at Beck Charon and started asking why he was so happy about what you were doing in the closet. Kim said that he hated his eyebrows as it was. The girl smiled and reassured Kim that it was even better and it was good that you had shaved them off. Kim thought that he was very tired today and the end of their journey had already come. Suddenly the door opened and Hyung Dong ran into the room. He was very frightened and started shouting, Sun Banim, we have a problem. Everyone in the room looked at Hyun Dong in surprise. Kim immediately stood up and began to ask what kind of problems there might be at this late hour. Breathing heavily, Hyun Dong told me that Yakuza Sombe had been taken away by three guys, the ones from Gangbuk North, and it seems they were waiting for him to be alone. Kim calmly started to ask if these were the three guys who were at the entrance when we got here. Hyung Dong replied briefly that that was correct. That's when Kim pulled the barrette out of his hair and asked to leave it alone. Hyun Dong objected, saying, But sir, we can't leave our comrade in distress. Bek Chae Rin looked at Kim and said, You must be crazy to go save him right now. But Kim insisted and made it clear to everyone that Guk Cha was not the same as before. At that time, Yakuza stood silently as usual. He was surrounded by three guys who were laughing loudly and saying mean things about him. The red-haired guy, the biggest one among them, started saying, look at that bespectacled guy. He looks like a regular loser. He's afraid to even look at us, and all he does is shake with fear. Maybe it's just that we're so cool that everyone's afraid and runs away. Then the second guy pressed his finger on the Yakuza's forehead and went on to say that they had been told about the western gunbuck devil, but it didn't seem to be him. The third guy started saying that it had to be the Yakuza. He laughed loudly and slapped Yakuza on the nose. The guy didn't believe what everyone was saying and reassured his comrades that all the rumors were false. The guy who was standing next to us started answering what we expected from Gunbuck West. The western neighborhood was always so defenseless, but as long as they didn't come to us, we didn't touch them. The red-haired guy walking forward pushed his companions away and started talking but if they've already come to us, we should mess with them a little bit. And while we're talking to this loser here, time is passing and we still have to catch Gu Hanja. It's to our advantage that this goggle-eyed guy didn't run away. We just finish him off, and there will be one less enemy in West Ganbuk. After saying that, the red-haired guy immediately started punching with his fist. The Yakuza saw a big, pumped-up guy run up to him and make a fist. The Yakuza was paralyzed with fear, and he closed his eyes and couldn't even move. But Yakuza thought about the fact that all his life he had been bullied so cruelly that he even had to skip school so that no one would see his bruises. The bullying only stopped thanks to his friend Kim, who was always willing to help. At the time, Kim was in the pool house. He quietly opened the quest window and thought if you didn't hesitate, you could become a real Yakuza. I put the nurture card in you, didn't I? Kim saw that the random nurture card had activated and the system highlighted the information that when used, the team member could apply the military martial arts skill system. At the last moment, Yakuza opened his eyes and saw a fist flying at his face. With a sharp ducking of his head, he managed to avoid the blow. After that, Yakuza's right fist automatically delivered four precise blows. It happened so fast that the red-haired boy didn't even realize what had happened. A series of hard blows threw him backwards and he started to fall. His fellow hooligans watched what was happening, and when they saw that the redhead was lying on the ground and did not move, they simply went into a frenzy. Yakuza looked at his hands and couldn't believe that he had beaten his opponent so easily. He thought about the fact that his fear had completely disappeared somewhere. The body suddenly started moving on its own and it seemed really cool. The guy started yelling, Changshak. Get up quickly and help us deal with this glasses guy. 
The other guy got into a fighting stance and through his teeth said, Can't you see he knocked out Chang Xiaok? And I think this bespectacled guy was pretending to be weak on purpose. Yakuza thought it was me pretending to be weak. But if you think about it, I've never had a good fight in my life. Maybe I should learn to stand up for myself. After that, Yakuza walked towards the hooligans and started asking if you were scared and if you weren't going to fight me. The bully clenched his fists hard and quietly said he was really strong. The Yakuza continued to speak. You were bullying me just a few minutes ago, and now you're afraid of me. Deep down, Yakuza always knew he was strong, but when it came to a situation like this, he always backed down. Now he was determined to put an end to the bullying once and for all. Yakuza looked seriously at the two guys and provoked them by saying that the Yakuza devil from the Western Gunbuck would teach them a new way to breathe. These words made the guys very angry. The guy looked at his comrade and started to say that this little fat man thinks he can scare us so easily. Comrade started to answer, don't mind him, he probably read comic books. And our job is to show him what the guys from Gunbuck North are capable of. The hooligans saw the Yakuza stop and decided to attack him from both sides. The guy who ran first started yelling since when does a regular loser call himself the devil? This time Yakuza wasn't afraid at all. He confidently lunged forward, and with his right hand he landed three accurate punches. The first blow landed in the stomach. The second hit to the chest, and the third hit to the face finally restored the attacker to his senses. By the expression on the attacker's face was to give away the pain and anger of the guy realized that there was nothing he could do, and this was the end for him. He fell to the ground without control. Yakuza saw that his opponent was no longer a threat and started to say, why I have to teach you everything. He saw out of the corner of his eye that the other guy was striking from behind, but it was too late. The guy slammed his fist into Yakuza's face at breakneck speed and started saying, stop showing off. You think you're the smartest guy here. Where did you come from? This is Ganbuk North, and we humiliate outsiders like you every day. You can't get away with it now because I know you're a loser by the look on your face. Yakuza was hurting as much as before, but he realized that if he stopped now, he would have to live in humiliation again. He started to say, I should probably teach you how to breathe in a new way too. After that, he immediately adopted a fighting stance and struck a series of devastating blows. At the same time, his opponent was also throwing a second strike, but had no chance to dodge. Yakuza was more in control than ever. Thanks to his precise technique, he calculated every centimeter of where his fist would land. The attacker fell to the ground with his mouth open in pain. Yakuza returned to his fighting stance and concentrated his gaze on his defeated opponent. And when he realized that the fight was over, he said goodnight to all his enemies and informed them that they had now met the devil from the Western Ganbuk. After that, Yakuza relaxed and thought it was a good debut. But the most important thing is that for the first time in his life, he was able to fight back against bullies. Yakuza liked the feeling of victory so much that he spent the whole ride back thinking about the fact that when Yakuza returned to the pool house, Hyung Dong immediately started asking how he was able to single-handedly take everyone down. And if that's really true, he's awesome. Yakuza sat on the windowsill and talked about how he didn't want to fight. But there was no other way because he couldn't put everyone here in danger. Hyung Dong repeated like a parrot several times that they had ladies to protect. The girls came over and happily praised Yakuza for fighting for them. The girl asked Yakuza not to worry so much about them next time. Kim looked at his friend and thought that he was embarrassed that he was the only one who had gotten stronger, but now he didn't have to worry about Yakuza. Kim was wondering when Yakuza's C rank potential would activate. At that time, Yakuza looked out the window and asked Hyung Dong to bring water as soon as possible. Beck Charon stood up abruptly and told all the guys to go to their rooms. She looked at Yakuza unhappily and started to say, what kind of water are you looking at the time we're going to bed? The girlfriend said they still had pictures to take. The guys immediately headed towards the exit. Hyung Dong bowed low and monotonously, said it was a pity we were only here for two days, but it couldn't be helped. Good night to you. The girl started to take off her shirt and asked if everyone had brought comfortable clothes. Beck Sharan replied that she had packed the valise earlier and had taken care of all the necessities. Kim reported that he had only brought a t-shirt. 
Beck Sharon immediately walked up to Kim and slapped him in the face with the palm of her hand. She started saying, you are some kind of pervert, and why are you still in our room? The system highlighted the information that the host card please register one punch. Kim then headed for the exit and made the excuse that he wanted to stay just in case, but Beck Sharon insisted he leave. Kim was sad, but he had to leave the room, and as he breathed in the fresh air, he thought about the end of their journey. He found it strange that it was so quiet outside. The hero thought that since they had come to the territory of Ganbuk North, they would probably have to fight guys from that area. But Yakuza said the guys he fought weren't from there. On the way to his room, Kim wondered where Gu Hanju was. At that time, Gu Hanju was waiting somewhere in the northern Ganbuk territory. He had his hands in his pockets and was staring confidently forward. A shadow flashed on the dark, narrow street, and Gu Hanju saw a guy dressed in a hooded sweater stealthily walk up to him. The guy said hello and said sarcastically, It's been a long time since I've seen you. Gu Hanju calmly started to say, You must have missed me, and that's why you called me. The guy started talking about how he was out for a walk, and just out of curiosity, he decided to meet up. But Gu Hanju interrupted him, saying that they had just come to rest and didn't plan on causing trouble. The hooded guy asked Gu Hanju not to even think about the northern gun buck. Gu Hanju explained that tomorrow they would leave and everything would be back to normal. But the guy started getting closer and talking about how he doesn't like to repeat himself. The stranger put his hand on Gu Hanju's shoulder and explained that he had left the western gun buck alone only to run them over at any time. At that time, Gu Hanju looked away. He was offended to hear such words, but he looked unable to solve this problem right now. The hooded guy announced that he had something else important to say. When Gu Hanju peeked under the hood of the guy standing across from him, he saw a bright light shining in his left eye. The number one person in North Gunbuk asked him to never look away from me again, and second, when talking to me, to take your hands out of your pockets. The action takes place in the territory of Western Ganbuk. Kim returned to his home and entered the apartment, happy to announce that he had arrived. My mother started to say it was hard to go somewhere with an overnight stay, but tell me about it. Kim talked about how it was probably better to go for one day only and without an overnight stay. Sister Diane came up and started asking if it was really like the pictures on Instagram. Kim went to his room and his mother went on to say that I thought you would never have any friends, but you even go on mini trips. Kim replied briefly that he could hear everything. But the mother went on to ask me if it was just me, or if you really don't have eyebrows and I was wondering where to share them. Kim put the backpack and the stacks in his room on the floor and answered that he lost the eyebrows to his friends in sports. Mother couldn't do anything about it. She asked Kim to change his clothes and take a shower. Kim lay down on his bed and thought about how the trip had exhausted him more than the last fight. Kim remembered breaking open the cabinet and getting the silver card now he would have to open it. He wondered if the card was worth losing. Wasting no time, he opened the card and began to read about how the Starper action card would increase the probability percentage. He eyed the card suspiciously, but realized there was no way to return the card and get his eyebrows back. So Kim hoped it was a good card. The following action takes place on the west side of the neighborhood in a small one-story house. The Yakuza returned to his home and calmly informed his parents that he had arrived. It was already late in the evening. The father, dressed in a robe, immediately went out to meet his son. He walked over to Yakuza and took the bags. His father put his hand on Yakuza's shoulder and started to say, you've been gone for two days, and I hope nothing bad happened to you. Yakuza was unsure if they had anything to talk about. His father asked him not to stall and to tell him right away. Yakuza replied briefly that he had been in a fight. The father looked nervously at his son, his expression showing that he was very worried. Yakuza began to elaborate, saying that during the fight my body moved on its own and I felt as if something inside me had awakened. I still don't know what's happening to me. Tell me the truth, father. You are definitely an ordinary employee of the company. Father hesitantly started to answer that he was indeed a regular employee of the company. Then he looked down and started to talk about how honestly... Suddenly, the mother came up and hit the father in the shoulder with her hand. She started saying, why are you talking nonsense? You should go and do something useful. Afterwards, she immediately apologized and called everyone to the table for dinner. 
The following action takes place on a high school campus in West Gunbuck. Two girls were talking about how Kim Soo Hyun was a really cool guy. One said that there's a rumor that he's fighting again. The girlfriend said that it wasn't true, and that she had heard another version of the story that Kim Soo Hyun had sent the Yakuza to bring order to Gangbuk North. At that time, Kim was walking down the school hallway and trying to style his hair so it wouldn't show that he had no eyebrows. The girls kept talking about the hot topic of Kim's eyebrows. When Kim saw the girls discussing him, he regretted shaving off his eyebrows. Kim heard quick footsteps behind him and felt someone take his hand. A girl kept saying that Kim Soo Hyun wanted to be a gangster and why she wasn't afraid to take his hand. Beck Sharon silently pulled Kim with her. The second girl said that Beck Sharon was only taking Kim away to be alone and kiss him. When Beck Sharon walked into the classroom with Kim, she immediately ordered him to sit down in a chair. Kim looked at the girl confused and asked what was going on. The girl took a pencil out of her pocket and informed him that she always kept her promises and would now draw him new eyebrows. Beck Sharin opened her pencil and asked if she could start. Kim said yes, saying it couldn't get any worse. The girl tried to draw, but she was uncomfortable, and then she started to ask if she could sit on him. Kim nodded his head, signaling that he agreed. Beck Charon made herself comfortable on Kim's legs, saying that now it was okay to continue. Kim was afraid that the girl would get a pencil in his eye, but at the same time, he was pleased that she was sitting on his legs. Hyung Dong abruptly opened the door in the classroom and revealed that all the guys who had sworn to serve him had agreed to shave off their eyebrows. After class, Kim went to the secret room for a meeting and saw that all the guys had really shaved their eyebrows off. When Kim and Yakuza walked through the classroom and sat on the corner of the table as usual, all the guys immediately came up to bow and started asking how they spent their weekend. Kim didn't take long to reply that he had a great weekend. The guys said that they had already heard everything, and that was why they had decided to shave their eyebrows. Kim started to say that he didn't ask them to do it, and that if they wanted to do it, they could do it themselves. Hyun Dong came closer to Kim and told him that this was just the beginning. Kim made an uncomprehending face and started asking what you were talking about and what was the beginning. Hyun Dong explained that it was now necessary to slowly build up the forces. Then Kim replied that he still remembered that they needed to unite Gangbuk. Hyun Dong asked who Kim planned to target, but Kim focused his attention on the fact that the system sent out the information that the main quest was created. The hero reads that he has to choose one of three quests. After making the choice, the other two quests will be unavailable. He realized that this quest was a little different than usual, and he saw that now he has to choose one of three quests. The first quest is to attack the northern Ganbuk, and the reward is a platinum card. The second quest is to attack the southern Ganbuk, and the reward is a gold card. The third quest is to attack eastern Ganbuk, and the reward is a silver card. Kim was a little shocked because in this way he has not yet received quests, and now it is difficult to choose, because he realized that the reward depends on it. He asked Young Dong to bring a map and look at it to think strategically about where to move. First, we need to figure out whose relationship with West Gangbuk is. Han Jae Ha, the head of East Gangbuk, and his school are on the worst terms with me. Maybe I should deal with them first, but I'll only get one silver card for that. Kang Siok. The head of South Gangbuk can stab him in the back and get the gold card. But he's on good terms with us, so if Han Jae Ha goes after me after this, he'll come after me. If we're going to act on the reward, it's better to go straight to the northern Gunbuk. But will I be safe if I touch them? What if they do the opposite of us, instead of us making them? At the meeting, everyone sat in silence, and when Kim loudly announced that he had already made up his mind, Hyung Dong immediately started asking about what decision he had made. Kim slammed his fist on the table and continued to say that that's where they would go. The guys sitting next to him asked where they were going to go. The hero ordered to gather all the strong guys to start a new ground game. Then Hyung Dong went to the map and cheerfully repeated that the war was finally starting. Then he looked at Kim and asked, which area we were attacking, and could you show me on the map? Kim started to reply that there's nothing to show. We're attacking the northern. Then Hyung Dong interrupted Kim, saying that if you are going to attack northern Gang Buck, you better give up. Kim asked why. Hyun Dong began to talk in detail about how these guys were of a different level. 
The guys who were at the pool villa were very weak because they were just hooligans who were considered trash by everyone. The level of the famous fighters of the northern Ganbuk are different because each of them is a high-level monster. The place where you can still fight them is the Ganbuk Pool Hall. But the leader there is also unimaginably strong, and even if you defeat him, we're in trouble. We'll be dead if their large army of fighters comes. So if you're going to attack northern Gunbuck, it's best to abandon the idea. At that time, No. 29 in Gunbuck North was quietly playing billiards. After hearing this, Kim stood up and said that if we attack North Gunbuck without thinking, we're finished. Hyun Dong continued to say that a thousand miles begins with a single step. Let's also slowly build up our forces step by step. Sunbei, I suggest you decide who you want to hit, East Gangbuck School or South Gangbuck School. Kim said that the first order of business would be to finish off Han Jae Ha and ordered everyone to prepare to attack as quickly as possible. He asked his subordinates to patrol the area, and if they see any incoming guys from the eastern neighborhood, they should inform him immediately. The next action takes place at the high school that is located on the east side of the neighborhood. The guy opened the door abruptly and ran into the room and immediately announced that they had a serious problem. The chief started to say that they were always in trouble and asked him to tell us what had happened. The guy caught his breath a bit and talked about how the western gunbuck had started to act. All six boys were surprised by his words. Han Jai Ha took a puff of bitter cigarette smoke and began to say that the first step taken by the western gunbuck is to our advantage and that he has long wanted to do away with them. One of the guys sitting in that room started loudly telling everyone to stand up. The Western Ganbuk is targeting us. After subduing us, they're probably going to attack the Southern Ganbuk. Now the war begins and we have to go through the school and round up the rest of the guys who have sworn to serve our leader. The guy who brought the news looked at Han Jae Ha and started to say, Sir, I haven't told you the most important thing. The next scene takes place in a high school in the Southern Territory of Gangbuk. Kang Siok and his boys were playing basketball. He suddenly became aware that the West Gangbuk had started to act. The guy started to reply, all right. Kim Soo Hyun is definitely targeting the Eastern Gangbuk. Let's join in and strike Han Jae Ha together. Or better yet, we could attack from the back on West Gangbuk, since there's no one there right now. I'm telling you, sir, only you can decide what we do. Kang Seok suggested waiting first, because it could be Kim Soo Hyun's trap. We will calmly observe the situation for a while, and when we are 100% sure, only then we will act. We'd better not make any sudden decisions at the moment because times are changing very quickly. I hope you know where the guys from the west side are headed. The guy said they don't have that information yet, but they'll know soon enough. Then Kang Siok sat down on the bench and thought about the fact that the West Gunbuck School, which had only three people, was nothing. A few minutes later, the same guy ran up to Kang Siok. He said that Kim Soo Hyun had already started the war, and they had managed to find out where he was going. Kang Siok took his time drinking water and asked where they were going. The boy didn't hesitate to reply that Kim Soo Hyun was targeting Northern Gangbuk. Kang Siok knew the capabilities of the Northern region well and couldn't believe what he was hearing. At that time, Han Jae Ha looked at his subordinate, waiting to hear what he wanted to tell him. The subordinate began to say the most important thing was that Kim Soo Hyun was not targeting us, but only North Gangbuk. Han Jae Ha thought it was just a joke. The next scene takes place in Gangbuk North. Kim and his friend Yakuza and his comrade Hyung Dong enter a pool hall. Hyung Dong looked at Kim and started to say, Sir, are you sure you want to attack neither East nor South Gangbuk, only North Gangbuk? Kim confidently began to answer that he had made the right decision because we can expand our territory at any time. Our task is to make friends with the local leader because we need capable people. Yakuza saw a whole room of guys playing billiards and silently watched them. Hyun Dong got scared and started telling Kim if you just attack the northern Ganbuk, they will attack us in return and we will be destroyed. Kim opened the quest window once more and questioned the platinum card for the attack on northern Ganbuk. Then he looked at Hyun Dong and asked him not to worry explaining that he had thought of everything and the reason for the attack in the first place. Hyun Dong, with a trembling voice, began to say, I believe in you, Sunbei, but I don't like the fact that everyone stopped playing billiards right away. The guys who were standing at the pool tables looked at the strangers, and then the bravest one started to say, It seems that we are under attack, and it's the guys from the Western District. 
Kim looked around and quietly said, These players look like ordinary pawns, which means the leader hasn't arrived yet. Then he heard the front door open and immediately focused his attention on the open doors. The person who entered the room immediately started talking about who had come and why the atmosphere here was so heavy. Sung Ha Ryu is number 39 in Gangbuk North. She wondered who the guests were that she'd never seen here before. The guy who was the bravest started to say, Look, Sun Haru, the guys from West Gangbuk came to see you. Kim was surprised that the leader was a girl. The girl came closer and, fixing her hair to get a better look at Kim, asked what you had decided to come here for. Kim didn't know why the subordinate addressed her in the masculine gender, but confidently held out his hand and asked the girl to become a member of his team. Sung Haru thought it was some kind of devious plan and started to say, So you only came here to invite me to your team. Hyun Dong went up to Kim and explained that it was a lot to offer so much at once, to which Kim replied that he just fell in love at first sight. The girl did not think long and delivered a strong kick that landed centrally in Kim's face, and unfortunately at the time he was looking away and did not even notice the serious threat. Yakuza saw Kim fall to the floor with a thud and started to say, Suhyun, I told you to be careful, he said. Haiyan Dong looked at the girl and started shouting that you attacked from behind, which is unfair because he didn't even expect you to hit him. Sung Ha Ryu saw that the opponent had fallen to the floor and was not even trying to get up and started to say, you know, I don't understand jokes. What does it mean to become a member of a team? But I realized the most important thing is that you're here to make fun of me for being number 39 in Gunbuck North. And I struck out because I hate to hear that I'm unimportant and only have a small pool room. Hyeon Dong felt very hurt that the girl had allowed herself to be attacked so suddenly. He clenched his fist and ran toward her, saying, How dare some woman touch my sunbae? Ha Ryu immediately got into a fighting stance and perfectly assessed the situation and struck the attacker Hyeon Dong in the beard with her fist. After that, the girl announced that she was a guy. Hyung Dong didn't even expect that a girl could knock him down with a single blow. He immediately kneeled down and started saying what an incredible speed and how it was possible to do that with a woman's body, which was to be expected from a northern gang book. The Yakuza saw his comrade being humiliated on his knees and started to say, you weren't careful, Lee Hyung Dong, and you probably thought she was an easy target. But even though she's a girl, you can't underestimate her as an opponent. You can't give in with just one punch to the face. Even if she's a high-level fighter, I'm ready to show my skills. Yakuza rolled up his sleeves, and as he took a step towards his opponent, he heard a voice say, Wait, Yakuza, there's no hurry. That's when Yakuza turned his head and saw Kim feeding to get to his feet. The hero announced that he had to handle the situation himself. The Yakuza stopped and, looking at Kim, began to speak. Now you realize that looks can be deceiving, and are you sure you can handle her? Kim put his hand over his face, which was hurting terribly, and began to say I had been kicked by a girl for the first time. The system highlighted the information that the host card had successfully registered one kick. Then Song Ha Ryu decided to finish what she had started and started to say I told you I wasn't a girl. Kim managed to dodge the flying fist only because he used evasion in time. The girl took a step to the side, thinking that the opponent was very fast after all. But she was determined to win and had no plans to retreat. Kim took the opportunity to use a straight punch. He said, Nice to meet you. My name is runner Kim Soo-hyun. Sung Ha-ryu felt the punch hit her in the face and took a step back, which allowed her to dodge the punch. The hero saw that the girl dodged and thought, How can you beat such a charming girl and why she leaves no other choice? But Kim wasn't going to stop and started kicking and thought, let's see if you can dodge it. Then Song Ha Ryu realized that the opponent was using a turning kick, and thanks to her reaction, she managed to dodge again. The Yakuza watched the fight in silence. At that time, Hyung Dong started shouting how she was able to dodge all of our Sunbei's blows. The guys who had been quietly playing pool five minutes ago were now staring at their leader. One guy started to say that he was the same runner Kim Soo Hyun and that he and Ha Ryu were equal in strength. The other guy was sure that Ha Ryu was losing his strength. The voices echoed throughout the pool hall, cheering on their fighters. The guys behind Ha Ryu were shouting, You finally have a worthy opponent. Kim held his fists at the ready and was impressed by the girl's technique. He asked if she had been practicing sports. The girl replied briefly that she didn't. 
The hero went on to say, then it turns out you trained alone and reached that level as a girl. There's definitely a bigger story behind it. The girl watched Kim's every move with a confident gaze. She started to answer why you care about my story and why you decided to come to my pool hall. Kim repeated that he was looking for a teammate. Then Kim started talking about how he's seen a lot of different people and thinks she's the best of them. The hero offered to make a bet, saying that if the girl wins, they will leave and never come back. But if he wins, the girl is obligated to join his team. Song Haryu looked at Kim with a frightening look and started to say, why do you keep asking me to become a member of your team? You must have a good reason. Kim explained that he sees her not only as a beautiful girl, but also someone who is not afraid to risk everything to win. For the girl, it was empty words, and she decided not to waste time and finish the opponent. But Kim was ready for it and used evasion. Sung Ha Ryu started to say sarcastically, So what did you see in there? Maybe I'll give you a good punch, then you'll understand my answer. The hero used a peek and saw that the girl weighs 52 kilograms and her height is 167 centimeters. He also had time to familiarize himself with her capabilities. Dodging another punch, Kim used a hook to hit the girl's stomach. Kim reiterated that he also saw her incredible potential. A strong blow threw the girl a few meters away. Kim saw that the system was displaying a message informing him that a side quest had been created, and now he needed to get Sun Haru to join the team. The reward for the quest was one silver card. When Kim saw the second message from the system that the quest had begun, he immediately looked at the girl who had managed to keep her balance and told her that this could be considered the start of the wager. The girl started to answer that she was not going to join the team, and gathering all her strength, she struck a blow aiming at her opponent's face. But Kim used a weave this time, and passing under the girl's arm immediately used a straight punch saying that when a woman says no, it means yes. The girl managed to put a block and covering her face with her hand said, you're just crazy. You know what you say won't get you anywhere, and if I say no, it means no. Kim realized the girl was too fast, and it wouldn't be easy. He was trying to figure out how to end this fight. After that, Kim started provoking the girl and saying, I'm standing right in front of you, prove me wrong. These words made the girl very angry, and she lightning struck Kim's face with her fist. Song Ha Ryu said loudly, Your problem is that you talk a lot, and the fact that you're distracted is to my advantage. Kim took a step forward and put his face on the girl's chest. Ha Ryu couldn't understand what was going on, and whether her opponent could have passed out while standing on his feet. Everyone in the billiard room saw that the girl hit Kim in the face. Everyone also saw that Kim's legs went down, but they couldn't understand why he didn't fall down. The girl thought she had won, and that was the end of the fight. She didn't know why Kim kept keeping her head on her chest. After a few seconds, Kim caught the girl with his hands around her waist and used an increase in strength. He said, I like the smell of your air conditioner. The girl tried to break free of the grip, but it did nothing. She started saying, I didn't let you sniff me. The hero easily lifted the girl above his head, who screamed at him how you got so much strength. Let me go, and I'll prove you wrong. Song Haryu's comrades saw Kim pick up the girl and throw her to the ground. It was clear from their faces that she had lost. When Kim saw that the girl was no longer a threat, he started to say, I let you go because you asked me to. Kim walked over to the girl and leaned in close to her ear and whispered to her, You should give up because now you won't get rid of me. The guys who came over to see if their leader had lost were afraid to say a word. The hero saw that the system had sent a message informing him that the attack on northern Ganbuk had been successfully completed and a platinum card had been received as a reward. The action took place in an abandoned street late at night. The girl assured me it wasn't over yet. Song Ha Ryu gathered her last strength and managed to get to her feet. She continued to say, I can keep fighting. Why do I have to be number 39? Please let me participate in the plan, I won, T fail. Number two in the north. Gunbuck put his hands in his pockets and listened silently. The guy asked her to close her mouth and quickly approached and kicked the girl hard in the stomach. He liked to humiliate and abuse the poor girl. Song Ha Ryu flew a few meters in the air and hit the wall but she was still conscious. Number two came up to the girl and started talking about how there is no room for weaklings like you in the future plan. Be thankful you're number 39. I'm giving you the billiard room near Ganbuk North. Your job will be to track down the new power there. Good for a weakling like you. Why are you hiding your face? 
You should be jumping up and down and kissing my shoes for giving you 39th place. Remember, your place is down. Even garbage should be useful. Song Haryu opened her eyes abruptly and tried to remember what had happened. She looked up at the ceiling and felt scared. She started to rise slowly and heard a voice rest a little because you can't get up yet. You may be dizzy for a couple of minutes, but don't worry, the pain will pass quickly. Young Dong went on to say I haven't put in all the needles yet. This is Korean folk medicine and I studied it for the sake of the leader. Haru started to speak. Please forgive me, but I had a very bad nightmare. Tell me what this place is. I don't remember how I got here. Hyun Dong said it was in the West Gangbuk territory. We brought you here when you passed out. The girl looked at Kim, who was standing looking out the window. He explained that he wouldn't touch the girl's body arbitrarily. Haryu replied that she thought she was a guy who could take care of himself. She decided there was nothing more to talk about, so she got up and headed for the exit. Kim went on to say you lost the bet, so from now on, you're on my team. Haryu continued to insist that she didn't want to join any team and wasn't going to keep her promise. Kim looked at the girl and heading towards her repeated that you really won't join my team. The girl replied briefly that she had already said all she had to say. Then Kim thought it was finally time to activate the Starper action card, which increases the percentage of likelihood of convincing a partner. The system highlighted the information that he now had a higher convincing percentage. Kim looked at the girl and continued to say, I'm doing this for your own good. How old are you, girl? You don't say a word, but I already know the answer is no more than 17. At that age, you have to dream big or you'll settle for some pathetic pool hall. You've been judged very low. I would never do that to you. Haru interrupted Kim to say that she had decided to join his team. But in return, the girl asked to fulfill her request. Kim saw that the system sent the information that Sung Haru was joining the team. The quest was successfully completed and the Wagradu received one silver card. Kim promised to fulfill any request and hug the girl happily. Haru said she didn't like hugs, but Kim didn't listen and held her tightly against him. Kim whispered in her ear that we finally got the talent, and then he looked at Hyun Dong and said that he had a new friend. Hyun Dong was so touched that he cried with happiness and began to say, to think of such an impressive talent in the form of a girl ally. The girl freed herself from Kim's embrace and said there was a problem. Kim asked what the problem might be. The girl replied that you know we are in a bad situation right now. Kim started to ask why you think that. Haru began to explain, you attacked the northern gangbuck and lured me away. Soon they will know that I've defected to the western gangbuck and the angry northern gangbuck will rush in, and what will you do then? I won't risk a fight with the number one from Ganbuck North, and if you don't solve this problem, I won't do business with you. Kim put his hand on the shoulder of the girl who was about to leave and told her not to worry about it. He smiled and went on to reassure her that he had already thought of everything, and there should be no danger about it. The following action takes place in a billiard room on the territory of the northern Ganbuck. Today, there were a lot of people gathered there, even on the street. The guys were discussing a hot topic about their leader song, Haryu. One guy started talking about how our leader is safe and sound as expected. The other guy talked about how he was really worried about being dragged away by Kim Soo Hyun. Watching Haru play pool, the guy continued talking but how he managed to wreck everything on his own and get back to us. I think our leader is a bit strange and doesn't even open his mouth. The second guy started to convince his comrade that if he had to fight three opponents at the same time, he would be so talkative. As Haru bent down to put another ball in the hole, a strange mark appeared on her neck. At that time, Kim told her once again not to worry, because everything had already been resolved with Gangbuck North. She asked how. Kim replied briefly that it was a secret. Kim then put a bow on the girl's head and explained that she would have to go undercover. Haru started yelling that it wasn't an undercover, you just dress me up as a girl. Kim went on to say, if you don't want to say no, then I'll start a rumor that you're a traitor, and then you'll die, and I'll die with you. Your silence means consent, and I suggest we try to get along. The girl started to ask, where are you going after bullying me like that? Kim replied briefly to the bathroom. Kim walked into the bathroom and thought about the fact that he just had to open his cards. Finally, it was time for the exciting cash-in. He excitedly started talking about the fact that he had gotten two cards this time, 
and the most important thing was that he had managed to complete such difficult tasks. He was sure the cards would pay for themselves. The character saw that he was given one platinum card for attacking the northern Ganbuk and a second silver card for joining Haru's crew. Kim said, let's start with the silver card. The system displayed the information that a silver card was being opened at the moment. In front of Kim's eyes appeared a simple card called Table Tennis Drive, which gives the ability to use drive in table tennis. Current skill level F0 out of 100. Kim was sure he wouldn't need the table tennis, and he decided to sort out the map afterwards. The hero realized that with the first card, he is in a complete failure, and immediately decided to open a platinum card. He remembered that in the first platinum card, there was a peak, which he considers a very useful feature, because knowing the strength of the enemy can avoid unnecessary problems. Kim was very curious as to what would end up in the second platinum card. He hoped that at least one of the cards would be useful. A few seconds later, the quest window highlighted a simple map called Diaper. I shit my pants, but the details are hidden. The hero took the card in his hand and could not believe that the second time he got such a useless card. He felt sorry that he had to spend so much time and nerves to get these cards, but he began to reassure himself that it could be an attack map because the details had been withheld. The next action takes place in a gymnasium on the grounds of Gunbuk South. Kang Siok started with chest and back as usual. After that, he took a dumbbell and started working on his biceps. He thought about Kim Soo Hyun's decision to attack the North. That means the West is finished, because even if Kim wins once, there will never be a second time. The leader of the Northern Ganbuk won't let an invasion of his territory go to waste. Surely he will send his men in short order, or perhaps even come himself. The guy abruptly ran into the gym and without wasting a second headed for his leader. He started yelling that they were doing bad things. Kang Seok started to say, I hope you have something important to tell me. You know, I don't like to have my training interrupted. The guy started to explain that the problem was very serious because they were attacked. Then Kang Seok thought it might be Han Jai Ha, but the guy said that they were attacked by the Western Gangbuk. Kang Seok looked at the guy in surprise and asked if Kim Soo Hyun was targeting the North. The guy breathing heavily began to reply that he thought so too. But the North had not suffered any damage, and even Song Haryu's number 39 was intact. And if we don't come to the Gunbuck's place of action now, we'll be stripped of our powers. At the time, Kim Suchin, along with Yakuza and new team member Haru, were entering under the Gunbuck's viaduct. The eight guys who were from southern Gunbuck were patrolling their territory as usual. They were smoking cigarettes and quietly watching the three strangers heading toward them. Yakuza 2 number Western Gunbuck number 2 looked at the girl and started to say, if you are having a hard time, you can always rely on me, lady. Sun Haru 5. West Gunbuck monotonously said that she was not a girl. Kim saw that the system had sent a new assignment, and he now needed to find out about the South Gunbuck business. Reward two strength development cards, two speed development cards, one high-level stamina development card, and one random medium-level attack card. The hero informed his team that it was time to get a southern school. The system sent the following message, informing that the development quest has started. One guy smiled and began to say if the world has become better and sent us such a beautiful opponent. Or maybe it's just a dream. Then I don't want to go to sleep. Haru was immediately blocked by three guys. One of them started laughing loudly and talking about how one girl is not a warrior on the battlefield. The other guy started to say that I was participating in the Battle of Hanju and Jean Dark was coming to the battle. The guy who was standing next to me started saying that you're from uni and maybe you should stop showing off. Haru suddenly slammed her fist into the face of the guy who talked the most and announced that she wasn't a girl. The other guy started shouting that you are rude and how dare you interrupt the men. Then he took a step forward and made a strong punch with his fist. But Haru easily dodged the punch and passing under her opponent's arm caught him by the shoulder. The guy felt the girl pushed off his shoulder and jumped high. Then the guy raised his head and started saying she could fly. The bully's comrade, who was already knocked out, saw what happened and started shouting angrily, Why you are leaving such a handsome man like me behind? The guy was standing two meters behind, and that's why he managed to catch the girl by the hair, who was just doing a backflip in the air. The guy went on to say, Well, I learned that from my father watching him pull my mother's hair. Now you're totally screwed. Haru realized that she had to act quickly, and in time, she was able to knock out two opponents at once by spreading her legs in a twine.
The girl landed on her feet and started talking about how come there are so many of you so disadvantaged here. After that, she turned her head and turned to Kim Sunbay. You're the one who suggested that we break in here and restore order. That means you should help us. Stop just watching and help me. At that time, Kim was comfortably perched on one of the knocked out guys. Haru started asking what you were recording all the time. Kim knew that Haru had incredible speed, but her strength and stamina were lame. The girl kept calling Kim for help, saying that there were too many opponents. Kim continued to think that Haru's technique was bad and like dog chewing. He immediately drew a picture of a dog's pasuri. He realized that he had to get the attack card as soon as possible to give it to Haru. The girl kept calling for help, but Kim was thinking that if Haru got an attack card, even with her low stats, her technique would make some sense. At that time, Yakuza estimated the distance to his enemies and began to say my left hand is CIS. My right hand is the subject, and using a combination of strong strikes, Yakuza defeated two opponents at once. Then he went on to say together, it's a system. Kim looked at his friend and started talking loudly. Wasn't the system something cool? Why is it that when the Yakuza uses it, all the coolness is gone? But anyway, it's time for me to get up and get on with it. We need to do a development quest and learn about Southern Gunbuck business. Just how do we figure out where their underbelly lies? The hero heard that someone says, hurry up and get ready. He looked at the opponents and began to say, what are you standing up now? Move out of here now. One guy was packing something in a big bag. The other guy ran up to him and told him to hurry up, because if we got caught, Kang Siok would find out and we'd all be dead. Kim wondered what they were doing. A few dozen meters further, the girl fought with all her might. She did everything she could. When she had finished another opponent, she said, I'm gonna die of exhaustion. Song Haru sat on top of the guy who was sure he was very strong just a few minutes ago, but now he was lying unconscious. She started talking about where our master had run off to. The girl realized that she was very tired and new opponents were constantly coming from nowhere. She was a little disappointed in herself and sadly began to say that I shouldn't have gotten into the Western gunbuck. Ban Janelle, number 18 in Southern Ganba, quietly approached from behind and heard everything she said. He immediately suggested that the girl move to their place in Southern Ganba. The guy took a drag of bitter cigarette smoke and told her that she was his type. Haru thought that everyone was calling her that because of the bow on her head, but she didn't dare to take it off. She looked at her enemy angrily and told him that he wasn't her type. The guy thought briefly and answered that if you talk to me like that, then let's not waste time and just know that you will have to die. But you don't have to be afraid. I won't torture you for a long time. At that time, Yakuza had already finished off the last three opponents. He thought the job was done and said, this is boring. He himself was very impressed with his technique and confidently went on to say, I didn't think fighting was so dull might add salt. Ban Yungi no 17 in the South. Ganbuck quickly ran up and with the words, I'm going to add salt to your face, punched Yakuza in the face with his fist. The guy saw that his punch went well and started saying it's a good thing I wore a tracksuit today, because meeting the Yakuza devil from the Western Gunbuck is such a good luck. It was perfect because I wanted to fight with you. Yakuza stepped back to a safe distance and rested one knee on the ground. He felt a terrible pain and grabbed his nose. Ban Yungi was kneading the bones in his fingers while saying, Have you ever looked at your face? I think you're a freaking asshole. Then Yakuza started to stand up, answering his opponent, You're lying. I have an exceptional face. The guy in the tracksuit went to Yakuza and talked about how he was going to test his face for strength. At that time, Kim caught up with the guys and quickly dealt with them. The hero took the bag from them and started to say, It's time to see what you guys are up to. Then Kim set the bag on the ground and thought about the fact that it looked very secretive, and maybe the contents of the bag were related to South High School business. Why did the guys run as fast as they could? I could barely catch up with them. Kim started to open the bag and said we should check to see what interesting things they had hidden in there. Suddenly, he heard footsteps approaching and a voice, you weren't taught not to go through other people's bags. Wang Dong. No Ten, who was half the size of Kim, quickly came up and grabbed him from behind, clutching him hard with his hands. The hero realized that he suddenly found himself in a grip from which it would be very difficult to get out. Without wasting any time, Kim decided to use his strength increase. For a guy who weighed 107 kilograms and was 184 centimeters tall, 
it was easy to just pick Kim up and throw him to the ground. Wang Dong looked at his small and skinny opponent with a smile. He started to say, is your name really runner Kim Soo Hyun or did I just get an imposter? Why don't you tell me what's going on with you? Honestly, I think you're really just a blank slate. The hero, stunned by the hard fall, lay on the ground thinking it was a failure. Who knew the enemy would suddenly pounce from behind? I was confused and didn't have time to use any of my cards. The hero wasted no time in taking the restorative beans, thinking that once fully restored, he could go back into battle. But Wang Dong was determined not to give up any chance and sat down on Kimu and informed him that it would not be possible to get up so easily. Kim realized too late that he couldn't get out from under such a carcass, even with an increase in strength. Wang Dong went on to say that no opponent had ever gotten out from under him, and that now was the perfect time for a critical strike. The last thing the hero saw was a huge opponent's fist, and realizing that there was no way to dodge the blow, he felt a terrible pain. The big guy continued to throw a barrage of punches, saying he thought it was so easy to subdue our neighborhood. Now you'll realize coming here was a big mistake. The next action takes place in the territory of Southern Gangbuk. Kang Siok asked his subordinates about the situation under the viaduct. The subordinate began to answer that Don and the twins had to fight with them. One of the guys approached their leader and asked if he was worried about the guys. Kang Siok replied that the guys were working well in tandem and that there was nothing to worry about with Don and the girls. Kang Seok said that he only cares about one thing, and that is the South High School business that is inside the bag. And if the bag is taken away, we will be in a very difficult situation. The guy informed everyone that he got a message from the guys fighting under the viaduct. Kang Seok briefly asked the guy to read the contents of the message. The guy happily reported that their comrades had easily defeated Kim Soo Hyun along with his team. Our hero, along with his friends, were really lying beaten on earth. The twins smoked cigarettes and began to talk happily. One said that somehow they had managed to defeat the enemy very easily. The other replied that they had no idea where they were going. Wang Dong was surprised that such losers dared to come to them to restore order. He told his comrades that we were the ones who should restore order in their neighborhood. After that, Wang Dong gave the bag to the twin and ordered him to keep an eye on it. If Kang Seok gets angry, we'll have no options. The twin assured that now that everything was in place, he didn't want to be a corpse anymore. Wang Dong said that Kim managed to take the bag, but he recovered it in time. The situation is very serious because we could have lost a very valuable business. The twin praised his leader saying that if it wasn't for them, the Southern District might even have lost. Suddenly Kim opened his eyes and began to speak so the contents of the bag are related to your organization. You think we're badass enough to invade you with just the three of us? The twin began to say, look how quickly he regained consciousness. Then he looked at his leader and went on to say, you assured us he wouldn't wake up until tomorrow. The hero felt pain not only on his face, but all over his body. He rested his hands on the ground and continued to say, you said we're weak. Do you think we'd come here without a safety cushion? Twin started to answer, you probably didn't realize that your team was getting knocked out. Maybe Van Don is in your head and you don't know what you're talking about. As Kim got to his feet, Wang Dong started to say, I should probably explain to you again that no airbag is going to help you anymore. Kim didn't even listen to what his enemies were saying. He was in his own thoughts at the time and remembered sitting in the toilet and looking at the new card he had received, which could only be used once a month. Then he managed to open the detailed information and read that the normal diaper card restores health when team members are no longer able to fight. It also increases all physical stats by three levels for one minute. Kim confidently used his platinum card and his companions were immediately on their feet. The system highlighted the information that a diaper had been used. In the next message, Kim saw that all the team members had regained their health. The guys who had been so happy about their victory for a few minutes now stood there with their mouths hanging open, not knowing what was going on. The twin said in surprise that they were dying. The other twin began to say, this is the first time I've ever seen such a thing. Maybe some kind of miracle happened, because I beat that girl so badly that not even every guy can take it. Wang Song looked at his enemies fearfully. He thought about the first time in his life he was so scared. The hero, feeling a sudden surge of power, gave orders to deal with the twins once and for all the biggest Wang Don he decided to take on. Terrible screams echoed throughout the entire neighborhood from the ongoing battle. 
After a few minutes, it became very quiet under the viaduct. No, Ten Wang Dong and the twins did everything they could, but unfortunately it wasn't enough and now they were lying on the ground unconscious. A few minutes later, four more guys from the southern neighborhood came in under the viaduct. Number Ten, who was lying on the ground and had no strength to get up, reported that Kim Soo Hyun had run away. The guys realized that they had been given false information. When Kang Siok arrived at the scene of the fight, he immediately learned that the bag was also missing, and now their case is in the hands of the Western gunbuck. Then Kang Siok became very angry and ordered his subordinates to contact Han Jae Ha as soon as possible and tell him that from now on the real war begins. Kang Seong also said that Kim Soo Hyun should be captured first. At that time, our hero and his team rode their bicycles as far away from the southern district as possible. The hero was very happy to get the goods of the southern gunbuck and asked Yakuza to take them to the playground that was in the western neighborhood. Upon arriving at the location, Kim immediately set the bag on the ground and began to say means inside, this bag is the entire business of the southern neighborhood. The Yakuza looked curiously and started to reply, here is probably a full bag of money. Haru was very impatient and offered to open the bag as quickly as possible. So Kim tried to open the bag, but nothing worked. He started to say that there seemed to be some paper in the zipper. The Yakuza started to say that if you don't open it right now, I can rip the bag open with one blow. Kim calmed his friend down and said he was going to open the zipper. Haru kept repeating that there was a bomb in the bag. After a few seconds, Kim pulled some obscure papers out of the bag and said that's all there was to it. The Yakuza insisted that he was looking for money in there. Haru asked him to read the name of the item. Kim said they were band-aids that you put on when you're sick. The Yakuza couldn't believe that there was money to be made from it and started talking about band-aids that old people often use. Does Kang Siok get sick a lot? Kim went on to say that if you put them on closed eyes, maybe they would open. Haru opened one package and saw that it was just a band-aid. The girl couldn't believe that Kang Siok needed so many patches just to keep his eyes open. Kim started to say, I realized how to make money from the patches. Kang Seok is forcing old people on public transportation to buy them, and he's probably scaring people into not getting off the bus if they don't buy them. Haru couldn't believe that guy would do such a thing. Yakuza looked at Kim and started to say, your answer is wrong because these patches are called pentanil. We now have in our hands a narcotic analgesic that should never be abused. Depending on how it's used, it can break a person. Kang Seok probably bought it from a doctor and resells it to his students for a profit. I didn't realize that still existed. I knew the law had gotten stricter on them. Kim asked how he knew all this. To which Yakuza replied, This is gonna sound weird, but my mom told me about it. Then Kim started to say that Kang Seok is one of those people who do evil. That's why I don't trust people with their eyes closed. The system sent a message informing you that you had learned about the South Gunbuck business, and the development quest was completed. Kim thought it was good that at least Kang Seok didn't beat up old people. Kim was very happy to be rewarded with two strength cards, two speed development cards, one high-level stamina card, and one random medium-level attack card. The following action takes place at the Bobo Sam Internet Cafe located on the grounds of the East Ganbuck. Han Jae Ha picked up the phone and began to say your call made me happy. It's been a long time since we've talked and why are you calling me? Kang Seok started to reply, judging by the sarcasm in his tone. You already know everything. Han Jae Ha started answering, I don't understand anything. Or maybe Kim Soo Hyun stole the goods from you. Then Kang Seok said that the southern school will attack Kim Soo Hyun from the rear. You and the guys from the east attack head on. Han Jae Ha started to say that you probably don't understand the situation at all, or that you can't put your brain together after stealing the goods. Then Kang Seok asked if he wanted something, and if so, what he wanted in return. After a short pause, Han Jae Ha continued to say that if we attack Kim Soo Hyun, you will have to give up some of the South School land you once took. Kang Seok started to say that I can't hear at all. The network must be bad. Han Jae Ha started talking. Don't pretend you heard me. You'll have a hard time alone. Why don't we make an alliance? Give me the land near the East School and we'll help you defeat Kim Soo Hyun. Then Han Jae Ha lit up a cigarette and continued to say you only agreed because you were hurt so badly. Kang Seok warned that if any mistake was made, he would personally come after him. 
Han Jae-ha asked when the East would start to act. Kang Seok replied that they would have to match the time and attack together. But Han Jae-ha said that his style did not change, and he would perform right away. After that, Han Jae-ha turned off the phone and thought that the Western school had already succumbed to the Southern school, and everything was unfolding in the best possible way. The action is out West. Kim coming home thought he was lucky to have the diaper he'd received in stock. Otherwise, South High would have sent us to the afterlife. So now I can't use this cool card for another month. The Southern School is also strong, but what to do with their business? Should we use it to push Kang Seok's weaknesses? Kim opened his six newly acquired cards and thought about who to pump this time around. Maybe I should spend all the cards on myself because I'm also a teammate and that should work. But I already have a lot of strong cards. In the game, it would be better to pump everyone equally. Try to dump everything on the new Hara. If her strength and stamina are replenished, she'll become much stronger and give her a mastery card and she'll really take off. I wonder what's in that mastery card, though. Last time, it was a system, and thanks to it, Yakuza's power had increased dramatically. Lately, he's been looking even better. Maybe I'll give him the card this time, too. Kim had to make a serious choice, and he decided to think about it a little more, because once given cards cannot be returned. Suddenly, the phone rang, and Kim thought about the fact that today had been such a hard day, and even at this late hour, he wasn't getting any rest.